Once I begin to sit and see the pictures yeah. of the Venus of Willendorf in Sex and Race, mm -hmm. okay, with the peppercorn hair, the protruding, and you can feel free to take whatever pictures you want. That told me right there that, and it's, that this here is not just an African woman, but it was found where? In Willendorf. Mm -hmm. Venus of Willendorf. In Europe. Yeah. Okay? In Europe. In Europe. Well, okay? how did they get there? All right? That's my point. Yeah. So the question then is how did they get there? Obviously, the answer is very. <laughs> we mig well, no, we migrated oh, there. Okay. Okay. This is where they were found. When was, when was it found? This here was found. This was in nineteen August seventh, nineteen oh eight, when it was found. Okay, in, in a Europe. place in Europe. Okay, in a place called Wollendorf, the Venus of Wollendorf. And what happened was it what was. Country up is that? Am I right, Mr. Mr. Germany or something? Was that Germany or Southern France? I can't remember. France, I think. Southern, Southern France. France, okay? Southern France. Mm -hmm. Southern France, all right? But my main point here is that, obviously, if they left their pictorial images with Asia Hillicar, Rock Porteroy. But it could have been stolen out of Africa. Okay. Well, my point is that, that there, okay, mm -hmm. we were in Europe before the Europeans. Yes, oh, that's my that's point. The point. Oh, okay. You follow me? Yeah. Now, we're talking about a time where we populated Europe. Mm -hmm. All right? We migrated from Africa into Europe. All right? The Europeans don't come on the scene until you get the what? Cro-Magnum. All right? That's the European. Mm -hmm. All right? Prior to the Cro-Magnum, it's the what? Neanderthal. But you can see with the Neanderthal, it has the what? Frontal lobe. The brow ridges that are... Mm -hmm. Missing the seat of imagination, that frontal lobe. Then you get the Cro-Magnum. All right, but who was there before the Cro-Magnum? Who was there before the Neanderthal was who? The Grimaldis. So now you find in the deeper caves, all right, in Europe, you find an older statues, excuse me, fossil remains, skeletal remains of the Grimaldis. Okay, mm -hmm. then you had the Cro-Magnums on top. Mm -hmm. But you can see from the, 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 uh, um, the brow ridges, okay. The elong elongation of the, uh, the elongation, the um, prominence of nasal bones, height of nasal root, width of nasal uh, the nasal aperture, etc. It was totally different than the European. So my main point is that there was a time when we were in Europe before the Europeans came on the scene. Mm -hmm. All right, we migrated there. This is before they had the ice ages, etc. Oh. Okay, so these here people when they come over my house, they're like, "Where were these? These in Africa?" No, 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 no. And it tells you there where they were found at. But here again, all right, we talked about nature and how we were in tune with nature because if you notice, what do you see the similarities with all these protruding breasts, protruding abdominal because the sense of what pregnancy fertility. All right. So That's again, in, in all the majority of your African sculptures, statues, you see what the African woman with the what protruding belly. All right, because of what fertility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But again, following nature. Now, what's interesting is that, okay, when you look at that Nile Valley complex, then, and you begin to see basically who were their teachers in that Nile Valley complex, in a place called ancient Kemet, misnomer ancient Egypt. That's Greek, all right? What do you find? You find that nature was their teachers. Yes. Mm -hmm. First thing they did first was, all right, they had to get their food supply together. You can't take time out to study nature. You can't take time out to study the cosmos or any of that stuff until you have a what? Abundance of food supply. All right. So we know the earliest food producers in Africa, they had that. All right. There was an article that was published not too long ago that states that at one time we thought that the earliest food producers was in the quote unquote Middle East, which there's no such thing. Only to find out the articles made it more so southern Egypt. OK, where they found the earliest food producers. OK, going back almost 10,000 years. So once your food supply was there. Once you were able to have, what, peace and harmony, all mm -hmm. right, the money wasn't spent on what? Military like the U.S. had. It was spent, what, studying, all right? And the majority of your early studying got done in what? Night. Yeah. Because now you begin to see what? The darkness, but you begin to see what come out of darkness? A light. Right. What kind of light? 
stars. stars. So the first phase that our ancestors studied was what? Stellar. The stars. Mm -hmm. Then after that, it progressed to what? The lunar. Mm -hmm. Okay? Moon. Symbolic of the female with the menstrual. Okay? The phases of the moon. All right? Mm -hmm. Then it went on to what? The solar aspect. Okay? Studying what? The signs of the sun and its relationship to our people. Now, how do you know what period you were talking about? One of the first things you see was what? The baboon. Okay? Now, the early part of that baboon, and you can see that, wait a minute. What's interesting is that when you look at that baboon, why would they take a baboon? What characteristics would that baboon have that made it so interesting for our ancestors? You know, animals don't deviate from their what? Characteristics. Character. So if you need something where you want stability, consistency, all right, something that that's that's that can last to make your point, you're going to use what? Animals. Human beings tend to deviate from their characteristics, from the nature. All right? But why did they use the baboon? Because the baboon, all right, again, going back, the baboon, when the moon appeared at night, one of the things that our ancestors noticed about that baboon is that when the phases of the moon was there, that baboon would be in a position like this, with his forward erect and his arms up like this. Mm. So it was looked upon as the first what? Form of a what? Saluter. Mm. The judge. Oh. Okay? Mm. Now, here's my point. When you look at that baboon, and you probably didn't see it upstairs on my wall, but you see him just like this. All right? Now let's look at this. Okay? That's also the symbol of the what? Cop. All right? But also... And the Masonic order, okay, symbol of distress. But also what's interesting is that in football, it's the symbol of what? The goal. Mm -hmm. Okay? In Islam, you see the same what? Profile. Now, here's what's interesting. And what's that? Okay? In Islam, when they're making their prayers, right. okay, they're going down with their prayers. Okay? And come up. That same okay. form. Here's the key with that now. When we talked about the judgment scene, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before you had the feather of my eye, what do you see? The baboon. The baboon. You notice that? The baboon. It was what? The, what my main point is that our ancestors in the Navajo preserved the what? Type, the typology. The animals. Because you see the baboon before you see what? My eye. My eye was there with the feather, okay? The feather, as you can see in there, but what's on top of that scale? The baboon. Because uh -huh. the baboon, they seen the baboon as the first form of a what? Judge. Mm. You follow me? So if it's the first form of a judge, they were able, now, now think about what our ancestors did. They were able to t extrapolate something that they seen in nature mm -hmm. and do what? Use it as part of their what? Eschatology. You, this is part of the science, all right? And that's what they did there with that baboon. Okay, now, studying the stars. Let's go back to the stars, okay? Again, mm -hmm. all right, when you look, and you look on the walls, okay, you can see also here what's interesting, okay? And this profile right here, okay? The net of what? Newt, all right? Newt, some say nut, all right? And you can see... In the background is what? The sky. All right? You know the study was done at night. How do you know? Because it's dark. You see the stars there. All right? And then you see, all right, life coming. All right? Now, what's my main point here is, all right, when you look at that, now here's where your etymology coming at. Because when you start talking about the starry heavens, okay, studying the heavens, the cosmos, etc. When you look mm -hmm. at the etymology of the word heaven, and etymology, I'm talking about the origins and true meaning of words. All right, mm. it's a dramatic word, but it means mm. vault, but it also means the bit inward. That's what it means, the bit inward. All right? Now, I want you to look at what they did because that's a representation of the heavens at the top. What is the newt doing? Another newt is going what? Like an art going what? 
inward. So you see where the terminology supports it. All right? Okay, again, your source of reference. All right, when you look at it, okay, because you got to have your source of reference, all right? H E A V E N, Middle English, H E V E N, H E F O N, Old English, H E O F O N. Now, the root of that word heaven, okay, because all words have a root, is K A M E R, commer. Now, when you look in American Heritage Dictionary of the English language, okay, you look at that word commer, it means to bend, a vault. Latin, comorous. U.S. makes it Latin. C-A-M-U-R-U-S, C-A-M-U-R. It means bent inward. In Greek, kamara, K-A-M-A-R-A, mean a vault. Now, what's interesting is that when you hear the word, okay, a vault or bent inward, look at the papyrus. What do you see with new? She's bent what? Inward. So the etymology of the word heaven and bent inward support what they were showing on that papyrus thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then you see that why did they make it the female instead of male? Because when you look at, okay, the darkness of a womb, it's like almost like a womb. And within the womb, life is coming from that womb, the darkness. Okay? Oh, and what did they do? Apply to what? The African woman. Because what comes from the African woman? Life. Okay, within from the darkness of the womb. Okay, within. So you see that there on the wall. Okay, on the papyrus. So again, studying nature, studying the stars because that's what they study first. All right, and then what do you have? As above, so below. As within, so without. Okay, now let's take it a little further there. If you look here, you have what? Okay, a cross, all right? You have two types. You have the tropical cross, which is this, and you have the galactic cross, all right? The galactic alignment is the alignment of the December solstice sun with the galactic equator. This alignment occurs as a result of the precision of the equinox. Precession is, precession is caused by the earth wobbling very slowly on its axis and shift the position of the equinox and solstice one degree every 71.5 years. But when you look at the tropical cross here, all right, what do you see? Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo, Taurus. Again, you're talking about what? The constellations, all right, as above, mm -hmm. so below, all right? And then what do you get now with the tropical cross, okay? You got the galactic cross, all right, tropical cross. Now, what do you mean by as above, so below? Look at your pharaohs. Okay, look at them. Osar. What is his ass at? You see it? Galactic. Galactic, you follow me? Yes. Yes. As above, so below. Mentu Hotep, all the pharaohs, Ra Mesh, the Ramesses, you see them with their hands crossed like this. All right, let me see if I got some other pictures. Show you what I mean. Let's see if it's in here. Uh, let me see if it's in my camera. Board. That's the thing, you got so much stuff and you try to figure out what page is on. I know it's in here. Um, let me see if I can remember. Oh yeah, here it is. When you look at Mentu Hotep, Galactic. You follow me? See the difference, right? Just like that there, you see it, the Galactic, mm -hmm. okay? But that's what you find in what? The Holy Bible, what? With the Eagle, right? The Eagle, the Scorpio, mm -hmm. and Revelations. Mm -hmm. You follow me? But my point is, my, our ancestors in the Nile Valley, they seen it what? In the heavens. In the heavens first. All right? With the tropical cross, 
All right, what are you seeing at now in the judgment scene? The scale. Okay, there it is. All right, so everything had a purpose. It wasn't just for art for art's sake. All right, it was there for a reason. Okay, now you look at in doing that, you look also at Tehuti. Tehuti, okay, which was, was the scribe, but the word Tehuti has to do with what? Thought, speech, communication, as you can see with his pilot and he's recording the deeds. All right, of what's going on with Ampu. We call it Anubis, but that's Greek. But if you notice with Tehuti, you look at the beak, you see nothing on top of that head. Am I correct? Right. Now, look over here. You also see Tehuti, but what do you see here? The crescent and the sun. You follow me? So now you have a combination. You can tell pretty much where they were making a transition because now he has the crescent, the moon. So you know you're dealing with what? The lunar age, studying the lunar, as mm -hmm. well as the solar. Mm -hmm. So now you can see your faces because the symbolism, the symbolism tells you that symbolic imagery. Here you don't see it in the judgment scene, okay? The halls of my eye. But in other pictures, you can see also at one time, all right, they were dealing with what? The science of the lunar aspect, studying right. the lunar, the moon, the phases. Mm -hmm. All right. So it went from the stars, stellar, to the lunar, to the solar. Now, when we begin to get a glimpse of Kemet, for the most part, we're there when you have the what? Harmarchus. Okay? Yeah. Now, during that time, why did they use the image of a lion? with an African face of either a male or female. What were they trying to tell you? What was going on at the glimpse of the time when they quote unquote so-called dynastic period came into being? Mm -hmm. What do we know? When you look at that there, Harmarchus, Greek Sphinx, you're dealing with the age of what? Leo. Right, right. Remember what we said? As above, so below. Okay, here it is, Leo. Now remember, mm -hmm. it retrograde. So the front represent Leo. Now what's the opposite of Leo? Aquarius. You follow me? Leo, Aquarius, because when, you, when you're going back 2,000 years, you, you, you're dealing with the persistence of equinox, but it's retrograde. All right? So mm -hmm. what happens at that point in the time of Leo? All right? What happens now? Now you got the lion. You got the what? The lion motif. Everywhere you look, throughout civilizations, Chaldea, Mesopotamia, etc. It's always what? The lion motive. Because right. you're in the age of Leo. Now, once the age of Leo pass, then what comes up next? The age of what? Pisces. No, 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 no. Taurus. Yes. How do you know? Namer. Or Mendes. Or Ame. Men. Okay? Remember the names now. Mm -hmm. Minis, mm -hmm. men that fur, men to hope to, men M I L M E N signifies the bull. Men mm -hmm. to hope to, the bull is at peace. Mm -hmm. You also see in the typology what the bull. Okay, the bull. You follow me? Yes. All right. So now this is the unification of upper and lower Kemet. Now what's interesting is that the time is what do you see there? You see our ancestors with their what? Their flags. Okay, and they're what? Symbols of what? Sovereignty. Mm -hmm. All right? Nations. All right? So my whole point about the origins of the quote-unquote flag didn't start with America, Europe, or anything. You see us with our emblems. Right. Okay? Right. You see them carrying it. All right? Mm -hmm. So it was there. All right? And that's what's important about, uh, about symbolism, about pictorial, because they use animals at the same time, but you know what age that you were dealing with. Because mm. when you're talking about the names, men to hope to, men nefer, all right? Menes, kufre, okay, kufu, men kara, uh, men kara not mercenaries, men kara, all right? Signifies the bull. So now the names took on a different meaning, okay? Because you're in the age of Taurus, the bull. So now you had a what? Lot of plowing, architecture going on, building going on, etc. Okay? Again, don't lose, as above, so below, 
all right? The galactic cross, as you can see, galactic ecliptic, all right? You went from the age of, okay, um, Leo, okay, opposite of Leo is Aquarius in the back, all right? Then you went to the age of Taurus, and then what happens next now? The builders get torn out and get realigned now because the name changes. You have what? Amenhotep. Uh -huh. Ames, okay? Mm -hmm. Amen Ra, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, Amenope. Why Amen? Because now you're in the age of what? Aries, the mm -hmm. ram. Mm -hmm. So the buildings get realigned in conjunction with what? The cosmos. The cosmos. Okay? So now in the age of Aries, all right, you have the, the buildings of what? Ramesh. All right? Mm -hmm. um, Luxor. Okay. Okay. Now remember now, understand the terminology. Lux signifies what? Light. It was a place of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Luxury. El Luxor. All right. We call it what? Waset. Okay. A minute, a minute, uh, uh, a pedicet, waset, etc. All right. There were our names. All right. But then you had now the, the name changes. It's no more meant to hope to. Okay. Men that fur. It becomes what? Amen Ra. Or rather, okay. Amen Amenope. Amen Hote. All right. Now the word Amen denotes what? The hidden one. Mm, okay. Mm. That's what it means, the hidden mm -hmm. one. All right. Mm -hmm. So once the age of Aries, excuse me, once the age of the Ram ends, now this is when you pretty much have a glimpse of what? You're going into the age of Aries. Now you're going into the age of Pisces. This is when the Greeks come on the scene. All right. You done already recorded three ages. Now you're in the age of Pisces, the fish, and you notice the fish is what? One left, one right. Represent what? Bondage. Now you begin to see what? Our empires, we start to what? Fade. Fade. All right? Mm -hmm. Because now you get the attacks from the Persians and the Cambyses. Then you get the Macedonians, Greeks. Were, the were they African, the Persians? The, the, you, you had African elements in the Persians, okay? I mean, we were, we were they, at one time, we, Persia was a colony of ours. All right. Mm -hmm. They came from Western Asia, but you had you had people who looked just like you and I as part of uh, you, you can see it in the policy of um, oh, I can't think of the name offhand, but uh, uh, Mycenae or Mycenaean, you see the policy of Kenosis. You see a lot of Africans in those pictures. Mm -hmm. All right. So we were there either in the armies. OK. At one time. All right. Because remember, the Egyptian Empire stretched all the way over into Western Asia. There were yeah, colonies, right. all right? But my main point here is that before you even talk about the breakdown, look at the ages that were recorded, okay? Mm -hmm. And that was the purpose of, you probably didn't see it upstairs, but the calendar, okay, that you've seen, right. all right? What was the purpose of that calendar? The main purpose was for what? Farming. Farming, agriculture, mm -hmm. all right? Now, you, you have to be able to know when the farm, when the plant, because if you don't know that, how are you going to feed your people? That's right. So that was the main thing they had to get done, the irrigation and the all law. They had that. Now, one of the things with that calendar, why did they start right around late July, or August for the first season? Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that our ancestors noticed, again, as above, so below, is that right around June... 21st to July 4th or 5th, you had the hill of horizon of what? Sirius. We called it what? Sopet. Mm -hmm. All right? But when the hill of horizon of Sirius took place, what happens? The Nile overflowed. Okay? And the, the soil, the rich soil became rich where they're able to do what? Plant now. Mm -hmm. Fertilize. All right? Mm -hmm. But it always took place around July, June 21st, July 4th, sometime around there. All right. So, again, it was the life force that they seen. But look what they did. They represent Sirius, or rather Sopet, as we call it, in the form of a what? African woman. As you can see here, all right, Shaset, astronomer, priestess, a chemist, printed in leopard print skin, represented the stars, okay? Mistress of writing and measurements, keeper of records, she who opens the door to the heavens, all right? And you can see Sirius here, as you can see there above her head. That's how you can tell what netters what, because it identifies, when you understand the symbology, symbolic imagery, is you see the star there, 
all right, mm -hmm. over there, okay, and you see her upstairs. Now, I don't know if you all seen the camera upstairs, but you see our ancestors mapping out, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where they're going to put a building, where they're going to design that, and you see her, you see the star right in, in conjunction with her, and then you see them on the calendar. I don't know if you got a chance to see it upstairs on my no, calendar. No, I didn't. All right, let me get it because it's tied into this here. Oh, okay. Okay. The go baboon. Ahead. Oh. Where? Go ahead. Do that again. The baboon. Okay. Mm-hmm. See it? Mm-hmm. So, it, 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 again, on the scale, why the baboon? Because it was the first form of a what? A judge, a saluter. Right. Because when the moon, when I asked us to see the moon, and it went through its various phases... They notice the baboon at a certain time will be like a saluter, a first form of a judge. His penis is erect and his hands is in this position here. Mm -hmm. So he's looked upon as a what? A judge or saluter. Okay? Mm -hmm. And now, look what you do. You use it as a judge in the hall of what? Maya. Isn't it amazing, innovative, how you can see those, those you can just extrapolate. That mm -hmm. information from an animal, those characteristics from an animal. Right. And then use it in your symbology. What? Now, getting back, you see, okay, the star so pet. It's above what? The African woman. Okay, the Comedian woman. All right, because let's deal with the nations now. All right, let's mm -hmm. deal with nationality, Comet. Let's not just say ancient Egyptian because that's Greek. All right, so you see the comedian mm -hmm. woman here. You see the star over her head. So now, what is happening? You see, okay, high priest, and what is he doing? You see Sirius right here. And now, you see now that they're doing what? Measuring, okay, to begin the bill. And who's recording the information? Tehuti. You notice you don't see him with the what? Lunar yes, moon over his head. Right. Because now you're not dealing with lunar, you're dealing with what now? Solar. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're now moving into the solar phase. All right? And if you notice, but look at the profile. All right? If you notice the profile, it's always what? Left foot first. Mm -hmm. Okay? Left foot first. And then you see here how market the sphinx. And then you can see here just the conversation going on in reference to what? In relationship to the what? Star, Sirius, or Sopet, all right? Our ancestors knew every time that hill of Chorazin uh -huh. began, the Nile will overflow its banks. Now you get the rich soil, all right? right? So what did they do? They start their season out, as you can see here. Okay, it's telling us, first of all, the coming forth of the days from the year, per M. Haru, okay? If you notice down here, there were July 27th, July 28th, July 29th, July 30th. These were their festival days. All right? And what you can see, the first season, Meso Ra. Okay? Meso, Mes means what? To be born of. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Born of what? Ra. Now, understand, Ra is not the sun god. Everybody say sun god. Ra, R-A-U, is the life force that the sun represents that's stored in the astrophysical body. And then mm -hmm. you can do what? Take that energy, all right, and increase the brain cells by what? Proper breathing, through meditation, uh -huh. okay. all right, through okay. proper diet, gemstones. So it's the astral solar force. When people who came into the Nile Valley didn't understand that our epistemology, our way of life, all of a sudden, everything became, okay, the sun god. The mm -hmm. sun god. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. All right? Ra is the life force that the sun represent. It's not the sun. It's the life force that the sun represent. Mm -hmm. Then they gave a name, Ra, but it's not, oh, that's the sun god. All right? But my main point is, meso Ra, okay? Meso means to be birthed, to be born of, like Messiah. You mm -hmm. see the terminology, the etymology? Meso, Messiah, etc.? Okay, so I wanted to show you that aspect there of how we looked upon as, and, and why, why female? Why did they use a comedian female, 
All right, as above, so below, because what happens? When a now overflows banks, when you have the helical rising of Sirius, mm -hmm. and a now overflows his bank, you get what? Rich soil, life. Right. All right. Right. When a woman gets pregnant and it's time for her to give life, it what? Overflows by way of her what? Womb. Mm. You follow me? So yeah. you see the connection. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. As above, so below. Mm. As within, so without. So that was the connection that they had there that our ancestors were able to study. Now, you can only do this type of studying, research, when you have what? Peace. Right. When you don't have no instability. When your money's not going on fighting and treasury, going on, okay, somebody raping your land, somebody coming at that time, you didn't have to, our ancestors didn't have to worry about that. Right. All right? right. So you had hundreds of years where you had inner peace, inner happiness, where you're able to study. Thousands they never years. got away from what? Nature. Mm -hmm. Now you begin to see why they call everything what? Netter. Net okay? Netter. All mm -hmm. right? Netter. And remember, they didn't use the vowels. It was N-T-R. The consonants is what make up the word. The vowels are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So netter, but out of the word netter, you get the word what? Neutral. You also get the word what? And that's a dummy. Anybody want the fan on? Because it might be too hot in here. You want the fan no, on? No, I'm good. Okay. You have the word what? Natural. Mm -hmm. Latin. Naturia. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what the word. And then nature. So nature was our teacher's. Mm -hmm. So what were the nutters? They were just a physical expression or manifestation or attributes of nature. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what it was. And mm -hmm. the Africans never deviated from that. Our ancestors never deviated from that. Can you do me a favor? Can you kind of um, uh, take a point in terms of how the African worldview came into being? I mean, you own it now, but I wanted you, if you could start at a point and then bring the netters and connect them uh, until you get to Isis, uh, Osiris, and Horus. Uh, if... Okay. Understood. But you can do it any way you want to. Mm -hmm. but. Understood. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first thing, is, and, and let's just be specific since we just, you know, um, when, when we're talking about all right, our, our ancestors and how the African worldview came into being, all right? One of the things that our ancestors did is that, and, and, and we can look at the Nile Valley complex again, they seen themselves as part of nature, not mm -hmm. anti-nature. Mm -hmm. So as a result of seeing themselves as part of nature, they looked upon what part did they play in nature? Mm -hmm. What part, all right? They seen everything as, okay, out of the one comes the many. But also what they looked upon is that they seen the harmony, first of all, and the consistency of what happened in what? The cosmos first, the order of the universe, mm -hmm. all right? And in seeing that, Studying those stars, the movements of those stars, the wind, when the wind will blow a certain way, you have a certain angle where a plant or a branch will go in this angle, a branch will go in that angle. They seen that and wanted to also figure out what part do we play in this? Mm -hmm. How is our connection to this? So in studying the cosmos, looking at the earth itself, Seeing it as being fertile, knowing that, wait a minute, at one particular time, you have leaves, flowers, plants to grow. Then at another particular time, it's gone. But mm -hmm. then when the seasons change, such as, again, going back to how they get part of nature, let's take one. Let's start with the winter solstice. They knew that from... December 21st, okay, for three days, mm -hmm. the sun descends and goes into the bowels of the earth for three days. Mm -hmm. Then after three days, the sun begins to ascend and the right. days get longer by a minute. 
Now, and looking at that, that was something that they observed that happened every single year. It doesn't matter whether you agree with it, whether you believe it or not. Nature doesn't need you to believe in it. Mm -hmm. Nature doesn't leave you to actually say, hey, that didn't happen because it's going to happen without you or not. Right. So in saying that, all of a sudden now, okay, with the days getting longer by a minute, the sun now, okay, on the equator begins to ascend till you get all the way to what? March 21st, now you have what? Spring. Mm -hmm. Everything springs up. So mm -hmm. then our ancestors look and say, wait a minute. Out of death comes what? Life. Life. Mm -hmm. Resurrect. Okay? Res erect. A thing that does what? Because res means a thing identified. Mm -hmm. Erection. To stand up. Mm -hmm. So in looking at that, but wait a minute. How does that play a part on us? So now they begin to develop their philosophy and their epistemology around just that there, meaning that, you know what, where we at now as human beings, all right, we'll deal with our what? Lower nature. All right. Okay? So now, how do we ascend mm -hmm. and rise up to a higher nature? Mm -hmm. So now, what they looked at, again, nature... It's not dead because March 21st, spring, everything springs up. Right. Okay? All the way till you get to June 21st when you have the what? Summer solstice. Mm-hmm. Okay? S-O-L, sun, solstice meaning still. So now, what happens? Okay? Now, we've seen that. We've seen it through plants. We've seen it through flowers. We've seen the vegetation. We've seen the greenery. Now we begin to see ourselves as part of that. But what do you mean? We begin to develop a philosophy around how do we, the African worldview, and how do we see ourselves in it, how we are part of that universal nature. Mm -hmm. So what happens now? Now you develop a, what's called a what? Initiation. Okay? Into the mysteries. Mm -hmm. So high priests come in that now. All right? So what happens is that now you begin to have a philosophy around a SAR. Mm -hmm. A U S A R, all right, Asar. If you want to take the vowels out, okay, some say as for uh, uh, Asar, uh, excuse me, Asar. Greek is Osiris. We know that. Mm -hmm. All right, so now a whole philosophy is built around Asar. Now, Asar is a title, more so the complete manifestations of one metaphysical being. But how can you attain that title to Asar? Now, in doing that, there's certain things that you have to do to ascend from your what? Lower nature. Right. And rise to your higher nature. Mm hmm Okay? Now, what happens? Okay? You have what's called a physical death. Right. Okay? But a physical death in the sense that you are at your lower nature, your most lowest nature. So through the initiations, through learning from what they sing, studying nature, how do you rise to your higher nature? Mm. Okay? So one of the things we realize, again, with, with studying nature, being in harmony with nature is you can take that same energy mm -hmm. called spermatosa, mm -hmm. you can release it and descend, or you can use that energy by way of your what? Spinal column mm -hmm. to rise what is called the what? Kundalini, mm -hmm. chakras, and ignite the what? Pineal. Mm. Okay? So now, what happens? When you look at the papyruses, when you look at the wall, what do you see? Uh, let me see, where's it at? Um... Bear with me one second there. Oh, right here. What do you see? Right. I have it out there. Okay. Now, what do you notice? You notice a SAR. All right. Now, you, you got to understand symbolic imagery. Mm -hmm. He is now ascending from his lower nature and rise to what? His higher nature. Now, what is happening? You notice the what? 
Look at the colors first. It's green. Mm -hmm. Why green? Green symbolizes astral consciousness. Mm -hmm. All right? The green grass. Green sea. Okay, green vegetation. So you know you're dealing with what? Life, vegetation. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, you see the bird. When I was in Catholic school, what was it called? When called the Holy Spirit, it was called the what? Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. All right? But you see what? The dove. Mm -hmm. But you see what? Two doves there, mm -hmm. which symbolic represent what? Mary and who else? Her sister. Her sister. All right? Mm -hmm. You see the tadpole. But the tadpole mm -hmm. goes from a tadpole to what? A frog. A frog. Right. Which symbolic of what? Transformation. Yeah. So what is she doing? He's giving her the what? Seed. Now, I'm not wasting the seed. All mm -hmm. right? I'm giving the seed, all right, to represent what? The new birth. The new birth. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Now, so when you look at that and you see, quote unquote, white linen, but you also see what? A mummified form. That's French, the word mummy, but it has to do what? Making sure his what? Elements are what? Incorruptible. They're not decayed. So you can see that it's not a, it, it's more of a spiritual rebirth. Mm -hmm. Not something where somebody's going to come from the grace, but it's showing you that through meditation, through breathing techniques, because when you deal with the word, you know, we call this what? The Holy Spirit. But let's not play with words because the etymology of the word spirit means what? Breath. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take it home. Through certain breathing techniques, you can rise and that energy from the spermatosa can go what? And ascend by way of your spinal column up through the mandula obligata in the back of your head do the pituitary to ignite what? The pineal gland. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's what you see here, okay? Rising from your what? Lower nature. Again, seeing this stuff as part of nature, what do you see? The snake. Transformation. You always you notice you see what? All animals. So notice your colors, okay? Mm hmm So they're telling you that right now on this earth here, you're in your lower nature. But mm. you can ascend to your higher nature, activate their pineal, and then do what? Travel the universe. You don't need a plane. You don't need a jet. You can travel the universe, this universe and see the multiplicities of universes through what? Meditation, proper breathing techniques, gemstones, proper diet, etc. That's what they're telling you. Mm. Now, what we did with this was, as high priests, we took it to other lands. We took it to other nations for those who were ready. Now let's prove it that we were there. Mm -hmm. Look at the walls. Now you begin to see what? The Buddhas. Okay? The etymology of the word Buddha means what? To enlighten. Okay? But you can see what kind of position are they in? A lotus position. Why? Because it's dealing with what? Deep breathing techniques. Alright? Through meditation. And you notice they're in that neutral state. Now, you mm -hmm. can see who they were, all right, highly metalated like you and I, okay? But you can see in Mesopotamia among the Akkadians, okay, same aspect, all right? The Buddha were here, okay, same aspect. Notice the position at their end, okay? Very important, okay? It has to do with enlightenment. Mm-hmm. Remember I told you about the color green, again. The color green denotes astral consciousness that is above the thoughts of the mind. Green is the color of the astral plane being the plane of growth through desire since green sea, grass, herbs, and vegetation. Now let's take it home. If you go to Revelation chapter 4, verses 3, it says what? Quote, and he that set was to look upon like jasper and sardine, and there was God's throne is like unto <coughs> emerald green. Let me read that again. Okay? <coughs> Revelation chapter 4, verses 3. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper. Notice the color jasper. And a sardine. And there was God's throne is like unto emerald green. You see the color green? Right. Okay? Now you notice too the gymnosophists as they were called. Gymnosis means what? Naked, like gymnasium. 
Mm -hmm. No clothes, all right? But in the what? Lotus position. Mm -hmm. Because what's happened is that these are energy centers, all right? If you look on the wall here, you see your chakras here, all right? And you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven chakras. Again, looking at nature, okay? Ascension and how nature shows you out of death comes light. You start right. with your lower nature, the root chakra. You notice what color is it? Red. Red. Okay? Anger, lust, and then you ascend, okay? And then when you get to your solar plexus, solar, sun, yellow, mm -hmm. you follow me? And mm -hmm. then you move up to your what? Heart chakra, which is what? Green. Green, all right? Vegetation. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Green for sorrows, but also something else that I want to show you is very interesting. I had a book here called, and I thought this was very interesting, called The Rasha Crucian Emblems of Daniel Kramer, but I don't want you to focus on that because every pitch in here deals with what? The heart. If you look at all the pictures in here, it's all different pictures of the heart. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. All pictures of the heart, okay? And it, and it has a, a passage to it, okay? Okay, here, I endure mockery. Well, is he that is defended from the tongue? All right, but you all see the heart there. In every mm -hmm. picture, you see the heart. Every picture. Now, isn't it interesting? Because mm -hmm. what our ancestors did, they took the heart and weighed it against a what? Feather. Feather. Right. All right? And the Rosicrucians, as you can see, all did with the heart. But also, when you talk about the Kundalini force, Kundalini means what? Coral serpent, the heart chakra. Green. Asar, okay? Gab, green, you follow me? Mm hmm. All right? Uh, where's the other one at? Over here, Asar. Where am I at? Right here. Okay, Asar, green. As you can see, the other picture of Asar, where am I at? Right here. Asar, green. Mm hmm. The protector, the falcon, green. My main point is, it wasn't for art's sake. It wasn't just art for art's sake. These colors had a meaning. They mm -hmm. meant something. So the whole point was to always do what? See yourself in tune with nature. Religion. Read means to do what? Go back. Mm -hmm. Legend. Latin. Legare means to tie or bind. So you're going back to tie or bind back to what? Nature. nature. You can't get away from it, all right? Right. We said earlier, the African worldview, they had a warm, hot climate, all right? They didn't mm -hmm. have to worry about snow and ice and none of that stuff there. So they were able to feed themselves in that non-body complex throughout agriculture. They had the food. Now they can do what? Study. Now mm -hmm. they can do observe. Now they can think. Now you can rationalize. Now you can record, all mm -hmm. right? And that's exactly... Now remember... All this took place in inner Africa first. Ancient Kemet was just what? The mouthpiece or the recorders of what happened in what? Inner Africa, right. as Gerald Massey says many a times. It took place in inner equatorial Africa, all right? Among mm -hmm. the who first? The Twa. Mm. Misnomer pygmies, mm -hmm. okay? Because even they, even they had a symbol. It was just a stick with one, two, three, four. Stripes. One, two, three, four, and a stick, okay? But they symbol for them was the symbol for them was symbolic of what? The creator. Mm. Okay, supreme architect. Okay, and their cosmology. Because you gotta start with the cosmology and cosmogony first. Mm -hmm. But my main point is they seen life out of death. Excuse me, they seen yeah, they seen life come out of death. Mm -hmm. So you always they were always looking to do what? Ascend. Right. From your lower nature to your higher nature because they see nature doing it every year. Yes. All right? And then the same thing would happen. Spring. All of a sudden, that sun is at a certain angle, and it's like sperm that hits Mother Nature, the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, and I see it with my flowers every year. Yeah, me too. All of a sudden, those little things start like this small, month, month and a half, bam, that sperm hits it along with what? Water. Mm -hmm. The rain, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you get what? That sun with the chlorophyll, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden them things just shoot up. Those plants, flowers shoot up. Now the Africans see all of this, okay? So they realize that, wait a minute, we're part of that. We're part of that universal law mm -hmm. because they realize whether you want to celebrate it, whether you want to acknowledge it, 
whether you want to accept it, nature doesn't need you to accept it. Mm -hmm. Nature does not need you to internalize it because it's going to happen every year. Right. And then the same process happened again. After June 21st, the sun begins to do what? Descend. Descend. All right. And then you get to September and then it goes back into from September. You have the what? Autumn equinox. Mm -hmm. And then it goes back into December 21st was at the lowest point. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you could tie that in also with what? The same concept that we find in what? Christianity. Right. Where. All right. December 21st. All right. And the. Um, uh, the, the Holy Bible says what? That Jesus was in a grave for three days. For three days. And then on mm -hmm. December 25th, what happened? He rose. Rose from the dead. Okay. Now you begin to see the connection between the S O N and S U N. Mm -hmm. All right. You mm -hmm. don't dismiss, and that's why I tell people you don't have to dismiss or degrade Christianity because it came from you. That's right. All right. So you don't throw it away, you don't throw the baby with the bathwater. You show the origins. You don't have to accept it or not. You just show the origins because what our people, they're not going to, you, you, you can't alienate yourself from them because if you do, you lost them. When you're right. teaching, you just deal with three things. All right? Show them, understand the etymology of words. It's very important. The origins and true meaning of the words and show the culture continuity mm -hmm. and show the connection. Christianity is not a European religion. It is not. Mm -hmm. It's an African base. Now, we know what happens is that it was begin to be what? Europeanized. Mm -hmm. All right. When the Rome, Romans conquered it, the Europeans conquered it. We know that story there. But my point is, is that all three. Now, you don't have to believe me. It says it right here. U.S. News and World Report. Okay. U.S. News and World Report, September 21st, 1992. Nowhere is more of the past at stake than in Egypt. Verdict, uh, Egypt's verdant Nile Valley. Nearly half of the world's antiquities are here, chronicling more than 5,000 years of human history. Here are the artifacts of civilizations, the beginning of agriculture, metallurgy, monotheism, and empires, as well as critical episodes in the evolution of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a quote from the U.S. News and World Report. Mm -hmm. So can you still get that? Okay, because I'm pretty sure you can go online and yeah. Google it and get that there. What was the date that was published? It was June U.S. News and World Report, September 21st, 1992. Okay, September 21st, 1992. Mm -hmm. So again, when you look at the African worldview, all right, they seen out of one came in. They seen the dialectical laws of dialectical laws of opposite. Male attribute, female attribute. Up, down. Mm -hmm. Sun, clouds. They seen that. And they studied that and they internalized it and made it part of their everyday living. Now you begin to get the concept of what? Doing the eschatology or the judgment scene. Now through the halls of Maya. Now you begin to see the feather. And what's interesting is your early Europeans... George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, when they wrote a letter, they used, what, a, feather. They used a feather. You mm -hmm. follow me? Mm -hmm. It's to denote what? Truth, righteousness, retroproperty, because whatever you're putting down, the pen is what? Mightier than the sword. You're saying it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they dipped it in ink, and that's what they wrote with. But my main point here is, isn't it interesting that we took something as light as a feather? Now, you didn't see it on my walls upstairs. But if you notice, I have the judgment scene. Did you see it upstairs, the judgment scene? I saw scene? the judgment scene. Next to it, I got quotes from the Quran dealing with what? The scales. Oh, okay. The balance, judgment. And it says all throughout those quotes about the scales, righteousness, okay, the balance, okay, mm -hmm. light as a feather, all that's in there. But you see right next to the papyrus, I have what? The scales. Because now you begin to see where in their writings, you still got to go back to what? Nature. Nature. Mm -hmm. You got to go back to K. Okay? And when you're dealing with, remember now, the constellations, it deals with what? Libra. The mm -hmm. balance. Mm -hmm. Now, what animal form is Libra? A lion. No. 
Think of Libra. Libra's a, you know, the scales, right? Oh, okay. Now, what animal, what animal would it be? Okay, let me give you a hint. Okay? And that Judeo-Christian Bible, it says that Jesus rode in Jerusalem with the what? Uh, he rode on a well, donkey. Okay. The donkey with the hump? Yeah. All right? For the right. balance? Yeah. Water on both sides? Right. That's the animal for Libra. Uh, we see the scales, but yeah. the animal is the what? Donkey. You follow okay. me? That's yeah, Libra. I know that. Okay. Okay. Now, again, astrology of the Old Testament or the lost word regained. Key to the Bible in heaven. The information is out there, <clears throat> but you have to cross reference your disciplines. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can see all that. That's why I said you don't deviate and just throw away the Bible. <laughs> Learn it. Okay. And cross your disciplines. You cannot throw the bag out with the bathwater. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 a lot in there, but guess what? It tells you about us. Mm -hmm. It tells you about us also, but it's more so encoded, it's scripted, encrypted, etc. All right. So my main point is now this is before European invasion. This is before there was a Greek. This was before there was Rome. This was before there was um, England, France, etc. This was our epistemology. This was our worldview. And we seen everything as what? In harmony with each other. Now, how do you apply that to the physical body too? The right brain. Because the right brain dealt with what? Synthesizing. Putting everything together. The mm -hmm. left brain is more what? Okay? Segregative. Taking things apart. Analyzing. Mm -hmm. Our ancestors did what? Had a balance. Right. Okay? And then they had an epistemology and made a what? A science out of that. Mm -hmm. Being that the word science comes from the Latin word scire, which means what? To know. Mm -hmm. Now, when you think about the chakras, as we said, the main point, whether you're dealing with the Kabbalah, okay, Bhagavad whatever you're dealing with, is to ascend to what? The crown chakra. All right? Here, the same thing with the tree of life. If you look at the tree of life here, okay, so-called, okay, okay, uh, uh, tree of, well, it's called the tree of life, but my main point is, is that you can see the connections here, all right? You can see it with our ancestors, the tree of life, but the key was to ascend to what? Activate the pineal gland. That's the main point, and it was seven chakras, as you can see. Mm -hmm. You start with your lower nature, ascend to your higher. Now, what is my main point? Numerology. Seven. When you think about the pyramid, it's a square, which is what? Four. And a triangle is what? Three. Three. Four plus three is what? Seven. Now you understand why that numerology seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pyramid, the square. Mm -hmm. Okay. Square in mm -hmm. the pyramid, seven. Mm -hmm. All right. Days of the week, how many was it? Seven. Okay. Your colors, how many was it? Seven. All right. Excuse me. Seven days of the week, several cardinal colors, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Okay, the chakras. Okay, the chakras, the crown chakra, the brow chakra, the throat chakra, the heart chakra, the solar plexus chakra, sacral chakra, the base chakra. The keynotes in the musical scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven. The seven C's, Black Sea, Capsian Sea, Persian Gulf, Red Sea, Mediterranean Sea, Adriatic Sea, Arabian Sea. The seven continents, Africa, Antarctica, Asia, Australia, Europe, North America, South America. The seven virtues, faith, hope, charity, strength, prudence, temperance, justice. The seven deadly sins, pride, avaric, luxury, wrath, idleness, gluttony, envy. The seven liberal arts, seven liberal arts, mm. grammar, logic, rhetoric, arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, music. You follow me? The yeah. development... Okay, of man. Okay, the first seven years, the age of reason. The second seven years, the age of puberty, which is 14. The seven, first seven years is what? The age of reason. Second seven years, the age of puberty. The third seven is the age of what? Maturity. All right, mm -hmm. so you see that, numer that key number, seven. You follow mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. Seven, numerology. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, we just didn't sit down and just put numbers together for the sake of putting numbers. Yeah. It was a science behind it. Yeah, with the principles of with nature. With the principles behind of nature. So you can't, no matter what you do, we never deviated from nature. And mm -hmm. if you look at all African artwork, it always had what? A bird, an animal, mm. an ant. All their, all the uh, traditional African <coughs> artwork all, always had some type of animal. 
All right. Mm -hmm. We may not know the meaning of what it denotes, but it's all animals because animals don't deviate from their characteristics. Mm. Okay. Now you take Ampu, head of a man and the face of a what? Jackal, a fox. Because think about it. He was the one who got the initiate when he's going through what? His initiation. Mm -hmm. From an apprentice mason, etc. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So now, with the cable toe. Okay, mm -hmm. Mason had the cable toe and the apron. Mm -hmm. All right, and Pooh has the what? Masonic apron and the cable toe. Mm -hmm. Okay? Why the jackal? Why animals? Because animals do what? Animals guide the what? The dog, the jackal, they what? They, they're nocturnal. They can see through the dark. Mm -hmm. When you're deaf, dumb, and blind, or when you're blind, what do you need to guide you? You need a dog. Okay? Which is canine. Or mm -hmm. Canine, the dog. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you follow me? So now, they took the jackal because they seen the jackal come out what? At night, and was able to see through the what? Dark. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you're going through your initiation to raise yourself up? Mm -hmm. Okay? To ascend. To activate that pineal, all right, you need what? Guidance. That's right. All right? So now, the towel at that door symbolized the what? The jackal and poo. Mm -hmm. All right? Or Anubis in Greek. So he guides you, all right? Mm -hmm. Because you're deaf, dumb, and blind, and now you're going to ascend. So now, you're ascending, so you're rising up. Osar in the coffin, you're rising up, okay? So mm -hmm. now, the lion's paw grip, they're rising you up. That's right. From your lower nature to what? Your, your higher, higher nature. nature. Then you achieve the title of what? A star. Mm -hmm. Complete manifestation of one metaphysical being. Now that takes time, a lot of studying, okay? Proper diet, etc. But that's what we were doing. That's, and, and no matter if you could detroit, they all had their type of rituals. And let's talk about the word mm -hmm. ritual. Etymology of the word ritual. The root is what? R-I-T, which means what? Numbers, like arithmetic, mm, mm, R-I-T, mm. numbers. So rituals deal with what? Numbers. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So everything we did was in harmony with nature, but it meant something. We didn't do it just for the sake of doing it. Foreigners who came on the scene, mm -hmm. whether it's in Greece, Rome, or somebody else, even to a certain extent, Aristotle, Plato, Herodotus, they didn't understand and comprehend everything except those who were initiated. So then they didn't do what? Distort the meaning of it. Mm. If you didn't know, I could tell you anything. And you'll right. take it back and put it in your own language. Yes. All right? But the initiate knew, because remember, you had a certain amount of information for the masses, and then the initiate who went to school, who studied, who went through the initiation process, they had another level. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then we preserved it in the what? Medu Nature. Right. We preserved it on the walls. We preserved it on, okay, on the I mean, we wrote on everything. But you can see, what did they do? That took place in Indian Africa. Because in Indian Africa, you see all the carvings. We carved ourselves in Europe. As you can see, we left footprints of ourselves in Europe. We left it in Europe. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay? Europe. Okay? And France. Okay? Here again. All right? Pre-dynastic. Okay? This is Egypt here. But this is France. This is in France. No, this is Germany. The woolen door, she's right. This is southern Germany, this here. But we left, our, we left our blueprint there. But even doing that there, you can see the carvings. Now look here, what's interesting. When you look, and this is how you can tell that at one time, all right, mm -hmm. we were all matrilineal. Because you can see here, the what? Crescents of the moon. This, okay? With the carvings in it. The moon. Crescents of the moon right there. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, you can see why what... The Nile Valley, what the comedians did, they just recorded what was taking place in inner Africa first. Because mm -hmm. remember, this preceded Kemet. Mm -hmm. But it was preserved in inner Africa. And then when we migrated into Europe, we took our culture with us. Right. As you can see. So my main point is that the culture is all around you. You know, it burns me up when I hear people saying, oh, we lost our culture. No, we didn't. We never lost it. It became Europeanized. Mm. But it's still there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take the letter A. I'm going to break this down. You take the letter A. Let's see where it's at. When you look at the Medu Nature, okay, for the letter A, you see what? 
Oh, I probably knocked the light out. Okay, you see the letter what? The, the ball. That's the letter A, as you can see. Mm -hmm. When it goes into the port of Sinatic 2,000 years later, there it is again. Okay? But it means what? Olive. The ox, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Okay? But now, when it goes to Phoenicia, look what they did. It's called Stripto Symboli. They just turned it. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's the A right here, as you can see. It's almost mm -hmm. like antennas on the on the on the on the ox there. Mm -hmm. All right. Then they did what? Phoenicians turned it. Mm -hmm. There's the symbol. Okay. 1100 BC. Olive, the ox. Then it went into early Greek. There's the A. Mm -hmm. Modern Greek. Etruscan. And there's your modern. Mm -hmm. But the A never lost. It they just switched it around. Right. It went upside down. Right. Now, let's look at another picture of it. There's Kemet. Mm -hmm. Proto-Sinatic, meaning Sinai, when they found it there. Phoenician, early Greek. All they did was switched it. Mm -hmm. But, but it, the, 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 the foundation, the blueprint, is still there. Mm -hmm. It came out of what? Agriculture. Okay. It came out of agriculture, okay? Because what? The language that we call, quote-unquote, Hebrew was a what? Agriculture-based language. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Agriculture based. Let me turn this light back on. I think I'm still not recording. It was an agriculture based language. Right. Okay? Yes. Now, it didn't stop there because, once again, we also have something called the what? Per M Haru, right. which is the coming forth by what? Day, day and night. Or the mm -hmm. coming forth by day and night. Mm -hmm. Haru signifies what? day, light, etc. Mm -hmm. All right? I have something that was written called the Egyptian Book of the Dead, misnomer, translated right. by LePage Renault. But here's the key. Printed privately, privately printed for the Society of Biblical Archaeology, London, 1803. Printed privately. Mm -hmm. This is before Budge's book. Mm -hmm. Seven volumes. See how old they are? Yeah. This one here is 1803. 18, 1803. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. See, they asked on the paper. Book of the Dead. Print it privately for the Society of Biblical Archaeology. So Europeans knew. All right? They knew. Uh, okay. All right? Print it privately. Then you get the hardback. And I like this one because right next to it, you have the what? Medunetra. So you can read this here. And what I like about this, now I don't know if you can get the hardback, but what's nice about this one here is that when you read it, let me show you what I mean. This has the, I'm trying to, okay. This has the hieroglyphs right next to it. You follow me? Mm -hmm. As you can see. Now, I don't even know if you can get the hardback still of this. You could probably get it in a paperback, but this is budges, okay? And this was... This was printed 18. No, this one here, I was trying to figure uh, when um, I think it was Bell Publishing Company did this. Let me just make sure. I wanted to show you that. Yeah, Bell Publishing Company, New York. Mm -hmm. Okay? The hieroglyph and transcript of the Paris and the translation to English. And an introduction by Wallace Budge. Okay? But what's nice about this, you can get the Medu Nexture right next to it. Right. All right? But this is what I wanted to share with you. All right? When you want to talk about our worldview, okay? And I just want to just read something to you that I thought was interesting coming out of this book here. Okay? Now, again... This is mm -hmm. the initiate, all mm -hmm. right, in the tombs. I am he who cometh forth and proceedeth, and whose name is unknown to man. Right. right. Amen. Right. I am yesterday. Witness of eternity is my name. The persistent traveler upon the heavenly highways which I survey. I am the everlasting one. Sound like mm -hmm. a Christianity concept? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I am felt and thought of as Capra. Capra means what? Transformation. Right. The beetle. The beetle. Okay. In my name, excuse me, I am felt and thought of as Capra. 
I am the crown one. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. I am the dweller in the eye and in the egg. I am the dweller in the eye, even in its closing. I am that which it is supported. I come forth and I rise up. Ascending from what? Your lower nature to mm -hmm. your higher nature. Mm -hmm. I enter and I have life. That's the new life now. Mm -hmm. Okay, activating that pineal gland. I am the dweller in the eye. My seat is upon my throne. This is the throne. Mm -hmm. The chakra, the crown chakra. And I am conspicuously upon and I sit conspicu conspicuously upon it. I am Haru who steps onward through eternity. Mm. I have instituted the throne of which I am the master. So, you follow me? Now you mm -hmm. can see the beginnings of the Christian concept. Mm -hmm. As regards my mouth, whether in speech or in silence, I am right and fair. As regards my attribute, I hasten headlong. With all that pertaineth to me, honor proceeding from our, the one proceeding from the one. In my course, mm -hmm. I am the dweller in the eye. No evil or calamities, okay, befall of me. It is I who opened the gates of heaven. It is I. It is I who am master of the throne, and who opened the series of birth upon the day. I am the babe who tread of his park of yesterday. I am this day to generations of men after generation. I am he who giveth you stableness for eternity, whether you be in heaven or upon earth, in the south or in the north, in the west, in the east, and the fear of me is upon you. I am he who fashions with his eye and who dieth not a second time. Because mm. you already rose, you already right. ascended, open up that pineal gland. Mm -hmm. So now you become a sar, the title. You get mm -hmm. the title now. Mm -hmm. I am the unknown one. I am the gladsome one, and no time hath been found, but served to create for me the heaven and the increase of earth and the increase of the offspring. It is I who rise up and shine forth, strength proceeding from strength, the one proceeding from the one. Mm -hmm. Concept of what? Mm -hmm. Oneness. Mm -hmm. Monotheism. Mm -hmm. Okay. O thou who has set me in motion, for I was what? Motionless. Because remember, when you're at your lower nature, and you're rising, uh, you're motionless. Okay? Yeah. Asar. He's motionless laying down. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. In that coffin. He's mm -hmm. motionless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Masonic, you have the lion's paw grip. I'm rising you up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Perpendicular. Rise you up from your lower nature to ascend to your what? Higher, Higher nature. nature. Okay? Right. So again, um, it is I who rises up and shine forth strength proceeding from strength, the one proceeding from the one. O thou who has set me in motion, for I was motionless, a mighty link within the close of yesterday, the past. Mm, mm. But my present activity is in a link within the close of my hand, the Alpha and Omega. Hear me out. I am not known, but I am the one who knoweth thee. I am not known, but I am the one who knoweth thee. Mm. Yes. I am not to be grasped. But I am one who grasps thee. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. am Haru, mm -hmm. Prince of Eternity, a fire before your face, which inflameth your hearts toward me. Mm. Listen to me. I am master of my throne, and I pass onwards. The present time is the path which I have opened, and I have set forth my free from all things evil. Okay? Now, in Revelations... Remember, I am the masters of my throne. Mm -hmm. Now read Revelation chapter 10, verses 2. You get the same verse. Master of my throne. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So my main point. And then there's another passage in there that says, I am yesterday and today. Witness of eternity is my name. The Alpha and the Omega. So my main point is, when you begin to cross your discipline, when you begin to do the research, when you know mm -hmm. the African blueprint, the science, the Nile Valley, inner Africa, okay, mm -hmm. Kemet, Nahesi, etc. And then you begin to see the European side, you can see exactly, you don't have to dismiss anything. You just show the culture, you show the origins, the culture continuity, where it right. started at, all right. right? Because once you start telling somebody, all right, that's the white man's religion, all right, you start going there, you're going to lose them.
You show mm. them the origins. We know it was Europeanized. Mm -hmm. Scholars mm -hmm. who've done a serious study, as you can see, they know where it came from, but they're not. What are they going to get out of to tell you? Right. All right. Our job was to embed it, live that life, and then the priests, okay, the shackles do what they, they do. They, they went out to other nations and those who were ready. Mm -hmm. They shared that information with them through the what? Initiation process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, it all started with studying what? Nature. But before you studied nature, you had to do what? You had to be able to feed your people first. Yeah. You had to make sure yeah. that they were fed. Now, without any wars, good weather, the study took place what? In the womb of the what? Heavens. Mm. You follow me? Mm. Because what? The best time to study was when? At night. You can't see stars during the daytime. Right. You have to study at night. So you're up all night and then what happened? Now you build that pyramid. It's in line with what? Orion. Right. Remember the three pyramids? Yes. Khufu, Karfei, Mint, Kara. Okay? And it's in line with Orion. All right? So mm -hmm. what happens when Orion, when that, that star moves, it hits that chamber, and that light finds, falls right through that pyramid. Okay? Let me ask you something. Because I have heard it said that the pyramids are built in such a way, I think it's the king chamber where, you know, you, they, they, uh, where the light would come through at the at the great year and shine through but that's that's every 25,000 years represents what, an astronomical cycle okay um, what kind of understanding would uh, an engineering would you have to accomplish in order to design it even with um, uh, Ramesses his birthday his tomb, uh, his uh, temple was built so the light would shine through and shine on his right face. That's correct. That's at correct. his birthday. That is correct. But remember now, remember, if you understand engineering, if you understand your what? Remember, they were expert with geometry. Geo means what? Earth. Yeah. Metry yeah. means the measurement. Mm -hmm. So when the engineers, when you, when you know your science, remember, you're talking what? Geometry. Arithmetic, you're talking about calculus, you're talking mm. about, okay, understanding the movements of the stars. Right. All right. Astrology. Astrology, because all that, you follow me, the disciplines, the mm. several of the arts, you had to study and master that in order for that to happen. Now, when they rebuilt the Temple of Ramesses when it was flooded, the light don't shine on the face no more like it used to. Right. But now, let's, let's look at the concept, because again, I'm glad you brought that up. When you look at your early Christian churches, Okay, let's start with the clear story. You can see the evolution of the churches all the way to the Christian Basilica. All right, so when you begin to look here at the earliest clear story hall of Giza, all right, 29th century, you see the light coming in right here, okay, for the sun. You with me? Mm -hmm. Then here, the halls of Karnak, okay? Mm -hmm. Here, same thing. Then you get the Basilica of uh, Delos built in Greece. You see the same concept, architecture. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Basilica of Julius Caesar. Same concept all the way to the Christian Basilica. Now, what's my main point? When you go down that hall like a nave, it's no different than here. You're going down the nave in those Christian churches. You with me? Mm -hmm. It's built in a way as that when the sun comes in through that nave, it's what's in the middle of that altar and that light hits you right mm -hmm. where the Holy of Holy is. Right. No different than where, you, where the concept comes from, the Nile Valley. Same thing. I remember going to Catholic school, and I remember when we used to have the May processions, when you go down the nave, all right, you could see that sun at 12 o'clock, straight through, and it would hit that Holy of Holies, that altar there, okay, mm -hmm. where the so-called chalices would be at, all right, in there, and that's where it would be at. But my main point is, you can get away from what? The science of the what? S-U-N. S-U-N and S-O-N go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You can't get away from it. Now, in that cosmology of the ancient African and their worldview, the way they brought about Ptah, um, because ultimately the mound that rose out of the waters of Nun, uh, and Ra comes out of that, I, I want you to explain that, but Ra is, is hydrogen. And the way the science 
now, according to Professor Ebo, um, all matter emanates out of the hydrogen mm -hmm. atom. So the Africans understood this thousands of years ago and built those concepts within their understanding of nature. We still have not passed the atom, which is what they uh, understood and gave us the concept of uh, thousands of years ago. But it's all, all coming out of that hydrogen And is it atom. interesting of the connection between atom, A-T-U-M, atom, A-D-A-M, Adam Ra, all right, you can't get away from that word, all right, Adam, mm -hmm. all right, because just what you said, they understood the solar aspect. Now, they never got away from it because where else did they represent it at? Right here. Oh, yeah. That's the origins of the halo that yeah. you see around the what? Your saints, yeah. Jesus Christ, etc. Okay, the halo, the sun, mm -hmm. all right, that's the Adam, okay. Mm -hmm. Now you can tell what you're doing here because at the same time, what do you see there? The the cow's horns. So you what what, what what so what age are you in? You you're in the age of uh, which with the horns. The horns. Um, the bull. The bull cow plows. Yeah. Age of Taurus, the Taurian yeah, age. You follow right, me? Right, so right. you always, if you know the symbology, you know what age you're okay. dealing with. Okay. Okay? Agriculture. All right. right? But they also preserve the what? The masculine aspect of it through what? The sun. The Pretty sun sure. brings the what? Rays down, the atom rays, right? Which fertilizes what? Mother nature after you plow. Right. After you put your seeds in, after you harvest, okay? And then what do you use the cow for? The plow. Exactly. All right. And, and the giver of life, milk. And the giver the of summarize. life, milk. Exactly. So mm -hmm. now you begin to see why they never got away from the cow. They didn't worship the cow. The earth was called what? Ta earth. Mm -hmm. It was a hippopotamus, okay, with one breast, all right? Just like you've seen the unification, okay, of Kemet. You see a man with a what? A breast. You see it? Yes. Okay. Meaning you were what? Both what? One, male and female. Now let me ask you another question, uh, since we're talking about astrology, and we went from uh, we went from Leo uh, to Aquarius, which is where we are now, and that symbolizes you were explaining to me that symbolizes a period of twenty five thousand years. What does that mean to us as a people? Okay, what happened again? You have to look at what it's saying here about the precision of the equinox. Okay. And what happens, okay, when we talk about uh, 25, they, they've rounded up to 26,000 years, all right? Mm -hmm. But it's 25,900 years. And what happens is that through, when you get another age, it's another awakening that takes place. Right now, we're in the age of Pisces, which represented bondage. Right. Now you're going into the age of Aquarius, all right? Now, you can relate that in your Christian concept Bible where it says what? When you see the man go up in the inner room, what does he have? Two what? Waters. All right? Pails of water. Now, what this Aries symbolizes? Water, Aquarius, Aqua. Aqua, yeah, Aqua yes, Aquarius. right. Okay, so it's telling you in that, again, in the Christian Bible, about you're entering the age of Aries. Now, the age of Aries is the age of what? Enlightenment? Enlightenment. An age where basically, all right, you're not accepting no falsehood. Mm -hmm. Now you begin to see people coming out, speaking their mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see a lot of things happening because you're getting ready. Now, we may not begin to see it because it's just starting. We may not begin to see the age of Aries, but our grandkids will. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have a shift. Okay? You could talk about the weaponry. You could talk about nuclear energy. You could talk about destroying the world. But one thing you're not going to do, because you never was able to do it, you're not going to be able to conquer nature. It's going to happen whether you stop with what and your weapons and what have you. Not going to be enough to stop nature from knowing what it has to do to do what? Replenish. Mm -hmm. and get rid of the old in order to bring in the new. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why you have that happening now with the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. right? uh, awakening. Kids, our children, the youth, you got to tell them the truth now. They're not going to be accepting falsehood no more. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
And that's what the age of Aries is, the age to bring about enlightenment, awareness. Okay, mm -hmm. now you're going to begin to see a shift of power and you're going to see nature do some devastating things. Okay, mm -hmm. and you know it because it's here. Okay, remember, okay, it's just remember we said in retrograde, mm -hmm. okay, back then. Now, remember, in retrograde, back then, in, in, in 2,000 years ago, it's cancer now where serious rises. Now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago was in what? Leo, because you, you, in retrograde, you go just the opposite. Mm -hmm. Now, a good book to do, deal with just all what we're talking about is right here. All right? You may have heard of it. It's right here called Echoes of an Old Dark Land. Isn't it Charles Africa Finch? Even by, yes, this yes, one here by Charles Finch. Finch. Yeah. And this one here. The Star of a Deep Beginning, the Genesis of African Science and Technology. All right, That's but Finch's all what we're talking about in reference to the age of Aquarius, the great year, mm -hmm. to me, mm -hmm. in my opinion, Dr. Finch breaks it down to the point where the average person who has an understanding of Egypt, Egyptology, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. African history, he breaks it down, okay? He breaks it down. One of the best books I've read about the great year, the precision of equinox, and of course, the serious star, etc. All right? Well worth reading. Now, can we, since we're talking about Dr. Finch, can we segue, we're coming back to this, but can we segue and deal with the Dogon, who they were, and uh, because Dr. Finch studied the Dogon in order to come up with a lot of the uh, information he had. He didn't just study the Dogon, yeah. but, you know, because he was an astrologist as well, uh, as well as a medical doctor. Right, that's correct. He headed uh, Mohouse College of Medicine. Um, but he lectured on the Dogon, and uh, can you can you speak a little? I don't want to go too deep in that because I, although I studied and read about the Dogon, not enough to really elaborate. I mean, I, I do know about the Dogon in reference to, okay, Sirius B, mm -hmm. and you know you say you got Sirius A and you have Sirius B, which you can't see with the naked eye. Right. They were able to see it. Okay, and they also built their what cosmology around right. Sirius B. Mm -hmm. All right, and it wasn't until what maybe 20, 25 years ago, somewhere like that, where we were able to see what our modern telescopes. Right. All right, but remember, they were able to do that because it was incorporated in their what their cosmology. All right, and then of course, those who study, all right, had to study with the rest, but you had to spend several years. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. To study, mm -hmm. and they had to be comfortable with you before they mm -hmm. gave up their knowledge. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're talking about the Dogons of Mali. Am I right? Dogons yes. Of Mali. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, but in terms of going deep into that, I can't because the, 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 I don't want to the terminology in terms of their words. I can't pronounce it that well. All right. But I know that they were able to see Sirius B. Okay, which we can't see with the naked eye, but they were able to see it. You know, which is, it, it's, it's a phenomena that is within us because if it was in them, it's also in us. Because you have that genetic blueprint, that we DNA. Have <clears throat> that same DNA. That's correct. So, um, but you have already laid out a blueprint for going back. But I want to, to show retrieve you something else that. too. I got this off of eBay, and I thought this was very interesting. All right? I got to spend more time on eBay, but I tell you, okay. got some jewels off and of eBay. What do you see there? Uh, uh, that is a, uh, that's a bird and the sun. And how many rays do you see? One, Something. two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, it's a little more than that. Eight. It's actually 14. Oh, I can't see it. Okay, yeah, when you look at when you look at all these at oh, 14, yeah. you have the oh, sun in the middle, you have the rays. Yeah. Okay? Now, I want you to understand two things I'm going to share with you. When you deal with etymology, which is the origin, true meaning of words. The word holy comes from the Greek, helios, mm -hmm. which means what? Like helio Yeah. means what? Sun. Mm -hmm. Bible, biblos. biblos, means what? Sun book. Are you with me? Ah, uh, yeah. So it's a book of the sun. Isn't it interesting how you start the days of the week off with what? Sun day. Day of the sun. Monday. Day of the moon. 
Okay, so you never really got rid of what? The old... The seven planets. Yeah. It's embedded when you understand, see, the, 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 the language is in the culture. You follow mm -hmm. me? Excuse me, mm -hmm. the culture is within the language. Mm -hmm. But my main point is this. You have 14 rays here, right? Right. Now, Minister Brown, Osar, as the story go, Biden was cut up into how many pieces? 14. I rest my case. There we go. I rest my case. Caught up into 14 pieces. That's right. Okay. Seven plus seven, 14. You follow me? Yeah. And the only, as the story go, the only part to integrate, to make them whole, because now you're dealing with what? Fragmentation. All right. Mm -hmm. So now to integrate, to become one, to become the whole. Okay. What part was missing? The penis. Washington Monument, as you know. Washington Monument, as you know. Yes. Okay? Right. Now, a whole Masonic symbolism was dealt around that. I want you to go upstairs. Mm-hmm. And I want you to take your video, and I want you to get this wall here, this picture here. All right? The obelisk here, 555, 500, 555 feet high, and one eighth, and there's the Washington Monument. Whoa. Whole blueprint. Got this off of eBay years ago. Lay it out of the whole excavation. Talk about Kenneth, the whole bit, survey and everything. Compare this to this, okay? But it's an African symbol. Yes. As we know. Right. Okay? But I found it very interesting how they took an African blueprint mm -hmm. to use. Because remember, and I don't know if you know, when you read The Magic of the Obelisk by Peter Tompkins, mm -hmm. all right, when George Washington died, they performed an Osarian ritual on him. I'm I don't know if you know that yet. They no, performed that on him, mm -hmm. okay, with the um, Darkasia, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. They performed that on him, all right, because this here, two aspects, it denotes what? Resurrection. Now here's my point. The obelisk or the Tekkenu, it can be resurrection where you can ascend mm -hmm. as a sar land, motionless, all right? And then through meditation, through taking that spermatosa and that seed, through breathing. Mm. And then they chant, um. The vibration. You're sending that energy from your what? Sacral spinal column up through the chakras. Your energy centers through the mandula obligata to do what? Activate the pineal. Resurrection. That's the true resurrection. Ascension. Mm -hmm. Or you can what? Descend mm -hmm. and have just the opposite. Instead of going north, which is the crown chakra, go south by way of what? Wasting it through gluttony, through just sex with anybody. You follow mm -hmm. me? So right. the anxious was saying, hey, you got a choice in the map. You can descend. Or you can ascend. Or you can ascend. When you use it to see, it's for what? Procreation. Right. But if you just constantly wasting it, you descend. You follow me? Yes. So now you can understand and see why. Okay. Now, where did she find it at? Hmm? Or Seth found the penis where? Uh, in the Nile catfish. It's, well, supposedly it's followed by a catfish. Right. In the what? Water. Right. Water symbolic of what? Trance. Being in a trance. Uh, you follow me? Oh, man. You follow me? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So now, you can see the concept of what? Baptism. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Water, bring you out into the what? Next stage is what? Air. Don't yeah. stop with the baptism because now you're what? Ascending through what? The air. Mm -hmm. Now, who's bringing down the air? The what? The bird. Mm -hmm. Feminine. Mm -hmm. Notice the white, the blue in that bird. Mm -hmm. All right? And it's doing what? Taking what? The seed that you didn't waste mm -hmm. to do what? Ascend. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the metaphysical aspect is there. Right. But they built a whole philosophy around it, and then the Europeans did what? Europeanized. They, yeah. As yeah. you can see. Right. All right? It tells you here about... The survey, and it tells you about Kemet, all right? The obelisk and Kemet, 
how it was designed, the whole bit. And, and this was a Masonic ritual. When they, put, when they finally erected this in place, they mm -hmm. had a whole Masonic ritual around it. And the ritual explained how, where the information came from, the knowledge, the arts, the sciences, masonry, its origins, all right, the chem. Now, we know there was no sentimental attachment in terms of saying, hey, it came from us. But the information was there. So when mm -hmm. you cross your discipline, that's why I said, stop saying we lost our culture. Stop saying we don't have no culture. Okay, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Claim it, okay, if you know how to do the research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you know etymology to put those words together. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you can see the symbolism is there. We never lost it. We just don't know how to read the what? Symbolism. Right. Okay? Yeah. Astronomy, astrology, okay? The arts, the sciences, masonry, okay? Mm -hmm. The concept mm -hmm. of a judgment. And let me show you this while you're up here. You notice here, I have the scales. Now you see the scale of what? My eye. Because right. now you're dealing with what? The Christian con well, the, you can see the Christian concept there because you can see where it came from. But now you're dealing with what? Eschat eschatology. Mm -hmm. Okay, related to the end of the world, quote unquote. All right? But now let's look at this. You see Ampu. Right. What do you see back here? The cable toe. You see it? Yes. yes. You see the cable toe? Mm -hmm. You see his Masonic apron. Mm -hmm. So you know it's a what? Initiation. Right. Okay? You see Ani. All right? Now, this is what I want to share with you. All right? You see the scales. Mm -hmm. Okay? You see the feather and you see the heart. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay? In Islam, and we place the scales of justice, scales, for the day of resurrection, so no soul will be treated unjustly at all. And if there's even the weight of a mustard seed, we use the feather. Mm -hmm. We will bring it forth. It's sufficient. We are as accountant. Another one. And we will set up a justice, excuse me, and we will set up a just balance on the day of resurrection so that no cell shall be dealt with unjustly. Okay? We shall fix the scales of justice on the day of resurrection. You see the concept? Mm -hmm. Scales. Resurrection. Okay, resurrect means to erect, rise up. Okay, re means to go back. All right? But you can see where it comes from. Right. You, you can see. That's why I said trace the origins. You don't have to dismiss Islam. Show the origins of it. Okay. You follow me? Yes, that is true. Show the origins of it. Mm -hmm. All right? So you can tell when it's mis Now, if, if, if you know anybody that's a mason, who, who's the one who has the tower? The tower is the one that three times, three knocks right. to open the door up to bring in the initiate, the inner apprentice mason. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Three knocks now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember I said the pyramid, three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some initiation going on. Masonic foot. You see the apron? Yep. Okay. All right. You see the square? Slaves did not sell. That's correct. So the captains and, and the owners would kill them. Mm -hmm. Throw them overboard because the insurance company paid them. Yeah, they weren't sure. So they didn't lose any money. So a lot of that, you know, all of those bodies in the Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. and the English Channel, they were murdered. They were literally thrown well, over. Because they were insured. Yes. All right? They were insured. Mm -hmm. So as a result of being insured, when you went back to Liverpool, okay, you got your money. You got paid. All right? Absolutely. See, it's a sensitive subject because a lot of us don't want to belittle certain other ethnic groups who are involved. Everybody, all wealth people, people with wealth, okay, who had an interest ones, in making money, the ones you were who involved, had the money okay, to invest, they invested and buying and, ships, and then a lot of them also because they didn't sell. That the is money correct. Is did not go on those ships, and then a lot of went at the auctions and, right. to auction them off. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. no different than. Stocks. And when you had the stock, the stock trade, it was the same thing. And the ships were built in Bristol. The vast majority of that's correct. The 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 that was the first and the largest uh, sea bound port in England, in all of England. That was the first one. So it set in motion what the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. Okay. The because first one. The first industrial revolution. For the because, Europeans. Because now with the machinery, now excuse me, before the machinery, before the industrial revolution, you needed what? Human labor. Yes. Because if I own all this land, I need somebody to pick that cotton. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now remember, 
It wasn't by accident that the Holocaust of human trafficking started with what? Spain and Portugal. Mm -hmm. well, why is that? Well, Arabs because, actually. Okay. Well, I'm talking about as far as Europeans. It started with the Arabs, as far as Europe, right? The Arabs, right? They were, yeah, you can't leave. Yeah, you can't leave them out too. We know that. They're yeah, the, yeah, the Arabs. Okay. The yeah. whole European continent. They would have exactly they opened it up because it. They, yeah. that is correct. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the Europeans, it was it, it was no accident that it started with Spain and Portugal because that's where the Moors were the longest. Mm -hmm. So they had the technology, all right. And then when the Arabs, okay, because when the Arabs, remember, that's the part that we don't like to talk about because you know that partnership between the Arabs and the Moors was in Spain also. Mm -hmm. But when the Moors lost power, okay, when they finally got expelled, all right, many of those same Arabs, okay, turned their backs on the Africans also. And also, when you talk about opening up the west coast of Africa, Okay, Arabs played a part in that too because they controlled a lot of what North Africa, all throughout they there. Muhammad okay, the African kings. Exactly, exactly. That's correct. Let alone created bastard children by doing what? Mm -hmm. Okay, and okay, mixing with the women. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's a story also. All right, and then of course you look at the other part, it's which UNESCO religion. brought out that Dr. Clark talked about religion. slave trade in the Indian Ocean. Okay, religion to regulate. Okay, the the form to right. regulate. Control. What? So when they Mohammedize, when they Mohammedize the kings, the kings then were their leaders, and the, the people followed. And the people, not all, the ones who didn't were captured. Gotcha. Yeah. And so. And then the yeah. other part of which we don't talk about as much is that when you had the Sangha Empire. The last standing. The last one. Now remember, that wasn't destroyed until when? 1591. Mm -hmm. Now remember, the, the Moors had already... And King Ferdinand right. of France. But remember, the Moors already lost power yeah. on land in Europe and what? In Spain, 1492. Yeah. So almost 100 years later, you still had an empire going on. Yeah. But now, you had the Moroccans. Okay? Mm-hmm. The Sultan mm -hmm. who committed the genocide on the people of Sangay, the whole concept in my brother's keeper, okay? Because what happened, all right? Ahmed Baba, who was a scholar in Timbuktu, mm -hmm. wrote 47 books, all right? He was the one who was captured in exile when Sangay was captured. Mm -hmm. But now you had an, a Moroccan emperor, looked just like you and I. Mm -hmm. Who now made contact with Queen Elizabeth, daughter of Henry VIII, explaining, okay, that I apologize for not getting back in contact with you because I had war going on with the Sun Gay. But if you would help me, okay, and that's where the gunpowder came from, all right, because it was the Queen Elizabeth who introduced the weapons, okay. She said, you help me defeat Antonio of Spain, I'll give you the weapons you need to defeat the Sangay. And that's exactly what defeated them, okay? And then they captured Ahmed Baba, mm -hmm. who was the scholar at that time. Mm -hmm. And there's a book out by Felix Du Bois called Timbuktu the Mysterious. Dr. Clark mentioned Timbuk that. Timbuktu and what? It's called Timbuktu the Mysterious. The Mysterious. I have that book in my library, but I'm what's interesting now, about search, that? In Search of Timbuktu. Okay, this one here, mm -hmm. you have him stating in there that there were once they lost power in Europe in Spain Portugal I'm talking about the Arabs there were many jobs teaching positions that they applied for in Timbuktu that they weren't even qualified for mm -hmm. all right he names the scholars in Timbuktu that's what's nice about it all right he names them all right and talks about you know the university mm -hmm. okay the education system another one that Dr. Clark mentioned called a tropical dependency by Lady Lagarde. I don't know if you ever heard of her, Mr. Mm -hmm. Brown Lagarde. Mm -hmm. All right. And she was more so going to talk about the British takeover. But when she's seen so many interesting things happen in the University of San Corre at Timbuktu and what was going on, she changed it and wrote about the scholars there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, sadly, who was it? A Moroccan emperor, just like you and I. What is his name? Bilal Il Mansour, mm. who was responsible for destroying Timbuktu. And when they brought Ahmed Baba up into exile, he asked him, 
The people were so happy to see him. Oh, great scholar, great scholar, uh, please, and bestow your wisdom upon us. I'm not, I'm not here to bestow any wisdom. Huh? I'm captured. I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner. And he asked Il Mansur, okay, why did you capture our people? Why did you destroy our city? And he asked him, come from behind that curtain. Who do you think you are? Bilal Ibn Mansur stated that I wanted to unify Islam. And Ahmed Baba said then, if you wanted to unify Islam, why didn't you start with the Turks? Took the havoc that they reaped. Okay, couldn't answer him. All right? He died in exile. I don't even think he made it back home. But that was the last time. Now imagine if that empire wasn't destroyed, we could have had our own industrial revolution. Absolutely. That was the last war well, we of our summer sun. That's why they took okay? it down. Yeah. Okay? Because remember now, the Moors had already lost power on land in Spain in 1492. Mm -hmm. hundred years later, you're talking about almost a hundred years later, mm -hmm. 1591, it was destroyed. Mm -hmm. So we could have had our own African re industrial revolution mm -hmm. that benefited us because you still had that last major civilization that took place on the African soil. Because remember, most of North Africa was what? Already Muslims, okay? So, but in the Western part, and even those scholars in the western sudan and Sangay, they still never got rid of their traditional african way of life right. they incorporated Both. the scholars the the, the, the they incorporated but the matrilineal they had women in places okay yeah okay that in in islam they would not they wouldn't accept it okay right and when it, but yeah, no, they came. incorporated both that's the reason that's why right. the arab um today and historically has never considered the African man a true Muslim. That and, and right to this day, there is there are a few temples where I live, and they don't. And these are Arabs, and they don't let the black Muslims in there. They say that they're not really Muslims, so they Mohammedize them so that they can control them. But they never saw them as Muslim to this very day, because the African man who practice and converted to Muhammadism uh, also maintained his African deities and whenever he had to go to war led by the Arabs into other African nations for the purpose of getting Africans and enslaving them and so he prayed to mm -hmm. the deities that he believed he worshiped he did rituals libations and all of that and he was a Muslim that was going to capture Africans because they would not move away from their African okay. religious beliefs and he thought that well we won't kill you because you're too valuable and so that started the whole West Indian um, population of Africans yeah, because that we forgot now. UNESCO has a book out. I don't know if you have it in your library too. It's been out for a while called "Slave Trading in the Indian Ocean." Was no. I don't hear people. Yeah, it does just what you're talking about. Yeah, slave trading in the Indian Ocean. Okay, and it's particularly dealing with what East Africa, but it's also dealing with the Arabs. Yeah, slave trading yeah. in the Indian Ocean. Yeah. Now UNESCO put this this book out. You know, yeah. Um, I knew about it because I have it in my library. Mm -hmm. But I remember Doctor Doctor John Henry Clark talking about that book also. Well worth reading, well documented. So the information is out there. Yeah. Okay. Make no mistake about yeah, it. Yes, just not made. My, my main point is. Into, I have the, um, uh, as a matter of fact, they're on loan from Minister Brown, UNESCO books. Um, it's the four volumes. The, it might have been more than four volumes. Yeah, it was. It was. It was seven. Because I have. I have oh, UNESCO. You know, UNESCO seven. General History of Africa. Uh, yeah, you're not supposed to be on a history. Yeah, yes. right. Yeah, yes. I have the. Not, uh, you have it's, the unabridged edition, right. am I right? It's yeah, not, they're right. There are there are seven. Yeah, because uh, I have the unabridged edition. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, right. The 15th because seven. the whole article that Dr. Obanga and Diop did when they went to the uh, symposium, it's yeah, it's in there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's interesting ah. because I because when you read it, you really get to see how thorough okay. Obanga and oh, Diop okay. was. And discipling the Baroque script and the people of ancient Egypt because okay. nobody there could really dispute them. Yeah. They just said, right now, we just disagree. Right. All right. But they never was able to with prove nothing. them wrong. Right. Okay. So that's the first yet. time they mm -hmm. had two Africans, okay, yeah. from the uh -huh. Congo and, Sen and Senegal to present their papers. Strictly was all Europeans. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or See, my main point is. 
and telling the story to themselves, to one yeah. another. They're preaching to the choir. They're not really writing this for anything, anybody other than scholars. This is what I want to sum up. Unless you know a lot about the history, you will not be able to follow the text. I want to share something with you that I found very interesting. Y'all don't know if you ever heard of this called The Creature from Jekyll Island. No. It deals with the Federal Reserve, which is not a Federal Reserve. Okay, it's 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 probably owned. But this is what I want to share with you. And this is this is what I want to share with you that's deal with the education. And I thought this was really interesting here. It says on page five hundred and fifty five, education as a tool for human engineering. Now this is what I thought was interesting, and it sums it all up. The third printout is dated nineteen oh four and is a report issued. Now nineteen oh four now is issued by the Journal Education Board. One of the first foundations established by Dr. Excuse me, by John D. Rockefeller Sr. The purpose of the foundation was to use the power of money, not to raise the level of education in America as widely believed at the time, but to influence the direction of that education. Specifically, it was to promote the ideology of collectivism and internationalism. The object was to use the classroom to teach attitudes that encourage people to be passive and submissive to the rulers. The goal was and is to create citizens who are educated enough for productive work under supervision, but not enough to question their authority or seek to rise above their class. True education was to be restricted to the sons and daughters of the elite. For the rest, it would be better to produce skilled workers with no particular aspirations other than to enjoy life. It was enough Okay, as D. Togovi phrased it, that the people should rejoice, provided they think of nothing but rejoicing. Mm -hmm. In the first publication mm -hmm. of the General Education Board, mm -hmm. Fred Gates explained the plan. And this is what it is. In our dream, we have limited resources, and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hands. The present educational convention fades from our minds and unhampered by tradition. We work our own good upon a grateful and responsive rural folk. We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers of mental learning or of science. We have not to raise from among them authors, editors, poets, or men of letters. We shall not search for embryo great artists, painters, musicians, nor lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen of whom we have ample supply. The task we set before ourselves is very simple as well as very beautiful one. To train these people as we find them to perfectly ideal life just where they are in their homes, in the shop, and on the farm. Meaning that the foundation of the education that was set up in America was not yes. meant to do what? Enlighten you. No. It was basically to do what? To Keep maintain to control, the status yeah. quo. To control. Yeah. To control. Mm -hmm. So when you look at all this information, it's not that it's not known by those Egyptologists, scholars, etc. They know mm -hmm. it, but what purpose is it going to serve for me to enlighten you? Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you want it, it's in the archives, okay, but you're going to pay for it. All right? Mm -hmm. So what our people, right. the love affair of doing this here, I don't have to have an education, but I, so I can write a song, okay, about a woman taking off her pants and make a million dollars out of it. Okay, and be on tour. So we're so caught up in it. Even though it's only with our athletes and entertainers, it's a small minority in terms of numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's the direction we go. This here, all right, what do you see this at? Museums, educational systems, all right? And then how do we get you away from it? Simply, we call it the Middle East. Mm. Now, yeah. we know that was a term that was invented because there's no yeah. such thing as the Middle East. Right. But when I call it the Middle East, I'm going to take the modern name of Egypt and place it in the Middle East. And I'm going to give you Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. That means I took mm -hmm. Egypt away from you. Mm -hmm. Okay, made it part of the Middle East. Which is the beginning of uh, civilization. And now you don't have nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. You're Sub. You're below mm -hmm. Africa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or Sub-Saharan. You're below the Sahara. So now you don't have nothing to do with this. Even though you see... Who these people were. Mm -hmm. You see, when you understand the, not just pictorial, the language, mm -hmm. when you understand the symbolism, you see it has nothing to do with Europeans. Right. Okay, nothing at all. Right. All right. 
But the point is, if I get you and I even want to think about it, talk about it, I don't have to worry about you, okay, going back into your past. All right, I keep you right at the present. Mm -hmm. All right? This is a book the here is my story. called Conspiracy of the Rich by Robert Kiyosaki. Rich there, that, rich that, poor dad. But I, I thought it was interesting. Oh, yeah. I thought it was interesting that he quoted also um, the same thing here. And I'm not going to read the same thing, but I, I, I thought it was interesting because he, 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 he did the same thing with... Um, is this the one... What is it at? Um, page 36. Okay, called Hijacking the Education System. I think that's what it is. And he said the same thing. Now, I'm not going to read all of it. Okay. He says, um, one of the greatest sins of our current education system is that it does not teach you about money. It teaches you how to be a good employer and how to know your station in life. Some would say that this is designed, for instance, and some would say this is by design. For instance, in the book, the Creature from Jekyll Island, Griffin quotes from the first occasional paper of the General Education Board entitled The Country School of Tomorrow, written by Frederick Gates. And I dream we have limited resources and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molded hands. The present educational convention fades from our minds and unhampered by tradition. We work our own good upon a grateful and responsive rural folks for the task we set before ourselves is very simple as one is a beautiful one to train these people as we find them to perfectly fit the ideal of just where they are. Meaning we're not trying to move you. Mm -hmm. We'll keep you right where you are. Right. So my you main point is that when you know what the educational system was originally designed for, the foundation of it, mm -hmm. and what it is, mm -hmm. okay, you mm -hmm. say to yourself, okay, to, well, you know what? You. All right, I, I, I know what's already in place, okay? Now, it's up to me to do my own necessary research, to put together eye epistemology, all right? You're not going to make no money doing this. The average person, first of all, if I can't feed mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I can't afford my mortgage, if I can't pay my bills, I can't really enjoy this. Mm -hmm. That's you right. You follow me? Right. So now you see why you our ancestors, the first thing they knew mm -hmm. that they studied was agriculture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I understand the cosmos, I understand the stars, mm -hmm. astronomy, astrology, Absolutely. I can plant. Can I can grow. put a calendar. Right. I can grow. Life comes Okay, from. life comes. And now once I got that in place, mm -hmm. now I can do, do what? Do now more research and study and do what? Progress. Mm -hmm. All right? To build. Mm -hmm. All right? To establish what? The Masonic order. Mm -hmm. Okay? Masonry, etc. Mm -hmm. Now I can go on and teach. Mm -hmm. So they put that in place. All right? My home is not just a home. For me, it's a sacred temple. It's my That's recreation. Right. It's my therapy. All right? Yes, yes. One of the things I realized studying photography, now one thing, Minister Brown, I wish I could do, but I know I'm yeah, not good at it, is an artist. Man. I cannot draw to save my life. But one thing I know, I can study symbology. Mm -hmm. I can look and I can tell what period we're dealing with by oh. looking at those symbols, okay? Mm -hmm. And know, okay, that's dealing with the stellar. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, I know we're dealing with the age of Taurus because I could look. They, see how smart, intelligent that our ancestors were? Some yeah. like they knew this stuff was going to be hijacked. But if you yeah. understand the symbology, symbolic imagery, if you understand typology, the types, the animals, and what they were, what they were used for, how they were incorporated in everyday life, they're telling you a story. It's still there. Yeah. It's preserved. Yeah. I don't care how much Europeans hijack the information. It's still there. It's still there, and you can see it. And messages come through. Of exactly. The Africans of today. Of yes, today. Right. Because and you have that genetic that. blueprint. Yes. You still have it, okay? Yes. yes. You can see it here. I mean, beautiful. Absolutely. It's in the DNA. It's I mean, in the melody. Look at that. Carving. Now, what mm -hmm. I here's what's interesting about this. When I got this from eBay, this is right. The Black Heritage Edition, mm -hmm. okay, Whoa. King James Version, the all right, King James. King James Version, somebody else's version, an English king who said, listen, I'm breaking away from the Catholic Church, I want my translation, but now what's interesting about this here is, you got people that look like us on here, but look at the picture of the European Jesus, so it's a black edition, but you got a European Jesus on the top. They are really, really, okay, uh, so I'm wondering, did, did we write that or did Europeans or somebody else put that together and just say it as a black edition? Now, when you open up and tell you about Zipporah and tell you about certain quote unquote blacks in the Bible, kind of tell you, speaking, you follow me? But the main character, look what they got looking like. Okay? Wow. You see the symbolic imagery? Yeah. Okay? Right there. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying throw it away, I'm saying to study it. And the King okay? James, they don't know who King James was. Well, 
with respect to the, our history. Well, our people are the main ones, all right, when you go to church, the first thing they quote from is the KJVD. And that's all okay? they do is quote from it because right. they don't even live it. Even if they lived that, they would probably be wiser people. And what I, what I do is now... Not that they would be African, but they, they can become African if they rise well, up a little. What happens a lot of times is we go there and it's like, it's like I need a hit. Yeah. So I'm going go Sunday, I'll get a hit. It energizes me for seven days so I go back. But we don't question it. We don't. See, one of the things that I find missing is that we don't really internalize and study the etymology of those words. Mm. Okay. Now, I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying dismiss Christianity. I'm not saying dismiss the Bible because when you study it, numerology, okay, the history, okay, when you study the nations and all, the language, or rather the, cult, the culture is in the language. And it's in, okay. It, it, uh, but if you origins. go with face, it's origin. But if you go with face value, you miss the whole point because yeah. that's a that's a Masonic story, numerology, all that stuff is in there. Okay, mm -hmm. classic example. They were said that the so-called quote-unquote Yehudis or Israelites or Hebrews were enslaved in Egypt for how many years? Four hundred and thirty years. You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Minister Brown. Yeah. Think of numerology. Four plus three is what? Seven. Mm. Pyramid, mm -hmm. seven, seven days of the week. It's all numerology, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. That Bible has to do with the parts of the human body. One of the best books I found on that was God, the Bible, the planets, and your body. Breaks mm -hmm. down all of that stuff in there. What you read in there relates it to the human body, mm -hmm. okay? So when you begin to read it, all right, and you say, wow, okay, pituitary, hypothalamus, pineal, chakra, the pineal, all of that's in there. Mm -hmm. But then that would make sense because... Jacob got his name changed, I mean, yeah, to what? Israel, when he did what? Wrestle with an angel. And it hit up upon his what? Hmm? Thigh. Yes, yes. Thigh, right here. Mm -hmm. And then he seen God face to face and called that place what? Peniel. Peniel okay? oh, gland. No. Yes, yes, yes. It's the pine cone. Yeah, the pine cone. <laughs> it's pine cone. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what the pineal gland looks like. Looks that's what the like. looks like. Okay, yeah. I found these in Center City, and I picked them up and put them in a plastic bag and said, "There's the pineal gland, the pine cone, yeah, right there." Because that's what I it looks went, like. I went okay. and picked them all up, <laughs> right? and 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 soaked them in some hot water, and got the best pine all mm -hmm. soap. You know, just mopping no, the floor and no, cleaning the house. No, why pine the, trees? Just the pine. Because the, the greenery, man. right? It don't die in the what? One at a time, it's, okay? It's, right. See that whole thing with nature? Mm -hmm. Okay? There's no such thing. And that's what the Africans see. There's, There's no, no such thing, thing as death. Dying. It's, okay? It's a, it's, it's a transformation. It's a proverb that says one dies, one born, the land increases. African proverb. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So my main point is that when you see all that, that's why don't stop saying that we lost our culture. Okay? We, yeah, no, 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 no. Right. No, 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 no. What you lost is how to internalize and recognize it mm -hmm. because somebody else put their blueprint on it mm -hmm. all right but the foundation the primordial essence is still yours you just got to take the layer off mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and it show the origins now one of the things that i found that helped me out was etymology Amnesia. when i study etymology the origins of words mm -hmm. and now let's talk about it right now let's go upstairs but let's talk about it right now it's all right, right. Yeah, let's 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 bring it home okay Pata. The first thing you notice is that when you look at the Emmy Awards, what do you see? Almost a replica of Pata. You see the Emmy? Yeah. That's oh, the Emmy yes. Awards there. Yeah. Look at the profile. Yeah. Okay? This too. Yeah. Okay. That's this is the Egyptian Pata. Uh -huh. Okay? In right. the form of two oh, that is Okay? It. Right. Now, mm -hmm. but look at the look at the profile. Yeah. All right. Now the word Pata means what? To carve. Mm -hmm. To open. Okay? The opener. You with mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. Now, what is interesting about that? Okay? When you read the Quran, it's the word what? al yeah, which means the opener, mm -hmm. the opening. You open the chapter up. The first chapter you open up is called al mm -hmm. because in etymology, what? The P, H, and F are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, when you read Hebrew, you also see the word pata in Hebrew. Okay? Mm -hmm. P-T-H, P-T-A-H, P-T, which means to open. It 
was a title. We also have something called the what? Per M Haru, right. which is the coming forth by what? Day, day and night. Or the coming mm -hmm. forth by day and night. Mm -hmm. Haru signifies what? Day, light, etc. Mm -hmm. All right? I have something that was written called the Egyptian Book of the Dead Misnomer, translated right. by LePage Renault. But here's the key printed privately. Privately printed for the Society of Biblical Archaeology, London, 1803. Printed privately. Mm -hmm. This is before Budge's book. Mm -hmm. Seven volumes. See how old they are? Yeah. This one here is 1803. 18, 1803. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. See the ass on the paper. Book of the Dead. Printed privately for the Society of Biblical Archaeology. So Europeans knew, all right? They knew, uh, okay. all right? Print it properly. Then you get the hardback. And I like this one because right next to it, you have the what? Medunetra. So you can read this here. And what I like about this, now I don't know if you can get the hardback, but what's nice about this one here is that when you read it, let me show you what I mean. This has the, I'm trying to find, okay. This has the hieroglyphs right next to it. You follow me? Mm -hmm. As you can see. Now, I don't even know if you can get the hardback still of this. You could probably get it in a paperback, but this is Budge's, okay? And this was, this was printed 18. No, this one here, I was trying to figure uh, when, um, I think it was Bell Publishing Company did this. Let me just make sure. I wanted to show you that. Yeah, Bell Publishing Company, New York. Mm hmm Okay? The hieroglyph and transcript of the Powers and the translation to English and an introduction by Wallace Budge. Okay? But what's nice about this, you can get the Medu Nectar right next to it. Right. All right? But this is what I wanted to share with you. All right? When you want to talk about our worldview, okay, and I just want to just read something to you that I thought was interesting coming out of this book here. Okay. Now, again, this is mm -hmm. the initiate, all mm -hmm. right, in the tombs. I am he who cometh forth and proceedeth, and whose name is unknown to man. Right. right. Amen. Right. I am yesterday. Witness of eternity is my name. The persistent traveler upon the heavenly highways which I survey. I am the everlasting one. Sound like mm -hmm. a Christianity concept? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am felt and thought of as Kepara. Kepara means what? Transformation. Right. The beetle. The beetle. Okay. In my name, excuse me, I am felt and thought of as Kepara. I am the crown one. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. I am the dweller in the eye and in the egg. I am the dweller in the eye, even in its closing. I am that which it is supported. I come forth and I rise up, ascending from what? Your lower nature to mm -hmm. your high nature. Mm -hmm. I enter and I have life. That's the new life now. Mm -hmm. Okay, activating that pineal gland. I am the dweller in the eye. My seat is upon my throne. This is the throne, mm -hmm. the chakra, the crown chakra. And I am conspicuously upon, and I sit conspicu conspicuously upon it. I am Haru who steps onward through eternity. Mm. I have instituted the throne of which I am the master. So, you follow me? Now you mm -hmm. can see the beginnings of the Christian concept. Mm -hmm. As regards my mouth, whether in speech or in silence, I am right and fair. As regards my attribute, I hasten headlong. With all that pertaineth to me, honor proceeding from our, the one proceeding from the one. In my course, mm -hmm. I am the dweller in the eye. No evil or commodities, okay, befall of me. It is I who opened the gates of heaven. It is I. It is I who am master of the throne, and who opened the series of birth upon the day. 
I am the babe who treadeth his park of yesterday. I am this day to generations of men after generation. I am he who giveth you stableness for eternity, whether you be in heaven or upon earth, in the south or in the north, in the west, in the east, and the fear of me is upon you. I am he who fashions with his eye and who dieth not a second time. Because mm. you already rose, you already right. ascended, open up that pineal gland. Mm -hmm. So now you become a sar, the title. You get mm -hmm. the title now. Mm -hmm. I am the unknown one. I am the gladsome one. And no time hath been found, but served to create for me the heaven and the increase of earth and the increase of the offspring. It is I who rise up and shine forth, strength proceeding from strength, the one proceeding from the one. Concept mm -hmm. of what? Mm -hmm. Oneness. I Monotheism. Am. Mm -hmm. Okay, O thou who has set me in motion, for I was what motionless. Because remember, when you're at your lower nature, and you're rising, uh, you're motionless. Yeah. Okay, Asar, he's motionless, laying down. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. in that coffin, he's mm -hmm. motionless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Masonic, you have the lion's paw grip. I'm rising you up. Mm -hmm. Okay, perpendicular, rise you up from your lower nature to ascend to your what? Higher, higher nature, nature okay right. so again um it is i who rises up and shine forth strength proceeding from strength the one proceeding from the one O thou who has set me in motion for i was motionless a mighty link within the close of yesterday the past mm, mm. but my present activity is in a link within the close of my hand the alpha and omega hear me out i am not known but I am the one who knoweth thee. I am not known, but I am the one who knoweth thee. Mm. Yes. I am not to be grasped, but I am one who grasps thee. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. am Haru, mm -hmm. Prince of Eternity, a fire before your face, which inflameth your hearts toward me. Mm. Listen to me. I am master of my throne, and I pass onwards. The present time is the path which I have opened, and I have set forth my free from all things evil. Okay? Now, in Revelations, remember, I am the masters of my throne. Mm -hmm. Now, read Revelations chapter 10, verses 2. You get the same verse. Master of my throne. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So, my main point. And then, there's another passage in there that says, I am yesterday and today. Witness of eternity is my name. The Alpha and the Omega. So my main point is, when you begin to cross your discipline, when you begin to do the research, when you know mm. the African blueprint, the science, the Nile Valley, inner Africa, okay, mm -hmm. Kevin, Nahesi, etc., and then you begin to see the European side, you can see exactly, you don't have to dismiss anything. You just show the culture, you show the origins, the culture continuity, where it right. started at, all mm -hmm. right? Because once you start telling somebody, all right, that's the white man's religion. All right? You start going there, you're going to lose them. You show mm -hmm. the origins. We know it was Europeanized. Mm -hmm. Scholars mm -hmm. who've done a serious study, as you can see, they know where it came from. But they're not. What are they going to get out to tell you? Right. All right? Our job was to embed it, live that life, and then the priests, okay, the shackles, what did they do? They went out to other nations and those who were ready. Mm-hmm. They share that information with them through the what? Initiation process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, it all started with studying what? Nature. But before you studied nature, you had to do what? You had to be able to feed your people first. Yeah. You had to make sure yeah. that they were fed. Now, without any wars, good weather, the study took place what? In the womb of the what? Heavens. Mm. You follow me? Mm. Because what? The best time to study was when? At night, you can't see stars during the daytime. Right. You have to study at night. So you're up all night, and then what happened? Now you build that pyramid, it's in line with what? Orion. Right. Remember the three pyramids? Yes. Khufu, Karfei, Men, Kara. Okay? And it's in line with Orion. All right? So mm -hmm. what happens when Orion, when that, that star moves, it hits that chamber, and that light finds falls right through that pyramid. Okay? Let me ask you something. Because I have heard it said that the pyramids are built in such a way, I think it's the king chamber where, you know, you, they, they, uh, 
where the light would come through at the at the great year and shine through but that's that's every 25,000 years represents what, an astronomical cycle okay um, what kind of understanding would uh, an engineering would you have to accomplish in order to design it even with um, uh, Ramesses his birthday his tomb, uh, his uh, temple was built so the light would shine through and shine on his right face. That's correct. That's at correct. his birthday. That is correct. But remember now, remember, if you understand engineering, if you understand your what? Remember, they were expert with geometry. Geo means what? Earth. Yeah. Metry yeah. means the measurement. Mm -hmm. So when the engineers, when you, when you know your science, remember, you're talking what? Geometry. Arithmetic, you're talking about calculus, you're talking mm. about, okay, understanding the movements of the stars. Right. All right. Astrology. Astrology, because all, you follow me, the disciplines, the mm. several of the arts, you had to study and master that in order for that to happen. Now, when they rebuilt the Temple of Ramesses when it was flooded, the light don't shine on the face no more like it used to. Right. But now, let's, let's look at the concept, because again, I'm glad you brought that up. When you look at your early Christian churches... Okay, let's start with the clear story. You can see the evolution of the churches all the way to the Christian Basilica. All right, so when you begin to look here at the earliest clear story hall of Giza, all right, 29th century, you see the light coming in right here, okay, for the sun. You with me? Mm -hmm. Then here, the halls of Karnak, okay? Mm -hmm. Here, same thing. Then you get the Basilica of uh, Delos built in Greece. You see the same concept, architecture. You follow me? Mm -hmm. the Basilica of Julius Caesar. Same concept all the way to the Christian Basilica. Now, what's my main point? When you go down that hall like a nave, it's no different than here. You're going down the nave in those Christian churches. You with me? Mm -hmm. It's built in a way as that when the sun comes in through that nave, it's what's in the middle of that altar and that light hits you right mm -hmm. where the Holy of Holy is. Right. No different than where, you, where the concept comes from, the Nile Valley. Same thing. I mm -hmm. remember going to Catholic school, and I remember when we used to have the May processions, when you go down the nave, all right, you could see that sun at 12 o'clock, straight through, and it would hit that Holy of Holies, that altar there, okay, mm -hmm. where the so-called chalices would be at, all right, in there, and that's where it would be at. But my main point is, you can't get away from what? The science of the what? S-U-N. S-U-N mm -hmm. and S-O-N go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You can't get away from it. Now, in that cosmology of the ancient African and their worldview, the way they brought about Ptah, um, because ultimately the mound that rose out of the waters of Nun, uh, and Ra comes out of that, I, I want you to explain that, but Ra is, is hydrogen. And the way the science now, according to Professor Ebo, um, all matter emanates out of the hydrogen mm -hmm. atom. So the Africans understood this thousands of years ago and built those concepts within their understanding of nature. We still have not past the atom, which is what they uh, understood and gave us the concept of uh, thousands of years ago. But it's all, all coming out of that hydrogen And is it atom. interesting of the connection between atom, A-T-U-M, atom, A-D-A-M, atom Ra, all right? You can't get away from that word. All right, Adam. Mm -hmm. All right, because just what you said, they understood the solar aspect. Now, they never got away from it because where else did they represent it at? Right here. Oh, yeah. That's the origins of the halo that yeah. you see around the what? Your saints, yeah. Jesus Christ, etc. Okay, the halo, the sun. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the Adam. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you can tell what you're doing here because... At the same time, what do you see there? The the cow's horns. So you what 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 so what age are you in? 
You you're in the age of uh, which oh, with the horns. The horns. Um, the bull. The bull. Cow plows. Yeah. Age of Taurus. The Taurian yeah. age. You follow right, me? Right, So right. you always, if you know the symbology, you know what age you're dealing okay. with. Okay. Okay? Um, Agriculture. All right. right? But they also preserve the what? The masculine aspect of it Do what? The sun. The Very sun sure. brings the what? Rays down. The atom rays, right? Which fertilizes what? Mother Nature after you plow, right. after you put your seeds in, after you harvest, okay? And then what do you use the cow for? The plow. Exactly. All right. And, and the giver of life, milk. And the giver the of summarize. life, milk, exactly. So mm. now you begin to see why they never got away from the cow. They didn't worship the cow. The earth was called what? Ta earth. Mm -hmm. It was a hippopotamus, okay, with one breast, all right? Just like you've seen the unification, okay, of Kemet. You see a man with the what? A breast. You see it? Yes. Okay. Meaning you were what? Both what? One, male and female. Now let me ask you another question uh, since we're talking about astrology. And we went from uh, we went from Leo uh, to Aquarius, which is where we are now. And that symbolizes, you were explaining to me, that symbolizes a period of 25,000 years. What does that mean to us as a people? Okay, what happened, again, you have to look at what it's saying here about the precision of the equinox, okay? And what happens, okay, when we talk about uh, 25, they, they've rounded up to 26,000 years, all right? Mm -hmm. But it's 25,900 years. And what happens is that through, when you get another age, it's another awakening that takes place. Right now, we're ending the age of Pisces, which represented bondage. Right. Now you're going into the age of Aquarius. All right. Now you can relate that in your Christian concept Bible where it says what? When you see the man go up in the inner room, what does he have? Two what? Waters. All right. Pails of water. Now what this Aries symbolizes? Water, Aquarius, aqua. Aqua, yeah, aqua yes, Aquarius. Yes, right. Okay. So it's telling you in that, again, in the Christian Bible, about you're entering the age of Aries. Now, the age of Aries is an age of what? Enlightenment? Enlightenment. An age where basically, all right, you're not accepting no falsehood. Mm -hmm. Now you begin to see people coming out, speaking their mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see a lot of things happening because you're getting ready. Now, we may not begin to see it because it's just starting. We may not begin to see the age of Aries, but our grandkids will. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have a shift. Okay? You can talk about the weaponry. You can talk about nuclear energy. You can talk about destroying the world. But one thing you're not going to do because you never was able to do it, you're not going to be able to conquer nature. It's going to happen whether you stop with what and your weapons and what have you, not going to be enough to stop nature from knowing what it has to do to do what? Replenish mm -hmm. and get rid of the old in order to bring in the new. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why you have that happen now with the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. right? Awakening. Kids, our children, the youth, you got to tell them the truth now. They're not going to be accepting falsehood no more. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's what the age of Aries is, the age to bring about enlightenment, awareness. Okay, mm -hmm. now you're going to begin to see a shift of power and you're going to see nature do some devastating things. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know it because it's here. Okay, remember, okay, it's just remember we said in retrograde. Mm -hmm. Okay, back then, now you remember in retrograde, back then, in, in, in 2,000 years ago, it's cancer now where Sirius rises. Now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago was in what? Leo. Because you, you in retrograde. You go just the opposite. Mm -hmm. Now, a good book to do, deal with just all what we're talking about is right here. All right? You may have heard of it. It's right here. Called Echoes of an Old Dark Land. Isn't it Charles Finch? Even by, yes. This yes. one here by yes. Charles okay. Finch. Yeah. And this one here. The Star of a Deep Beginning. The Genesis of African Science and Technology. All right, That's but Finch all what we're talking about in reference to the age of Aquarius, the great year, mm -hmm. to me, mm -hmm. in my opinion, Dr. Finch breaks it down to the point where the average person who has an understanding of Egypt, Egyptology, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. African history, he breaks it down. Okay? He breaks it down. One of the best books I've read about the great year, the precision of equinox, and of course, the serious star, etc. All right? Well worth reading. Now, can we, since we're talking about Dr. Finch, 
Can we segue, we're coming back to this, but can we segue and deal with the Dogon, who they were, and uh, because Dr. Finch studied the Dogon in order to come up with a lot of the uh, information he had. He didn't just study the Dogon, yeah. but, you know, because he was an astrologist as well, uh, as well as a medical doctor. Right, that's he correct. He headed uh, Mohouse College of Medicine. Um, but he lectured on the Dogon. And uh, can you can you speak a little? I don't want to go too deep in that because I, although I studied and read about the Dogon, not enough to really elaborate. I mean, I, I do know about the Dogon in reference to, okay, Sirius B, mm -hmm. and you know you take you got Sirius A and you have Sirius B, which you can't see with the naked eye. Right. They were able to see it, okay, and they also built their what cosmology around right. Sirius B. Mm -hmm. All right, and it wasn't until what maybe 20 25 years ago, somewhere like that, where we were able to see with our modern telescopes, right? All right, but remember, they were able to do that because it was incorporated in their what their cosmology, all right. And then, of course, those who studied, all right, had to study with the grass, but you had to spend several years, right? Okay, mm -hmm. to study, mm -hmm. and they had to be comfortable with you before they mm -hmm. gave up that knowledge. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're talking about the Dogons of Mali. Am I right? Dogons yes. Of Mali. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, but in terms of going deep into that, I can't because the, 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 I don't want to the terminology in terms of their words. I can't pronounce it that well. All right. But I know that they were able to see Sirius B. Okay. Which we can't see with the naked eye, but they were able to see it. You know, which is it, it, it's. It's a phenomena that is within us because if it was in them, it's also in us. Because you have that genetic blueprint, that we DNA. Have <clears throat> that same DNA. That's correct. So, um, but you have already laid out a blueprint for going back. But I want to, to show you retrieve something else that. too. I got this <coughs> off of Eva, and I thought this was very interesting. All right. I got to spend more time on eBay, but I tell you, you okay. got some jewels on and eBay. <laughs> what do you see there? Uh, uh, that is a, a uh, that's a bird and the sun. And how many rays do you see? One, Something. two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, it's a little more than that. Eight. It's actually 14. Oh, I can't see it. Okay, yeah, when you look at, when you look at all these, it's oh, 14. Yeah. You have oh, the sun in the middle, you have the rays. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to understand two things I'm going to share with you. When you deal with etymology, which is the origin and true meaning of words, the word holy comes from the Greek, helios, mm -hmm. which means what? Like helio yeah. means what? Sun. Mm -hmm. Bible, biblos, biblos means what? Sun book. Are mm -hmm. you with me? Ah, uh, yeah. So it's a book of the sun. Isn't it interesting how you start the days of the week off with what? Sunday, day of the sun. Monday, day of the moon. Okay, so you never really got rid of what? The old... The seven planets. Yeah. It's embedded when you understand. See, the, 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 the language is in the culture. You follow mm -hmm. me? Excuse me, mm -hmm. the culture is within the language. Mm -hmm. But my main point is this. You have 14 rays here, right? Right. Now, Minister Brown, Osar, as the story go, Biden was cut up into how many pieces? 14. I rest my case. There we go. I rest my case. Caught up in the 14 pieces. That's right. Okay. 7 plus 7, 14. You follow me? Yeah. And the only, as the story go, the only part to integrate, to make them whole, because now you're dealing with what? Fragmentation. All right. Mm -hmm. So now to integrate, to become one, to become the whole, okay, what part was missing? The penis. Washington Monument, as you know. Washington Monument, as you know. Yes. Okay? Right. Now, a whole Masonic symbolism was dealt around that. I want you to go upstairs. Mm-hmm. And I want you to take your video, and I want you to get this wall here, this picture here. All right? The obelisk here, 555, 500, 555 feet high, and one eighth. And there's the Washington Monument. Whoa. Whole blueprint. Got this off of eBay years ago. Lay it out 
of the whole excavation, talk about Kenneth, the whole bit, survey and everything, compare this to this, okay? But it's an African symbol. Yes. As we know. Right. Okay? But I found it very interesting how they took an African blueprint mm -hmm. to use. Because remember, and I don't know if you know, when you read The Magic of the Obelisk by Peter Tompkins, mm -hmm. all right, when George Washington died, they performed an Osarian ritual on him. I don't, I don't know if you know that yet. They no, performed that, that on him, mm -hmm. okay, with the um, Darkasia. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. they performed that on him, all right, because this here, two aspects, it denotes what? Resurrection. Now, here's my point the Aulus or the Tekanu, it can be resurrection where you can ascend mm -hmm. as a Sar laying motionless, all right, and then through meditation, through taking that spermatosa and that seed, through breathing. Mm. And then they chant, um, the vibration, you're sending that energy from your what? Sacral spinal column up through the chakras, your energy centers, through the mandula obligata to do what? Activate the pineal. Resurrection. That's the true resurrection. Ascension. Mm -hmm. Or you can what? Descend mm -hmm. and have just the opposite. Instead of going north, which is the crown chakra, go south by way of what? Wasting it through gluttony, through just sex with anybody. You mm -hmm. follow me? So right. the answers were saying, hey, you got a choice in the matter. You can descend. Or you can ascend. Or you can ascend. When you use it a seed, it's for what? Procreation. Right. But if you just constantly wasting it, you descend it. You follow me? Yes. So now you can understand and see why, okay? Now, where did she find it at? Hmm? Or Seth found the penis where? Uh, no, no, catfish. It's, well, supposedly it's followed by a catfish. Right. In the what? Water. Right. Water symbolic of what? Trance. Being in a trance. Uh, you follow me? Oh, man. You follow me? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So now you can see the concept of what? Baptism. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Water, bring you out into the what? Next stage is what? Air. Don't yeah. stop with the baptism because now you what? Ascending through what? The air. Mm -hmm. Now, who's bringing down the air? The what? The bird. Mm -hmm. Feminine. Mm -hmm. Notice the white, the blue in that bird. Mm -hmm. All right? And it's doing what? Taking the what? The seed that you didn't waste mm -hmm. to do what? Ascend. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the metaphysical aspect is there. Right. But they built the whole philosophy around it, and then Europeans did what? Europeanized. They, yeah. As yeah. you can see. Right. All right. It tells you here about the survey, and it tells you about Kemet, all right? The obelisk and Kemet, how it was designed, the whole bit. And, and this was a Masonic ritual. When they, put, when they finally erected this in place, they mm -hmm. had a whole Masonic ritual around it. And the ritual explained how where the information came from, the knowledge, the arts, the sciences, masonry, its origins, all right, through Kim. Now, we know there was no similar attachment in terms of saying, hey, it came from us. But the information was there. So when mm -hmm. you cross your discipline, that's why I said, stop saying we lost our culture. Stop saying we don't have no culture, okay? Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Claim it, okay, if you know how to do the research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you know etymology to put those words together, mm -hmm. okay? So you can see the symbolism is there. We never lost it. We just don't know how to read the what? Symbolism. Right. Okay? Yeah. Astronomy, astrology, okay? The arts, the sciences, masonry, okay? Mm -hmm. The concept mm -hmm. of a judgment. And let me show you this while you're up here. You notice here, I have the scales. Now you see the scale of what? My eye. Because right. now you're dealing with what? The Christian con well, the, you can see the Christian concept there because you can see where it came from. But now you're dealing with what eschatology, mm -hmm. okay, related to the end of the world, quote unquote. All right. But now let's look at this. You see Ampu. Right. What do you see back here? The cable toe. You see it? Yes. You yes. see the cable toe? 
Mm -hmm. You see his Masonic apron. Mm -hmm. So you know it's a what? Initiation. Right. Okay? You see Ani. All right? Now, this is what I want to share with you. All right? You see the scales. Mm -hmm. Okay? You see the feather and you see the heart. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay? In Islam, and we place the scales of justice, scales, for the day of resurrection, so no soul will be treated unjustly at all. And if there's even the weight of a mustard seed, we use the feather. Mm -hmm. We will bring it forth. It's sufficient. We are as accountant. Another one. And we will set up a justice, excuse me, and we will set up a just balance on the day of resurrection so that no cell shall be dealt with unjustly. Okay? We shall fix the scales of justice on the day of resurrection. You see the concept? Mm -hmm. Scales. Resurrection. Okay? Resurrect means to erect, rise up. Okay? Re means to go back. All right? But you can see where it comes from. Right. You, you can see. That's why I said trace your origins. You don't have to dismiss Islam. Show the origins of it. Okay. You follow me? Yes, that is true. Show the origins of it. Mm -hmm. All right? So you can tell what it's mis Now, if, if, if you know anybody that's a mason, who, who's the one who has the tower? The tower is the one that three times, three knocks mm -hmm. to open the door up to bring in the initiate, the inner apprentice mason. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Three knocks now. Mm -hmm. Okay? Remember I said the pyramid, three. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's initiation going on. Masonic foot. You see the apron? Yep. Okay. All right. You see the square? Slaves did not sell. That's correct. So the captains and, and the owners would kill them. Mm -hmm. Throw them overboard because the insurance company paid them. Yeah, they weren't sure. So they didn't lose any money. So a lot of that, you know, all of those bodies in the Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. and the English Channel, they were murdered. They were literally thrown well, over. Because they were insured. Yes. All right? They were insured. Mm -hmm. So as a result of being insured, when you went back to Liverpool, okay, you got your money. You got paid. All right? Absolutely. See, it's a sensitive subject because a lot of us don't want to belittle certain other ethnic groups who are involved. Everybody. All wealth, people, people with wealth, okay, who had an interest in making money. The ones you were who involved, had the money okay? to invest, they invested and buying and, ships, and then a lot of them paying also, captains because they didn't sell. That the is money correct. Is did not go on those ships, and then a lot of them went at the auctions and, right. to auction them off. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. no different than stocks. And when you had the stock, the stock trade, it was the same thing. And the ships were built in Bristol. The vast majority of that's correct. The 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 that was the first and the largest uh, sea baron port. In England, in all of England, that was the first one. So it set in motion what? The Industrial Revolution. Yeah. Okay? The because first one. The first Industrial Revolution. For the because, Europeans. Because now with the machinery, now excuse me, before the machinery, before the Industrial Revolution, you needed what? Human labor. Yes. Because if I own all this land, I need somebody to pick that cotton. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now remember, it wasn't by accident that the Holocaust of human trafficking started with what? Spain and Portugal. Mm -hmm. well, why is that? Well, Arabs because, actually. Okay. Well, I'm talking about as far as Europeans. You started with the Arabs. As far as you, right? The Arabs, right? They were, yeah. You can't leave. First. Yeah, you can't leave them out too. We know that. They're yeah, the yeah, one yeah. that the Arabs, introduced. Okay. They, the whole European continent. They would have. They, they, exactly. They Open it up because it. They, yeah. that is correct. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the Europeans, it was it, it was no accident that it started with Spain and Portugal because that's where the Moors were the longest. Mm -hmm. So they had the technology. All right. And then when the Arabs, okay, because when the Arabs, remember, that's the part that we don't like to talk about because you know that partnership between the Arabs and the Moors was in Spain also. Mm -hmm. But when the Moors lost power, okay, when they finally got expelled, all right, many of those same Arabs, okay, turned their backs on the Africans also. And also, when you talk about opening up the west coast of Africa, Okay, Arabs played a part in that too because they controlled a lot of what North Africa, all throughout they there. Muhammad okay, the African and, kings. Exactly, exactly. That's correct. Let alone created bastard children by doing what? Mm -hmm. Okay, and okay, mixing with the women. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's a story also. All right, and then of course you look at the other part, it's which UNESCO religion. brought out that Dr. Clark talked about it's slave trade in the Indian Ocean. Okay, religion to regulate. Okay, the the form. 
to right. regulate, control. What? So when they Mohammedize, when they Mohammedize the kings, the kings then were their leaders, and the, the people followed. And the people, not all, the ones who didn't were captured. Captured, yeah. And so. And then the yeah. other part of which we don't talk about as much is that when you had the Sangay Empire. The last standing. The last one. Now remember that wasn't destroyed until when? 1591. Mm -hmm. Now remember the, the Moors had already been King Ferdinand right. France. But remember, the Moors already lost power yeah. on land in Europe and what in Spain, 1492. Yeah. So almost a hundred years later, you still had an empire going on. Yeah. But now you had the Moroccans. Okay? Mm -hmm. The Sultan, mm -hmm. who committed a genocide on the people of Sangay, the whole concept in my brother's keeper, okay? Because what happened, all right? Ahmed Baba, who was a scholar in Timbuktu, mm -hmm. with 47 books, all right? He was the one who was captured in exile when Sangay was captured. Mm -hmm. But now you had an, a Moroccan emperor, looked just like you and I. Mm -hmm who now made contact with Queen Elizabeth, daughter of Henry VIII, explaining, okay, that I apologize for not getting back in contact with you because I had war going on with the Sun Gay. But if you would help me, okay, and that's where the gunpowder came from, all right, because it was the Queen Elizabeth who introduced the weapons, okay. She said, you help me defeat Antonio Spain, I'll give you the weapons you need to defeat the Sangay. And that's exactly what defeated them, okay? And then they captured Ahmed Baba, mm -hmm. who was the scholar at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a book out by Felix Du Bois called Timbuktu the Mysterious. Dr. Clark mentioned Timbuktu that. Timbuktu and what? It's called Timbuktu the Mysterious. The Mysterious. I have that book in my library, but I'm what's interesting now about the search, that? In Search of Timbuktu. Okay, this one here, mm -hmm. you have him stating in there that there were once they lost power in Europe in Spain Portugal I'm talking about the Arabs there were many jobs teaching positions that they applied for in Timbuktu that they weren't even qualified for mm -hmm. all right he names the scholars in Timbuktu that's what's nice about it all right he names them all right and talks about you know the university mm -hmm. okay the education system another one that Dr. Clark mentioned called a tropical dependency by Lady Lagarde. I don't know if you ever heard of her, Mr. Mm -hmm. Brown Lagarde. Mm -hmm. All right. And she was more so going to talk about the British takeover. But when she's seen so many interesting things happen in the University of San Corre at Timbuktu and what was going on, she changed it and wrote about the scholars there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, sadly, who was it? A Moroccan emperor, just like you and I. What is his name? Bilal Il Mansour, mm. who was responsible for destroying Timbuktu. And when they brought Ahmed Baba up into exile, he asked him. The people were so happy to see him. Oh, great scholar, great scholar, uh, please, it's bestow your wisdom upon us. I'm not, I, I'm not here to bestow any wisdom. I'm, I'm captured. I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner. And he asked Il Mansour, okay, why did you capture our people? Why did you destroy our city? And he asked him. Come from behind that curtain. Who do you think you are? Bilal Il Mansour stated that I wanted to unify Islam. And Ahmed Baba said, then if you wanted to unify Islam, why didn't you start with the Turks? Took the havoc that they reaped. Okay? Couldn't answer him. All right? He died in exile. Mm -hmm. I don't even think he made it back home. But that was the last time. Now imagine if that empire wasn't destroyed. We could have had our own industrial revolution. Absolutely. That was the last war well, we of our summer sun. That's why they okay? took it down. Yeah. Okay, because remember now, the Moors had already lost power on land in Spain in 1492. Mm -hmm. Hundred years later, you're talking about almost a hundred years later, mm -hmm. 1591, it was destroyed. Mm -hmm. So we could have had our own African mm -hmm. re industrial revolution mm -hmm. that benefited us because you still had that last major civilization that took place on the African soil. Because remember, most of North Africa was what? Already Muslims, okay? So, but in the Western part, and even those scholars in the Western Sudan and Sangay, 
they still never got rid of their traditional African way of life. Right. They incorporated Both. the scholars, the, 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 they incorporated, but the matrilineal, they had women in places, okay? Yeah. Okay? That in, in Islam, they would not. They wouldn't they accept it, not. okay? Right. And when Ibn Battuta you know, they came, incorporated both. That's the reason that's why right. the Arab um, today and historically has never considered the African man a true Muslim. That and, and right to this day, there is there are a few temples where I live, and they don't. And these are Arabs, and they don't let the black Muslims in there. They say that they're not really Muslims, so they Muhammadize them so that they can control them. But they never saw them as Muslim to this very day. Because the African man who practiced and converted to Muhammadism uh, also maintained his African deities. And whenever he had to go to war, led by the Arabs, into other African nations for the purpose of getting Africans and enslaving them and so he prayed to the deities that he believed. He worshipped. He did rituals, libations, and all of that. And he was a Muslim that was going to capture Africans because they would not move away from their African religious beliefs. And he thought that, well, we won't kill you because you're too valuable. And so that started the whole West Indian um population of Africans. Yeah, because that we forgot now UNESCO has a book out. I don't know if you have in your library too. It's been out for a while called Slave Trading in the Indian Ocean. Which no. I don't hear people yeah, it does just what you're talking about. Yeah. Slave trading in the Indian Ocean. Okay? And it's particularly dealing with what East Africa, but it's also dealing with the Arabs. Yeah. Slave trading the in the Indian Ocean. Yeah. Now UNESCO put this this book out, you know. Yeah. Um I knew about it because I have it in my library. Mm -hmm. But I remember Dr. J Dr. John Henry Clark talking about that book also. Well worth reading, well documented. So the information is out there. Yeah. Okay. Make no mistake about yeah, it. Yes, just not made. My, my main point is. I have the, um, uh, as a matter of fact, they are on loan from Minister Brown, UNESCO books. Um, it's the four volumes. The, it might have been more than four volumes. Yeah, it was. It was. It was seven. Because I have. I have oh, UNESCO. You know, UNESCO, UNESCO General Africa. History of Africa. Oh, yeah, UNESCO General History. Yeah, yes. right. Yeah, yes. I have the. Not, uh, you have it's, the unabridged edition, right. am I right? It's yeah, not no, the abridged. Right. There, are, there are seven. Yeah, because right. uh, I have the unabridged edition. Yeah, because mm -hmm. right? the fifteen. Seven. Because the whole article that Dr. Obanga and Diop did when they went to the uh, symposium, it's yeah, it's in there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's interesting ah. because I because when you read it, you really get to see how thorough okay. Obanga and oh, Diop okay. was. And discipling the Baroque script and the people of ancient Egypt because okay. nobody there could really dispute them. Yeah. They just said, right now, we just disagree. Right. All right. But they never but was able to prove nothing, them wrong. Right. Okay. And that's the first yet. time they yeah. had two Africans, okay, yeah. from the uh -huh. Congo and, Sen and Senegal to present their papers. Strictly was all Europeans. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or See, my main point is. And telling the story to themselves, to one yeah. another. They're preaching to the choir. They're not really writing this for anything, anybody other than scholars. This is what I want to sum up. Unless you we... know a lot about the history, you will not be able to follow the text. I want to share something with you that I found very interesting. Y'all don't know if you ever heard of it. It's called The Creature from Jekyll Island. No. It deals with the Federal Reserve, which is not a Federal Reserve. Okay? It's, 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 it's probably owned. But this is what I want to share with you. And it, this, is, this is what I want to share with you that's dealing with the education. And I thought this was really interesting here. It says on page 555, education as a tool for human engineering. And this is what I thought was interesting. It sums it all up. The third printout is dated 1904 and is a report issued. Now, 1904 now is issued by the Journal Education Board, one of the first foundations established by Dr. Excuse me, by John D. Rockefeller Sr. The purpose of the foundation was to use the power of money not to raise the level of education in America as widely believed at the time, but to influence the direction of that education. Specifically, it was to promote the ideology of collectivism and internationalism. The object was to use the classroom to teach attitudes that encourage people to be passive and submissive to the rulers. 
The goal was and is to create citizens who are educated enough for productive work under supervision, but not enough to question the authority or seek to rise above their class. True education was to be restricted to the sons and daughters of the elite. For the rest, it would be better to produce skilled workers with no particular aspirations other than to enjoy life. It was enough, okay, as Dean Togovi phrased it, that the people should rejoice provided they think of nothing but rejoicing. Mm -hmm. In the first publication mm -hmm. of the General Education Board, mm -hmm. Fred Gates explained the plan. This is what it is. In our dream, we have limited resources and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hands. The present educational convention fades from our minds and unhampered by tradition. We work our own good upon a grateful and responsive rural folk. We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers of mental learning or of science. We have not to raise from among them authors, editors, poets, or men of letters. We shall not search for embryo great artists, painters, musicians, nor lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen of whom we have ample supply. The task we set before ourselves is very simple as well as very beautiful one. To train these people as we find them to perfectly ideal life just where they are in their homes, in the shop, and on the farm. Meaning that the foundation of the education that was set up in America was not yes. meant to do what? Enlighten right. you. No. It was basically to do what? To Keep maintain to control the you. status quo. To control. You. To control. Mm -hmm. So when you look at all this information, it's not that it's not known by those Egyptologists, scholars, etc. They know mm -hmm. it, but what purpose is it going to serve for me to enlighten you? Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you want it, it's in the archives. Okay? But you're going to pay for it. All right. Hmm. So what our people, All right. the love affair of doing this here, I don't have to have an education, but I, so I can write a song, okay, about a woman taking off her pants and make a million dollars out of it, okay, and be on tour. So we're so caught up in it, even though it's only with our athletes and entertainers, it's a small minority in terms of numbers, mm -hmm. okay. But that's the direction we go. This here, all right. What do you see this at? Museums, educational systems, all right. And then, how do we get you away from it? Simply, we call it the Middle East. Mm. Now, yeah. we know that was a term that was invented because right. there's no yeah. such thing as the Middle East. Right. But when I call it the Middle East, I'm going to take the modern name of Egypt and place it in the Middle East, and I'm going to give you Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. That means I took mm -hmm. Egypt away from you, mm -hmm. okay, made it part of the Middle East. Which is the beginning of uh, civilization. And now, you don't have nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. You're Sub, you below mm -hmm. Africa. Okay, mm -hmm. or sub Sahara, you below that Sahara. So now you don't have nothing to do with this. Even though you see who these people were, mm -hmm. you see, when you understand it, not just pictorial, the language, mm -hmm. when you understand the symbolism, you see it has nothing to do with Europeans. Right. Okay, nothing at all. Right. All right. But the point is, if I get you not even want to think about it, talk about it, I don't have to worry about you, okay, going back into your past. All right, I keep you right at the mm -hmm. present. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a book the here is my story. called Conspiracy of the Rich by Robert Kiyosaki. Wrote Rich Dad, Bad, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But I, I thought it was interesting. Oh, yeah. I thought it was interesting that he quoted also um, the same thing here. And I'm not going to read the same thing, but I, I, I thought it was interesting because he, 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 he did the same thing with. Um, is this the one? Where is it at? Um, page 36. Okay, called hijacking the education system. I think that's what it is. And he said the same thing. Now, I'm not going to read all of it. Okay? He says, um, one of the greatest sins of our current education system is that it does not teach you about money. It teaches you how to be a good employer and how to know your station in life. Some would say that this is designed, for instance, and some would say this is by design. For instance, in the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, Griffin quotes from the first occasional paper of the General Education Board entitled The Country School of Tomorrow, written by Frederick Gates. 
In our dream, we have limited resources, and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our moldy hands. The present educational convention fades from our minds and unhampered by tradition. We work our own good upon a grateful and responsive rural folks, for the task we set before ourselves is very simple, as one is a beautiful one, to train these people as we find them to perfectly fit the ideal of just where they are, meaning we're not trying to move you. Mm -hmm. We'll keep you right where you are. Right. So my you main point is that when you know what the educational system was originally designed for, the foundation of it, mm -hmm. and what it is, mm -hmm. okay, you mm -hmm. say to yourself, okay, to, well, you know what? You. All right, I, I, I know what's already in place, okay? Now, it's up to me to do my own necessary research, to put together eye epistemology, all right? You're not going to make no money doing this. The average person, first of all, if I can't feed mm -hmm. myself, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I can't afford my mortgage, if I can't pay my bills, I can't really enjoy this. Mm -hmm. That's you right. You follow me? Right. So now you see why you our ancestors, the first thing they knew mm -hmm. that they studied was agriculture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I understand the cosmos, I understand the stars, mm -hmm. astronomy, astrology, Absolutely. I can plant. Can I can grow. put a calendar. Right. I can grow. Life comes Okay, up. life comes in. Now, once I got that in place, mm -hmm. now I can do, do what? Do now more research and study and do what? Progress. Mm -hmm. All right? To build. Mm -hmm. All right? To establish what? The Masonic order. Mm -hmm. Okay? Masonry, etc. Mm -hmm. Now I can go on and teach. Mm -hmm. So they put that in place. All right? My home is not just a home. For me, it's a sacred. It's my recreation. Right. It's my therapy. All right? Yes, yes. One of the things I read, that stuff in there, what you read in there, relates it to the human body. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when you begin to read it, all right? And you say, wow. Okay? Pituitary. Hypothalamus, pineal, chakra, the pineal, all of that's in there. Mm -hmm. But then that would make sense because Jacob got his name changed, I mean, yeah, to what? Israel when he did what? Wrestle with an angel. And it hit up upon his what? Hmm? Thy. Yes, yes. Thy, right here. Mm -hmm. And then he seen God face to face and called that place what? Peniel. Hmm. Pineal, okay. pineal oh, no. gland. Yes, yes, yes. It's the pine cone. Yeah, the pine cone. <laughs> it's pine cone. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what the pineal that's what looks gland like. looks that's like. The looks like. Okay. Yeah. I found these in Center City, and I picked them up and put them in a plastic bag and said, "That's the pineal gland, the pine cone, yeah, right there." I, I, that's what I, it looks I went, like. I went okay. and picked them all up <laughs> all right. and 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 soaked them in some hot water, and got the best pineal soap. Mm -hmm. You know, just mopping no, the floor and no, cleaning the house. No, why pine the, trees? Just the pine. Because the greenery, green. right? It don't die in the what? Winter time, it's, okay? It's, right. See that whole thing with nature? Mm -hmm. Okay? There's no such thing. And that's what the Africans see. There's, There's no, no such thing, thing as thing death. Dying. It's, okay? It's a, transformation. It's, it's a transformation. It's a proverb that says, one dies, one born, the land increases. African proverb. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so my main point is that when you see all that, that's why I don't stop saying that we lost our culture. Okay, we yeah, no, 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 right? No, 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 no. What you lost is how to internalize and recognize it mm -hmm. because somebody else put their blueprint on it. Mm -hmm. All right, but the foundation, the primordial essence is still yours. You just got to take the layer off, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and then show the origins. Now, one of the things that I found that helped me out was etymology. Amnesia. When I study etymology, the origins of words, mm -hmm. and now let's talk about it right now. Let's go upstairs, Pata. Let's talk about it right now. So, all right. Pata. Yeah, let's, let's, let's bring it home, okay? Pata, the first thing you notice is that when you look at the Emmy Awards, what do you say? Almost a replica of Pata. You see the Emmy? Yeah. That's oh, the Emmy yes. Awards there. Yeah. Look at the profile. Yeah. Okay? This too. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the Egyptian Pata. Uh -huh. Okay. In right. the form of two oh, Okay. Right. Now, okay. but look at the look at the profile. Yeah. All right. Now the word Pata means what? To carve, mm -hmm. to open. Okay. The opener. You with mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. Now, what is interesting about that? Okay. When you read the Quran, it's the word what? Al Fata. Yeah. Which means the opener, mm -hmm. the opening. You open the chapter. The first chapter you open up is called Al Fata. Mm -hmm. Because in etymology, what? The P, H, and F are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, when you read Hebrew, you also see the word pata in Hebrew. Okay? Mm -hmm. P-T-H, P-T-A-H, P-T, which means to open, to carve. Okay? Mm -hmm. The chief architect. Because he was, denotes the symbolism of what? The architect. Right. The craftsman. Mm -hmm. All right? 
So remember now, it was a title. When you achieve a certain level, okay, you get the title of pata, the opener, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. the carver, okay, the craftsman, all right. But you still see that word carry over in Islam and the Quran with what? Fata, al fata. Mm -hmm. But look at the other words, okay. Potter, papa, uh, pope, papa, yes, okay, yes. father. How you say the pope in Latin? Papal, am I right? Mm -hmm. Father, okay. Mm -hmm. Papal. Papal, okay. P T H E R P A T H E Potter in, in Spanish, all right. Peter, all cognizant of what? Pata. Mm -hmm. And then they took mm -hmm. the Emmys, Emmy Award for the statue they give you. And look at the profile, mm -hmm. okay. You can almost see the same profile from our Pata, mm -hmm. okay, and then our Violet to that Pata there. Okay, one of the things we never get rid of, and we're talking about it again, is the snake. Okay, as you can see there, the snake, unless that's not even called a snake, it's with the serpent. Mm -hmm. All right, with wings. Okay, so now in Revelations it says what? He shall have what? Healing force in his wings. Okay, mm -hmm. because there's the wings dealing with extension, there's the sun, which represent what? Activating the pineal gland. All right, mm -hmm. so it has to do with what? Everything is above ascension. All right. Mm -hmm. And then you find the same thing right here with the wings, the serpent, all right, and then the what? 360 degree, okay? Because there's no beginning, there's no end with a serpent. That's right. Now, where do you see the 360 degree at also? Remember the pyramid, the base of the pyramid is a square, right? Yes, yes. Each angle is what? 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Four times 90 is what? 360. Okay? What did they have in their calendar? 360 days. And five extra days for their what? Holidays. Holidays. You follow me? You, you see where it's studying yes, up here yes, yes, as yes. above? Uh -huh. So below. And they were able to internalize it and then live that life. Apply it to everyday use. Right. You follow me? Right. Now, in doing that and studying nature, I can say, wait a minute. Is there really a such thing as a, as a definite sense of, okay, we looked upon ourselves on this earth as a lower nature, mm -hmm. a physical death, because now you want to rise, okay? But now you begin to see, okay, what a judgment scene, mm -hmm. okay? Now you begin to see the halls of Mayat. We don't have to talk about what Mayat means because it represents true righteousness. The opposite is what? It's the opposite of what? Tehuti. It's the female attribute of Tehuti. Tehuti was dealing with what? The wisdom, okay, the dual aspect. Now in the halls of Mayat, all right? Once you get into the halls of my eye, you're declaring your what? Innocence. There's no thou shall not kill. Thou shall not commit adultery. Is what? No, I, I have, have not. not. Mm -hmm. I have not. I didn't do it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you begin to see where quote unquote so called Ten Commandments was extrapolated from what? Okay? The halls of my eye or what's called the so called negative confession. You know where it came from because it's there. Mm -hmm. All right? This preceded mm -hmm. Christianity. But looking at it, again, I'm, I'm telling you what a symbolism is, what a culture. Look at the scales. You see the scales here, okay? Libra. But now look here. United States, with liberty and justice for all, look at the scales. Took it right from you. Mm -hmm. The blind and the justice, okay? Who do they got symbolizing truth? Justice. They didn't take a female. They didn't take it, they use it. Okay? Now. Right, they use it because it's still ours, all right? Right. Okay? They Europeanized see, I, I, One of the things that I find is disturbing and, and, and reinforces their control is that we use these terms and so we but, yield us to them. But, but, but that's my point and the reason why now we have to be, and here's the reason why. In defense of our people, you and I can talk about this because you study, you research, all right? You have to almost start, my whole point now is the youth, mm -hmm. okay? You gotta start them here. Once they get our age, 25, 30, and they already basically trained as the, I read you with the educational system, it's hard to change them now. You fuck because they set in their ways. But if you okay? but if you reinforce that they stole, that reinforces but, but I, that they but, own but, it. But, but, right, but I because if you steal something, I, it's in your possession, you have it, we no longer have it. And so that's why that terminology is very disturbing and we need to understand you mean that we need that we stole it? I mean, you, like, what do you mean? That they stole it. Okay, but... Because when you say that, you yield to the fact that they are in physical possession of it. 
so you no longer have and, and, it. And, that's what the child mind will see. And, well, and, 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 and I'm not arguing that what, point. Yeah. My main point is that if you start with the youth, all right, first of all, your library is right in your house. Your educational system is right here, as mm -hmm. you can see. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. you, you, my house, you come in here, you know somebody that's highly melanated living in this house. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because you can see <laughs> everything in here relates mm -hmm. to me and mm -hmm. my ancestors. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what I've learned is you got to show them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. You have to show them. You can't just talk about it because that most of our people are visual, not auditory. Mm -hmm. So my main point is I can show certain things scale, scale, and here, all right? So my point is that, yes, it was stolen. It's still yours. If I come over your stolen. house and I, still, and I take your pocketbook, okay, if I claim your house, your house still belongs to you. You got ownership of it. I stole it. I took it. Okay, but it's still yours. You, can, right? you didn't take it. If it's right? still mine, you did okay? not take it. So my point is, it, right, okay, so it's still yours. Now, my point here is that we don't challenge anything. Right. We allow it to happen. The reason why we don't challenge is because we have not done the necessary research and studying, mm -hmm. okay? Now, a lot of it is because, again, remember the education system. Where's our institutions at? All right? Remember, if an institution yeah, is no. funded, whether it's Cheney State, Lincoln, if it's funded by the state, that means you got to abide by what? Their rules, their regulations to continue to get the what? Funding. Mm -hmm. If you don't, they cut your funding. And they okay. control. All right? They control. We all know what happened to Francis mm -hmm. Cress Walsh. They came up with the color crest theory. Mm -hmm. University said, you yes. got to make a decision. Okay? Yeah. So my yeah. main point is that University of San Korea, Timbuktu, where did it start at? That mosque was not just a mosque, it was a place of what? Learning. Mm -hmm. It was a school. You could start right in your home. All right? You could teach in your home because now you don't have to see a school. You, you don't have to do charter school. You could teach your students at home if you want to take in the time. Now, again, how do, how do our people, what happens with a lot of our people? If you can't basically feed yourselves, if you're living on paycheck to paycheck, you and I can't talk like we're doing now. And so you, you have to have and where you're the sitting on the bus food, won't and really shelter. matter if you don't have the fare to get on. Your food, clothing, and, and shelter got to be attacked first. Now. Majority yeah. of our people are not at that level yet because mm -hmm. they're basically living on handouts and what basically just barely making it. Survival so for you and I to be able to talk like this, survival more, I can't think and talk like that. Now that's that's real talk. Okay, I can do it now because again. I, I, I'm able to put myself in place. Now, how did I do that? If you right. go into the parks in the summertime where the homeless, and particularly the men, congregate, live, and so forth with ease, you will find that they are fully aware. Oh, yeah. And they yeah. will discuss it with oh, you. Oh, yeah. And I think that in a lot of cases that most of the men that are aware of the history and don't see a way to do anything about it are the ones who end up on the street, are the ones who end up on drugs. I think that that kind of mental anguish, like, you know, this whole concept of they stole it from us, that means, man, I had all of this and now I don't have nothing. And so that's why I don't like that the term, the language is very, very critical. And they didn't steal it. <laughs> They're trying to use it to make themselves as great well, as well, we well, are. Well, you're right. They're actually preserving it. They and, don't. And they, own they're not only it. preserving it. They're using it to their benefit. They're copying. Okay. Because it's, that is correct. They're copying. That's correct. Okay. And making it work for them and benefit. Not they're copying it. because they have no history. They have no royalty. They have pomp and circumstance. They don't have this kind of balance system. They don't have the scales. They don't understand my art. They don't understand what and who to pray for, how to live, what to do with the land. They take, they kill, and they rob the land of all its resources, the animals, the people, the trees, the soil, everything. If you go to England, their nicest areas have little gardens who can they didn't get rid of what the symbol. You begin to see through the Barry Straits how we migrated, okay, all up in the hair, okay. But think about it. You always hear about the what? United States Army, United States Marines, United States Navy. You never hear United States of. You never hear the United States Navy of America or United States of America Navy. Why? Because you can't claim America. Because remember, you had the what? Organization of American States down here. Okay, that's America too. 
So if you notice, mm -hmm. the embassy says the embassy in the United States, this is United States Marines, United States Navy. You, never, you notice it never said United States of America Navy, United mm -hmm. States of America Army, because you can't claim it. Probably they do, but you can't claim America because this is not just America. You have North America, Central America, South America, and adjoining islands. Now you ask the average person, okay, name an American state. You know what their name? Charleston, mm -hmm. Carolina, mm -hmm. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. All right, they'll never Texas, name Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil. You follow me? Yeah. They're American yeah. states too. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. Caribbean and American food. What do you mean Caribbean and American food? It's American food. Okay? Because the Caribbeans, don't try to take yourself, you claim that first because that's where civilization started before it went up into the Americas, right here. Mm -hmm. This is where the Olmec civilization was, okay? All around this area here, in the Gulf Coast of Mexico, okay? Wanted, then we migrated up here. I wanted to share something that I found really very interesting. In the maps, and if you look at the way South, uh, South Carolina is shaped, even mm -hmm. with North Carolina, it is cut out and shaped exactly like Africa, that one state. Look at it on the map. That's what I was trying to okay. outline. It's shaped. So they, you know, they went and they carved it because this is where all of the wealth of this nation comes from, mm -hmm. Africa. And so it's shaped. The lines are delineated and, sh and to make it form and look just like yeah. the continent. Now, how many houses you go over when you see a map up? You know, when we were coming at a globe. None. None. Okay, and, but you, the thing is, Not geography even is really. so important because when you start oh, talking history, mean. you can show them visually. All right? right. Because remember, right. you can show them visually. All right? Because they can My see. house is just not a dining room where I'm going to eat food at. Mm -hmm. He's just mm -hmm. educational to teach also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you look around, you go to my bathroom, you're going to see something in there related to us. Okay? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, if you have it up, you're doing the same thing with the Europeans. You're reinforcing corrective yeah. education. That's correct. Okay? Mm -hmm. So my point is, you don't have to go to a university to do this. You can have it in your home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? And should have. And that's that's where it begins. And that's where it begins. Mm -hmm. at. You follow me? That's mm -hmm. where it really, okay. really will make whatever now, you get outside. I had this fit. Yes. I had this mountain. take them to the right. Because I'm going to take this with Most me. of the people growing yes. up, I don't know how old you are, but you look like you're around my age. I'm 58. Okay. You're, you're my junior. My, growing up in my house, my mother and everybody else's mother and father had a white Jesus on the wall. You remember that? I remember that very well. well and, then, and only that, you know what replaced him? The yeah, Martin Luther the King died. Okay, okay. Oh, it was Martin Luther King, yeah. John F. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. King oh, yeah, right, right. Kennedy, they still had that white guy. Right. Okay, I remember that. You remember I, I, I that? I remember that. Yeah. 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 So when you have that going, do you know how strong religion is? It controls your stimulus. Your nervous system is controlled by these things because it is spiritual. So you can't touch it and see it like you're talking about, but you feel it. It becomes a part of your psyche, a part of your nervous system. So you're talking about enslaving the mind with that. I, someone, there's an art gallery that's not far from me that I go into from time to time because I'm an artist and I love art. And so I go in there and see Someone had done a painting of these two little children crying because of the Bible. You know, mm. that's the biggest problem that we have, mind control. Religion, I mean, when you talked about uh, changing uh, from Catholicism to the Church of England, that was done by Henry VIII who, who did it because he wanted to remarry yeah. and Catholicism you cannot do that because that's a sacrament. Marriage is a sacrament like birth and death and all. It's very important. You can't change. So he goes to the Pope and asks for this change. The Pope says, I can't do it. Are you crazy? But that's the sacraments. I mean I could no. And so then he says, why should we listen to this man with this funny little hat? Start my own. You know. And so he ended that. Because no longer and he saw the control. It controlled your life. He knew that he could not stay a Catholic 
and get a divorce and then go murder his next wife and then go put the other one in the dungeon and then go murder her and then go put another one in there. You know, so he couldn't do that being a Catholic, you know. Well, you can't do it. You just have to pray and thank God for it. You know, so they, they, <laughs> you just say, thank you for bringing me this. You know the joke. Yeah. <laughs> Pay a certain amount of gold. Right, right. Absolutely. <laughs> Fifteen hundred. You have to. Get that's that's, that's more you're like paid, right. your first stop of yeah. purgatory. Yeah. So the control. I mean, even his daughter, his two <clears throat> daughters. One was a Catholic and one wasn't because she was a bastard. And. The fight over that religion with the king, the the and Elizabeth, who was his daughter, who ended up agreeing with, because they were cash poor, they had paupers, they had ninety percent of their population was starving, dying of filthy diseases because they had no soap to wash, their living conditions were putrid, horrid, and so they were dying. You know, they blamed the Jews for bringing the Black Plague and all that, but it actually came from the rats that they were living with. And in any case, she had to do something. And she agreed with the King of France. I think she prostituted herself, you know, and literally, you know, because she never married. So, you know, she, she, so in, in, in their religion, she was a whore, because I don't think she was a virgin. No, 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 I mean, you know, a harlot. Uh -huh. Step. Okay, so to take down the sun guy, this is how you can come out of economic uh, desper desperation. This is how you can bring your people back up. And and she said, and she said, and she's quoted as saying, we're going to pay for this, but I okay it. And that's why the Queen Elizabeth is like the biggest thing since grits with every European English and even Irish, because had it not been for them, her, they would have perished as a people. Their numbers were nearing nine. <laughs> Yo, they were near. So that control with the religion was totally off the charts. She was a Catholic. She agreed to go and take down an entire nation kill them and take the other captives of slaves. We couldn't write a letter home. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, post the mail, communicate. I mean, it was the same, you know, they talk about the Holocaust, but the Holocaust with Africans are horrendous because the most important thing of a culture and, and, and the most easiest way to control another culture is take away their language. That's the most important. Mm -hmm. All of the inferences that we have and we communicate, we call things different things. We have different emotional um, attachments to different things. And so if you don't speak that language, I don't know what you're talking about. And I can't communicate with you and, I, and you can't learn anything and you don't understand and you don't get it. So someone else can now fill your empty head. And so that's what we, you know, that's what we're dealing with. And so I just want to implore upon you that that they stole it has got to be eliminated from our teaching because that yields the fact that they have it. And if you have something, you're in control of it because this is your house, those are your figurines, and you control that. You can stop people from touching it, from looking at it, from even coming in here. They're yours. I don't know whether or not you stole that or bought that on eBay, like you've been saying, right? Well, but it's yours. Sure. Okay. <laughs> if they, somebody so you got was a receipt? Say, well, I, I print my receipts off in 15 years. No, no, no. Ago. You know, not always she's saying. Point, but, right. But my point yeah. is, is that again, yeah. the pen is mighty than the sword, and that's a very good right. point the because pen is mighty than the sword. when you that's look at good. this in here, that's okay, right. this is this doesn't belong to the University of Penn. This doesn't belong to mm -hmm. the British Museum, the Lowell right. Museum. Okay, it right. belongs to me. Right. I can it's take mine. it down. Right. I can redesign it. It's mine, so my you point is, control. okay, I'm in control of it, right. all right? Mm -hmm. right? Now, the important thing I learned is you have to get it out there. Okay, you can say that we were in America, they did this. Okay, okay, so you were the first on the planet. You know, mother and father civilization, what did you do? And what I find is a lot of times it's difficult for our people to explain what did they do in reference to arts and sciences, mm -hmm. because if you don't know your history, if you don't know the language, you don't know the symbolic imagery, 
Okay. We were kings and queens. That don't mean nothing. That's the South. Yeah, that no South. Nothing. Okay. No right. South. We were kings and queens. Okay, so what did you do? Right. All right. Show right. me, show me, okay, where you took something called the concept of Maya, or laws. How did it apply to everyday life? It's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. All right. We just seen it on the symbology. We seen it on the balls, paintings, and all like that. So my main point. Did you see black pants and white pants? Okay. No, I was telling him I wanted to wait for the crowd to go down oh. to go see it, you know, because I wanted to be there. All right, and me and Minister Brown was 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 talking about that. Um, yeah. Uh, because yeah. I wanted to see it on the big screen. I don't want no bootleg. Okay? Yeah. And because you're not going to get it all. Yeah. You can get for some lines. Yeah. So I wanted yeah. to. Uh, so that's what I said I wanted to do, but it's off now. You know. You know yeah. Well. I, I, I eventually it'll be on Netflix. Yeah, right. Okay, right. You know what happened. Right. And, right. and eBay cut too. You okay, know. yeah. Cut. eBay, I have the original version. So oh, okay. you know, it's, 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 what have you. Okay, okay. But, said, yeah. but but the other thing too that I want to share with you here is is now you can get to see that any major quote unquote pyramid of significance you see in America. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You can see the pyramid of the yeah. sun in the tech here. Yeah. Okay. The techno, but you can they see got them on, all right. All of the all of the properties on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan has that in front of their mm -hmm. buildings on each side. Mm -hmm. Technos. Techno. Yeah. And then they have you know of course the Washington uh, the monument. monument. Right. You know. And, yeah. And you can see again, like I said, when you look at the origins. All right. And mm -hmm. she made a good point mm -hmm. in the sense that no 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 no. Okay. It wasn't stolen. Okay. We understand the concept is in the museums and they, they, they the concept of okay, they robbed your land, they took the obelisk, they put it in museums and all that. It's still yours. Yeah. Just because I stole your glasses don't make it mine. Right. You follow me? Mm -hmm. That's you, true. You got the power where I can't go in there to get it's it because you got security that way, okay? All right. So mm -hmm. the thing is is that if I go to a museum and try to get it off, first you're gonna do is shoot me and lock me up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's not yours. Right. Okay, we know how you got it. Right. All right. But now that the point is, all right, best thing to do is not to even talk about it. Put it in books. All right. Make it part of the Middle East and not automatically eliminate you mm -hmm. because you don't see yourself as Middle East. First of all, now they're fighting. Created, okay? the Middle East, now they're fighting because the Europeans, particularly the French, all right. want control of what the so-called Middle and East is in control of. And so they, they're now fighting. Well, it's they, not yours and it's not yours. So, you know, the, we, the, 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 the economics with the oil, etc. All right. But the, my main, I'm speaking specifically about Egyptian history, not that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Specifically. Okay. 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 About well, what my all was, of the artifacts and the stuff. Yeah, my point was, was the it, Egyptians are trying to get the French and the English and the Germans to return the artifacts yeah, that they stole. But here's the thing, though. They're not the Egyptians who's trying to get it done. They're Arabs. Yeah, that's I true. understand okay, that. So, that's true. But you gotta yeah, be careful. The, the so-called, the new... Okay, the, the, because yeah, the ones yeah. who are controlling that now, who wants it back there, they're Arabs yeah. who call themselves Egyptians yeah. to try to get it back, but they don't claim... They, no, they there's already no told that, that, that it's not you. yours. They made All that right? clear to them. And, he said, and then he said, okay. cause I forgot this guy's name. I'm sure you've seen him. You talking about Zari Hawass? Uh, the Zari? Egyptian guy with the... Probably, probably talking about Zari Yawaz, he used right. to be, yeah. See, he you know, used to be. No, he still is. He he is in control of the Egyptian, Egyptian Museum. Museum. Well, Zari, um, and, that and, was... Yeah, that's yeah, what Remember when they went there, right. he got, he's not part of that. I mean, he, he got exile. I mean, he remember he got locked up. Oh, no, and, this guy's still there. No, I, I, I don't think he's still there. I think he's right, because when Sertima talked about this him. This was some years ago. Remember they yeah. had the uprising, right. and he was part of... Uh, Mubarak's regime. Okay, well, this is Hazmi Mubarak, guy. okay? Right. Because for Zai for a long time, I remember when he came to the University of uh, uh, University of Penn. He got his degree from the University of Penn in New yeah. York. He I mean, said, in Philadelphia. Blacks have nothing to do with our Egyptian history. And he spoke at one of the free libraries here in West mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And I never forget, you know. And I and I knew why he. Oh no no no! You're a Nubian, okay? So I know what he was doing. He was separating me. Said so, no, no, you're not Egyptian, you're Nubian. Because see, the thing is that it's always that separation that mm -hmm. Egyptian and Nubian were two different people. That he can right. tell you who you are. So, but and, and this is if a he Arab. names you, he owns okay? you. Okay, telling me. But my yeah. point is, I understand why they're doing what they're doing because the thing is, classical European civilization, Greece, Rome, etc. The foundation was African. Okay, 
what's that now volley complex so if i know that mm -hmm. and i know it started with you the best thing for me to do is erase all your nuts to have you do anything with that mm -hmm. have no parts of that at all mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. now how do you change it mm -hmm. you build your own museum in your home right okay now you mm -hmm. invite over who you want to invite over you do your own tour. You, you teach right. okay and you always all right? so anybody who you are in contact with will benefit so many people ask the question well if we were so great I did so many great things like build the pyramids and all that stuff. Why isn't that we can't do these things today? What happened to us? Um, and how do we interact with, say, Rome? What role did Rome play in our dissension? Well, in terms of building a pyramid physically today, question to come do we really have to actually build a physical pyramid I mean they were already done okay mm -hmm. uh, so we may not have to do that what we can do is just to embrace and internalize what has been done since that genetic blueprint is in us all right and and preserved it okay the other thing is when we talked about Rome okay when Rome came on the scene the Nile Valley complex was already old and gray. When Greece came on the scene, it was already old and gray. Remember that prior to Greece and Rome, you had invasions from what? The Hyksos. They were chased out. Then you had invasions from who? After the Hyksos, you had invasions from what? The Persians. Mm -hmm. Then you had invasions from the Assyrians. Okay? Now, there was a time when Egypt, or uh, ancient Kemet, extended its borders all the way into Western Asia. Let me share some with you before we talk about Rome. That's important, okay? And this is something that I want to show you as far as the geography of where that border was prior to it falling. Let's see if I got it here. But this is, this is, so I want you to get a picture of this here. Yeah, here it is. I want you to take a picture of this map right here, okay? And this is the map of the quote-unquote ancient Near East and the Armana period, right around the time of um, around the 14th century. And I want you, Can the you reason why, hold that yes, I will. And the reason why I want you to see this is because I want you to see when I have the new kingdom of Egypt. Let me just let you look at this one first. All right, 14th century BC. Okay, Middle East and Eastern Mediterranean, 14th century BC. We know there's no such thing as the Middle East. Okay, that's that's fictitious. But if you notice this part here, this little tannish color is the New Kingdom, it's Egypt. My main point: look where you see it extend this border up. His border goes all the way past Tyre, Sidon, all the way up to Bablos. Okay, now this is a better picture here because I want you to see this. All right, look where it, in the 14th century, its border was already in, what, those so-called land of what? Israel. Mm, mm, Canada. Right. You follow me? Yes. All right? So they were part of our colonies. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, now the downfall that came because when they needed to regroup, mm -hmm. send more troops in, you had, okay, in this area here, they were summoning Akhenaten. Listen, we need help. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. we have foreigners coming in. We have Hyksos and others coming in, invading this area. We need help. We need, he sent for help. Akhenaten didn't send the necessary troops that he need to do what? Keep control of that area. And that's how we lost it. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons how we lost it. All right? But I just wanted you to see how far that area extended as far as being colonies. There were colonies of us. You talk about Western Asia, Bablos, Sidon, Tyre. Look at that, Jerusalem. So the area that Israel is now, that was all African and extension That's my of point. ancient mm -hmm. Egypt. As early as the 14th century B.C., mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. the Common Era, B.C.A. So the whole fight with the Palestinians, okay, the so-called Jews of Israel, who had that area first? The Africans. That was that colony. That was, we were. That was the area where we were. 
Yes. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to share with you is, okay, now when you talk about that land, Palestine, that was the original land of the what? Canaanites, am I right? Mm hmm. Now let's look at this. What did the Canaanites look like? Okay. Let's, let's look to see. All right. What do you see there? Blackfoot. Okay. Now let's look at some more pictures of, of what we call Canaanites. Now remember, okay. And then we'll get to Rome. Black Canaanites from the earliest time, quote unquote. Now this is a map of ancient Canaan. As you can see those geographical areas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell me when I can put it down. Okay. Okay. Now, let's just briefly look at when we talk about the Canaanites. Okay, what does some what do these people look like? Wow. That peppercorn hair. Okay. Uh huh. They were definitely black. Mm hmm. Okay. 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 Let's look at a couple more, very quick. seen these type of pictures before. And who do they remind they, you of? These are the Canaanites. Yeah, but who do they look, when you look real well, who do they remind you of? They remind me of African people. Okay. Look no different than the comedians. That's right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. There's one or two more. What is my main point? We were there too. Actually, that area did not become uh, the Middle East into the building of the Suez Canal. Well, once again, we know there is no such thing as the Middle East. That's a term, that's right. a misnomer. Okay, yeah. that 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 phrase was coined sometime around the 19th century. Yes. Okay, we're gonna deal with that in a second. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Right? Wow. Look at the lips on that, bro. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to go too much. Let's let's just set the record straight so we'll know before we deal with Rome, okay? Because I want you to make sure you get a picture of this here, okay? Because this is important also, all right? This is an article that was in that was published in forget what newspaper. It was uh, March thirty first, nineteen ninety one. Term Middle East may have originated, and I'm going to let you get a picture of it, in the 1850s in the British Indian office. However, it became widely known when American naval strategist Alfred Thayer Mahan used the term in 1902 to designate the area between Arabia and India. Who came up with the term Middle East? The term Middle East was coined in 1901 by Admiral Alfred Mahan. We already said that. Okay, the celebrated American advocate of naval power. It was popularized in speeches in 1916 by Sir Mark Skies, a British member of Parliament. Until this century, until this century, nobody talked about the Middle East 
because neither the term nor the states in the region existed. Both were the work of the victors of World War I, the true begetters of the furries that still rages. Curiously, there are few connected accounts of a very confusing history. A readable exception is a piece to end all peace written by a New York attorney. The term Middle East was coined in 1901. We just talked about that. The initial designer of the Middle East was Britain's redoubtable war minister, Lord Kitchener, who proposed indirect colonial hegemony relying on indigenous kings and emirs to carry out British wishes. This was the practice in Egypt where Kitchener was serving as the British agent advising a Khadive. In Skyke's works, we depreciated the imperative referring to the subjective, even the wishful, imperative mood. I don't want to read the rest of this, but it's just showing you basically where the term Middle East originated. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, there's no such thing as a Middle East. So, when they talk about when Egypt, okay, Egypt in the Middle East or the Middle East, okay, there was a term that was coined in 1901. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to set the record straight on quote unquote so called Middle East. Right. Okay, I got it. Okay. Now when you you talk about the Roman Empire, okay, we know Rome at one time was a world empire at a particular time. You know, we know they conquered Greek Greece. They did conquer ancient Egypt. Or Kemet, as we know it as. Mm -hmm. But what was the main reason that caused the downfall of the Roman Empire? All right? Because mm -hmm. we know one too long after they had defeated the Carthaginians, or Carthadas. All right? And once they eventually defeated them, what mm -hmm. did they do? They spread salt on the farmland so that they yeah. couldn't, what, plant. Plant. Okay? But now, one of the things that caused the destruction of Rome or the downfall of Rome is that Rome did what? Two things. They extended their borders too far out and what else did they do? They imposed a hell of a taxes on their people mm -hmm. and people who weren't Roman citizens. Okay? But there's another thing that also played the downfall and created dark ages because who did you also have coming in from Rome? Not from Rome but from the outside. The Goths? Mm -hmm. The Visigoths were basically Dramatic tribes who came in who wreak havoc throughout Rome. Mm. Okay? But also, in my opinion, another reason why Rome fell was when they converted over to what? Christianity. Christianity. Because prior to that, when they were following to the ancient Comedians, cosmology, cosmogony, mm. etc. Because remember, they were the ones who, when they conquered these different lines, different lands, they were the ones who carry the what? statues of the Madonna and Child mm -hmm. to these places they're conquered. That's how that quote unquote black Madonna and Child, connotatively speaking, all right, went into other areas in Europe, France, Britain, Germany, because they carried it with them, the Roman soldiers. Mm. Okay? They carried that with them. Because remember, all they did was copy the Greek names for their their um their statues and what have you. Mm -hmm. They they just changed the names. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the Greeks changed the name from what was what? Comedian. Comedian. All right, but now when you had the, the Goths, the Visigoths coming in to Rome to wreak havoc, mm -hmm. now that was the first of the what? Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, right around the time when the Dark Ages came in, at the same time, you had two things that was going on. You had Constantinople mm -hmm. and then you had the rise of what? Islam. Right. Because now right around the what? 6th century AD? That's 5th correct. century AD? 642. Islam was on its way now and what did they do? It was easy to convert because the, the, the Rome would have already fell. Okay? Mm -hmm. The Prophet Muhammad who was a merchant. Remember, he visited a lot of these different areas. So he got a chance to see what? Different ways of life, different religions, etc. To do what? Incorporate into Islam. Islam. Okay? So now it wasn't by... It, 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 now with Rome out the way, then Islam began to spread. And when Islam spread, it spread it rapidly. 
Okay, mm-hmm. because they really mm-hmm. had nobody in the way in terms of what spreading it. Now, when you talk Islam, okay, and the word itself, Islam just means what? Shalom, peace. Assalamu mm-hmm. alaikum, okay? Mm-hmm. I'll come mm-hmm. in peace. My main point here is that you still look at the African origins of Islam because when you look at the early stages, and this is where I just come in at Kufu the Magnificent, mm-hmm. okay? Askia Muhammad, okay, Antar, all right. You also, uh, uh, what's his name? The one who brought the glory to black race. Uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, I can't think of it at the time. Um, wrote a book called The Glory to Black Race. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I can't think of it. But these are the ones who, at the early stages of the making of Islam, Zarib, the blackbird, okay, okay. and yeah. Zarib is what well we're talking about. Here's something that we need to talk about here, okay? Um, this is a magazine. It shows you, okay, and, and this is what we're talking about, okay, because we're going right into the Dark Ages. There's a magazine called Renaissance, Volume 7, and... It was, yeah, volume 7, it's called The Thousand Years of Islam, The Muslim Impact on Medieval Europe, the Moors of Spain. It's a magazine. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, let me share something with you. Within that magazine, I want you to see something here. There was a person by the name of Zari. It's called, on page 51, Blackbird, the Arbiter of Style. If you ever eaten asparagus, asparagus, or started your meal with soup and ended with dessert, or even used toothpaste or styled your hair with bangs, you owe a debt of gratitude to one of the greatest black musicians in history, Zarib or the Blackbird, who charmed the 9th century Spanish court of Cordoba with his songs. You mm. see what they put there? They don't hide it. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now let's just talk about him for a second there. All right? Okay, well worth talking about this article here about Zari. And I'm not going to go over the whole thing, okay, just a little. Now, this is the picture they had of him. I enlarged it, okay? Or the artist's rendition of him. Now, you're talking 9th century AD, <clears throat> mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. His name, Abu al Hassan ibn Nafi Zari, born 789 AD in where? Iraq, which was what? Ancient Persia. You see when he was born? 7th century A.D. Mm-hmm. Okay? This is Renaissance Magazine, issue number 27. Okay? Now let's talk about him for a second there. Now I'm just quoting right from the magazine here. Okay? By the time Zari was in his early 30s, he was serving as a kind of minister of culture and for the Andalusian Okay, one of his first projects was to find a school of music, not only for lower class court entertainers, but also for the talented sons and daughters of the high classes. In terms of music, okay, he added the fifth loop. Mm-hmm. Okay, the fifth string to the loop. He's the founder of music, mu- musical traditions of Muslim Spain. But his greatest musical innovation was adding a fifth pair of strings to the odd, I'm sorry, fifth pair of strings to the odd in order to give it a more delicacy of expression and a greater range of song, sound. Blackbird also heightened the odd sensitivity by playing it with the flexible eagle's talon or quill rather than traditional wooden plectrum or the pick. The innovation spread quickly and soon no skilled musician in Cordoba would touch wood to the strings of this Arabic loop. Zari also repeatedly knew by heart the words of melodies of 10,000 songs. Now let's talk about fashion now. 10,000 songs. 10,000 songs. Let's talk about fashion. He was, before that, he was an excellent poet, a student of astronomy and geography, and a dazzling conversationalist. He often discussed the customs of manners of nations throughout the known world and spoke extensively on the high civilizations Center that Baghdad. As his popularity grew, so did his influence. Let's talk about fashion. 
a new form of fashion. Zarid loved well-prepared food almost as much as he did music and revolutionized the art of the table, okay, of ways that survive to this day. Mm. Before Zarid, Spanish dining was a simple, somewhat crude affair where platters of different foods were piled together on bare wooden tables and table manners were non-existent. Now hear me out. Not content with these backward culinary, culinary traditions, Zari, with the MR's blessing, decreed that palace dinners would from then on be served on a fixed sequence of courses. Listen to me. Starting with soup or broth, continue with fish, fowl or meat, and concluding with fruits and desserts and nuts. This prep is present. This pres uh, excuse me. This presentation, unheard of even in Baghdad or Damascus, steadily gained in popularity, spread it throughout the upper and merchant classes, then among Christians and Jews, and even to the peasantry. Eventually, the custom became a rule throughout Europe. Mm. Now you go to dinner today. What do they serve you first? They serve you soup. Okay. Then your mm. main course, and then they ended up with what? Dessert. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now you can see the origins of it. Where it came from. Yeah. Zaib also Zarib also delighted the court diners by evaluating the humble spring weed asparagus into a succulent dinner vegetable. He also developed a number of delicate desserts, including an unforgettable treat of walnuts, cream, and honey that is still served today in the city of Zaragoza. Dressing up the plain wooden dinner table, Zarib taught local craftsmen how to produce tool and fitted leather table Give me one second there. Okay. Okay. Again, he developed a number of delicate desserts, including an unforgettable treat of walnuts, cream, and honey that is still served today in the city of Zaragoza. Uh, Zaragoza. Dressing in the plain wooden dinner table, Zari throughout local custom craftsmen, local craftsmen, how to provide two and fitted leather table coverings, mm -hmm. leather table coverings, and replace the heavy gold and silver drinking goblins of the upper class with delicate. Finely crafted crystal wear. You follow mm, me? Yeah. <clears throat> he also redesigned the bulky wooden soup spoon to a trimmer, lighter weighted model. Zarib next turned to the attention of personal grooming and fashion. He developed Europe's first toothpaste. Do you hear me? Mm. He developed Europe's first toothpaste and popularized shaving among men. Before Zarib, clothing was washed in rose water to improve the cleaning process. He introduced the use of salt, which helped to remove stains and their odors rather than simply cloaking them in fragrance. Mm -hmm. Ali Ibn Nafir, also known as Zarib, also opened a beauty parlor, cosmetology school, not far from the Inwards Palace, where he introduced dairy hairstyles. Listen to me. The women of Spain traditionally wore their hair parted in the middle, mm -hmm. covering their ears and then braided on the back. Zari introduced a shorter shaped cut with bangs on the forehead and leaving the ears uncovered. He also introduced shaping one's eyebrows. You know how you get your eyebrows arched? Yep. Okay, shaping one's eyebrows and the use of depilatories, which is a cream or lotion for removing unwanted hair. Okay, as well as introduce new perfumes and cosmetics. As an arbitrator, okay, as an arbiter, which is a person who views uh, actions or have a great influence on social behavior. As an arbiter of courtly dress, black work also decreed Spain's, hear me out, first seasonal fashion calendar. In springtime, men and women were to wear bright colors. You see the origins now of bright mm -hmm. colors? In the summertime, they were to wear primary white clothing. Mm. And in the winter, and when the weather turned cold, Zari recommended long cloaks trimmed with fur. 
to add to intellectual levering to the culture mix, Zareeb next brought in astrologers from India and doctors from North Africa and Iraq. In the process of stargazing and astronomical lore became popularized among Spanish people, Zareeb also encouraged the Indians, that is the Sindhu, because that's the original name of India, Sindhu. Mm -hmm. Okay, then it became Hindu, mm -hmm. then India. All right, he also, listen to me carefully, he also popularized among the Spanish people. Zareeb also encouraged the Indians to teach the popular game of chess to members of the royal court. Okay. From there, the game spread to homes and taverns throughout the peninsula. Zareeb passed away, okay, in 857 A.D. And let me see if anything else I want to read. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. I think that's about it. He was, okay, yeah, he was born in 789. Okay, 68 years old when he died. And that's pretty much what I wanted to say about Zari. But do you see all the fashions? Now, just one man. Yes. All right. Born in Iraq, which was what? Ancient Persia. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, once you have, okay, at this point with the fall of the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. the Goths and Visigoths overpowering Rome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you get a renaissance. This the first, now because the renaissance is basically a rebirth right. of a rebirth. Yes. Of a rebirth. Mm -hmm. So now you have a partnership between the Moors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the Arabs. There's many books written on the Moors. Okay? But what's interesting is that when they talk about the Moors, they're very talk they don't you just hear basically either Mohammedans or you hear about the the uh, the Saracens, Arabs but they never mention anything about who? The people that look like you and I. Right. Okay? Even though, as you can see right there in back of you, the Moors playing chess, okay? Okay? With the melanin right in back of you, darker than 150 million midnights, and the Moors playing chess. Let me get it for you. Okay? <laughs> but this is, okay, this is coming from the chess book of Alfonso the Wise. But that's the kind of stuff, all right? You see the European serving in the background, and you see the Moors. Mm -hmm. You see a brother with the loot, okay? You see them right there, okay? so highly melanated that the only thing shone on is the brightness of the eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now that's from the church book of King Alfonso the Wise. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? Right. I have a puzzle here that I haven't put together yet because I'm not good at puzzles, but it's called, as you can see, Wild Men and Moors. Look who you see in the castles. Black folk. Okay? Here, 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 and then you know what? You see the Europeans here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Wild men and Moors. Now, it's a puzzle. <laughs> I'm just not good at puzzles, okay? That's why I'm still in the box. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm hmm. All right? Then when you look on the back of it, wild men and Moors, tapestry weaving, wool, and linen yarns, South Germany reason, 1400. The detail of this puzzle shows wild men storming the what? Moors Castle. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, 1400, who was in power? What dynasty was it? Remember, you had the Umayyad dynasty, mm -hmm. Abbasid dynasty, Almoravid Am 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 dynasty, and Amahadi dynasty, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? So the last of that dynasty, 1400, was what? Okay? The Nasiri dynasty. Mm -hmm. That's where Bo Abdil comes in at. But okay. now, going back, before we get into Sungay, all right, what brought you up out of their dark ages? Okay, it was the Moors, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You had your Sephardic, okay, your credit credit, you had a small number of Sephardic Yehudis, now called Jews today, or Sephardic Jews, who were there also, not even doctors, lawyers, okay, merchants also. Your backbone of the army was who? From the Western Sudan, West Coast of Africa, okay? Now, when you read J. Rogers' World Great Men of Color, you begin to see what? All the people who made up. Okay? And let's just talk about some of the names of them because this is what bothers me when you talk about this subject matter as if we didn't exist there. Okay? And let's just look because this is where Roger's coming at. I have a book here called Noble Moors, Royal Heldry, Noble Moors and European Coats of Arm, etc. Okay? Just more so a, a reference book. But some of the names, okay? 
Okay, we know they're in their coats of arms, but when we look at just some, not gonna go with many of them, all right? Okay, just some of them. This is from World's Great Men. You got Antar, 600 AD, poet, soldier, greatest, greatest severus figure of the East, Antar. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, these are the ones where Rise say look like you and I. Ibrahim El Ahmadi, Islam's greatest songs this Khalif at Baghdad, 790 AD. You're talking about the early centuries of Islam, okay? And I'm just giving you names because you can get this in World's Great Men of Color. Another one. Al, that's the one. Al Jahez, who wrote the book called The Glory of the Black Race. Okay? Al Jahez, all right? Mm -hmm. Now... Mm -hmm. We know the term black wasn't used back then because the word black, the etymology of the word black means to shine, to burn, and make bright. So I don't mm -hmm. know what the Arabic term was for because black is a modern English word. It's a dramatic word, okay? But it means to shine, to burn, and make bright. Now you think about it. When you take white paper and you put fire to this and you burn it, okay? It turns what into what? Ashes. Ashes. Ashes becomes what? Begin with a C. Carbon. Okay? Uh -huh. So you follow me why the word in European language means to shine, to burn, to make bright? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Krishna. Mm -hmm. The burnt one. Mm -hmm. Okay? To shine, to burn. Because the mm -hmm. word black wasn't used back Back then, because that's modern. That's about 600, 600 years ago. Okay, 1100 AD. So you got to understand the etymology. Okay, mm -hmm. they didn't use the word black. Not that it's a bad word. We say they were black, but you remember they deal with what nations, Kemet, Nahesi, Kush. You follow me? Yes. Hadash. Right. You follow me? Mm -hmm. They were dealing with nations. Okay. They didn't identify nations. Okay, with crayons or color. So that's important to keep in context. Not that black's a bad word. You got to put it in its proper context. Mm -hmm. That's my main point. All right? So now, Al Jahez, okay? Lord of the Golden Age of Arab literature, 778 AD. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Early stages of Islam, okay? I have that book around here called The Glory of the Black Race. I, got, I think I got it upstairs, but I had it. It's called the... It, 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 uh, Nice book, too, because he was a poet, a philosopher. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to go over all this here, but just he was one of the most productive and frequently quoted scholars in Arab literature. He originally went satire and learned and made him wildly known. Al Jahez seemed to have been a very dark Negro, state of life in most humble surroundings, but studious in memory. Born in Basra, mm. Asia Minor, he studied philosophy, theology, Science there under the noted Mutsali teacher of Al Nazim. Of an independent spirit, he was not long in striking out on an intellectual path of his own and founded his own school of thought known as the Jahezites. Follow me? Yeah. Okay. And then you have, and I'm not going to discuss a few, Khufu the Magnificent. Okay. Became Lord of Egypt, 960 AD. So my main point here is. This is just some of the, the, the Moors or Africans who were in the early making of Islam. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know about, um, we also know about, of course, Bilal, etc. Right. Okay, Yusef the first, Sultan of Afri Africa and conqueror of the champions of Christendom, 1080 AD. Okay, Yusef ben Tashifin, and then you have... Ali Hassan, the Black Sultan of Morocco, 1350 AD. And of course, you know about Sunni Ali. Oh, yeah. Sunni Ali Bear, okay. Eskia the Great, and Moulay Ishmael. And of course, we already know about the Golden Age of the Moors. Right. Okay. So let's just talk about what the Moors brought into Europe. 
just small things that we take for granted. Okay. Okay. Now we know what it is from 7 Eleven of 1492, almost 800 years. Wow. Okay. When you think Europe, the Moors introduced the earliest, supposedly 17 universities into Europe. Okay. I believe Europe only had one. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we call the commencements, commencement exercise, or rather commencements, graduations, commencements, mm -hmm. caps and gowns, that comes out of the Morris experience. Mm. They're the ones who introduce commencement exercise, apothecaries, or storehouses of medicine, mm -hmm. came by way of the Morris. Mm -hmm. All right? Nuts, berries, fruits, ginger, introduced. Finest leather, introduced by the, the postal system. Mm. Okay? Morris introduced that. All right, then you talk about what Van Sertima talks. I like that terminology, perfume air condition. Right. Okay. By way of bringing in the air. Okay. Mm -hmm. Across flowers. Across flowers. Plants. Okay. Yeah. Whole thing we talk about hospital. Okay. Mm -hmm. That came. The Moors introduced that hospitals. Mm -hmm. And there's a three volume work called. The History of the Morris Empire in Europe by Scott, S.P. Scott, which deals with all of this information there, okay? Mm -hmm. So we don't have to go too in-depth in there because my main point is that when you talk about the last sultan in Spain before we lost power in 1492, this is what he looks like, okay? Abu, okay? Bo Abdil, as they call him. This was the last sultan. Okay? His name was Abu Abdullah Muhammad bin Ali or Muhammad XI. He was emperor of the Nasserid dynasty. He came to power in 1482 AD. Nasir means victory. All right? The Nasserid dynasty was born in 1232 AD, founded by Muhammad ibn Yusuf ibn Nasir ibn al Ammar. His tribal clan was known as the Banu Nasir or Banu El Amar. And this daring fighter became himself Imar, taking the title of Muhammad the First. So you had Muhammad the First, and he was the last, Muhammad the Eleventh. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that was the last Sultan. This was the last time we ruled on land. Because you know the Moors also, when they lost power in Europe, they began to control the what seas. And that's where they began to take Europeans as what? capture them on the seas and auction them off into what, as ransom. Okay? So I just wanted to show you this here. This is the last one here. Uh, the last Moroccan, uh, excuse me, the last caliph. Okay, the last sultan, I'm sorry. Okay? Mm -hmm. that deal. Now, what was going on in Africa at the time? Right around the time or close to the time where the Moors lost power in Spain. Mm -hmm. The last, you, the last of the African dynasties, okay, that you had. You had Ghana, you had Mali. Then the Sangay. last, right around this time, was what? Sangay. Okay. Now, this was important because once the Moors lost power, all right, Ladam, okay, Ladam. Well, several things happened. Number one. With Isabel and Ferdinand, when they united and defeated the Moors, and Bo Abdil gave up, okay, a surrender. Basically, a lot of the Moors they were given certain areas in Spain to live, but they either had to become Christians, a lot of them couldn't practice their own culture, then a lot of them were expelled also. Right. Okay. Along with the Sephardic Yehudis, or as you take the modern terminology, Jews, Yehudis or Sephardic Jews. Sungay was on the rise at this time. Now remember, you had the first of the universities, the University of San Corre at Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. This was not only a mosque, but what's embedded in that mosque was what? A university. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest scholars who came out of that area was a man by the name of <laughs> just but the name's just that quick. Uh, Ahmed Baba. Yes. Okay, Ahmed Baba. Baba means father. Okay. Right. 
he was said to have wrote a book on, uh, he wrote 47 books each on different subjects. Wow. Okay? Now, it's important to know that with the universe of San Kare, the Sangay people, although the vast majority were Muslims, devout Muslims at that, they didn't practice the same type of religion or traditional way of uh, the, the religion of Islam like they did in North Africa where the Arabs have came in and they occupied that area, they still kept their traditional mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. beliefs. They kept their traditional way of life and they incorporated the religion of Islam within that. As a matter of fact, when Ibn Battuta visited that area, he seen a difference in the way Islam was practiced there versus other areas. But he said they're still devout Muslims. You had the women who were able to own certain properties. Mm -hmm. You had women who also had certain crafts. You had women running a household. So it was different type of religion, different yeah. type of way of life, but it was incorporated mm -hmm. within that traditional African culture. Now, when the Moors lost power in Spain, remember a lot of them reverted back to North Africa. Mm. Now, let me go back because one of the reasons why Bo Abdel, it's interesting too, because Bo Abdel came from a uh, 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 there's a book out called The Last, oh, I can't, The Last, The Moor's Last Stand, dealing strictly with Bo Abdel. And he, his mother came from a line of royalty, okay? And when Bo Abdel lost, surrendered, there's reasons why he lost power. Number one is that he also sent information to North Africa. For help, mm -hmm. for troops, mm -hmm. okay, to help him, and they did not send him troops. One of the reasons why they didn't, because they didn't like the fact that he was negotiating back and forth with Ferdinand, Isabella, okay. okay, because they were writing, they were just basically putting treaties together, that, and so on and so forth. We'll give you this if you get that. Because remember, he was captured at one time and held ransom for several years. His mother had to bail him out by giving a certain amount of ransom up to get him out because he got captured for Abdel. But just to move fast forward, after he surrendered and they did lose Spain, one of the things now, now you have an emperor, okay, highly melanated emperor, looked like you and I, mm -hmm. who came to the throne in North Africa, Moroccan sultan by the name of who? Bilal Ibn Il Mansur. He was the sultan, Moroccan emperor, nationality. He wanted to control that whole Western Sudan. He fought the Sangha and told them, listen, before he even fought them, he told them, listen, how about surrendering, okay, and become part of this territory? And what's well, the Sangha wasn't, no, you're not talking about us. Okay, we're not surrendering, we're not giving up our land. Mm -hmm. So now he went on and sent troops to the Sangha Empire. To conquer that land. Mm. Sunga held him off for quite a while. But here's where the turning point came in at. Mulay Bilal Ibn Il Mansur was communicating back and forth with who? Queen Elizabeth, Queen Isabella. daughter of Henry VIII. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was, at the time, she was at war. England was at war with Spain. She finally wrote him back, apologizing that she wasn't able to get back in contact with him, a European queen now. But she told El Mansur, I will give you the weapons you need and what to were defeat the Sunday. What kind of gunpowder? Uh, rifles, a uh, gunpowder. Rifles, uh -huh. okay? I will give you the weapons you need, along with the gunpowder. If you help me to do what? Defeat Antonio of Spain. So she supplied him with European Spanish mercenaries. Okay? Mm -hmm. They defeated Antonio of Spain. Okay? And gave him the weapon, the gunpowder, mm -hmm. that he needed to defeat the Sangay. Mm -hmm. That was the turning point that they used to defeat and conquer the Sangay people. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the ones who they brought up in exile is Ahmed Baba. This is all laid out in a book in the 18th century called Ten Buck to the Mysterious, written by Felix Du Bois. 
Dr. Clark quotes from him quite a bit. Okay, well worth reading. Another book is by, the, because you know, The Golden Trades of the Moor by Beauville. Okay, that's another book also. There's another one by Lady Flora Charlotte Lugard called The Tropical Dependency. It's all well documented. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what happened was that it's interesting because one of the things that Felix Du Bois writes about, that he talks about is when the Moors lost power mm -hmm. in Spain, mm -hmm. and he's specific now, Felix Du Bois states that the Arabs came into Africa, into the Western Sudan, to apply for teaching positions that they weren't even qualified for. Mm. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. In other words, the Sun Gate people said that, you know, whoa, whoa you're not teaching down here. You don't mm -hmm. have the credentials. You're not even qualified. And this is what the boy said, a European, mm -hmm. and he's specific, Arabs, okay, mm -hmm. came down there, wasn't even qualified for. Mm -hmm. Now you have a Moroccan emperor who destroys the Sun Gate, conquers that area, and then take the greatest scholar of that time, Ahmed Baba. He's exiled into North Africa. He tells the Sultan, come from behind that curtain. Who you think you are behind behind the curtain? And ask him, why did you destroy my people? Because the people in North Africa thought he was coming up there to teach. That it was going to be part of their, their, their culture. He says, no, I'm, I'm a prisoner. Mm. And they asked him, why did you conquer my people? Why did you destroy the Sunga Empire? And this answer, Mulay Ibn Il Mansur was, I wanted to unify Islam. Ahmed mm. Baba said to him, Why don't you start with the Turkoloids? The Turks, they wreak havoc, okay? Why don't you start with them? Mm -hmm. Couldn't answer him. Eventually, after so many years of being prisoner, he was let free. Of course, I believe he, I'm not sure if he went back to Sangay or he died in North Africa, okay? I believe he was let back to Sangay, but he died. His books were taken over by the Arabs. And he's sitting right there in the museum. The works mm. of an Arab scholar. Mm -hmm. He wasn't Arab at all. Mm -hmm. He was Sangay. His nationality mm -hmm. was Sangay. Mm -hmm. All right? But his greatest work, I have a book upstairs called The Works of, um, uh, it's a book uh, by, um, no, that's the work of Al Jahez. I have another book on him. But my main point is that Sangay was destroyed in 1591 A.D. Mm -hmm. Columbus bumped into the Americas, what, 1492. Almost 100 years later, our ancestors in the Sungay, mm -hmm. Empire of Sungay, was still at its height. But he stumbled. They're part of Africa now. Okay, mm -hmm. Still at its height. Imagine what have happened. Now, remember, the Moors already lost power in 1492. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1591, this was destroyed 99 years later. 99 years later. Imagine what have happened if that empire was never destroyed. Now, the whole concept, because you got to deal with the good as well as the bad, and then it's the brown. Mm -hmm. The whole philosophical concept of, am I my brother's keeper? Mm. Because you had one Moroccan emperor. Holly melanated, looked just like you and I, committed what? Culture genocide on his brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got to deal with both sides of it. Yeah. Okay. After that was destroyed, basically now the Arabs opened up because the Arabs, who controlled at that time a lot of North Africa, they penetrated. Europeans came in. All right, start trading with them for Spain, Portugal. Because remember, okay. A lot of the Moors, when they lost power, what did they do? They went to the seas and they started taking what? They started capturing the ships of the Europeans, taking them as slaves. Because you'll see a lot of that in Nature Knows No Color Line where you see mm -hmm. pictures of the European slaves and all. This was, this was before the Holocaust of enslavement. Now, they didn't destroy their culture. They didn't take away their language, but they caught a lot of them. And you had a lot of those Catholic churches, the Knights of Columbus. They had to put up ransom to get their people back yes. because they held them for ransom. All right, and if you wanted them back, and this is where all the treaties was coming at, making treaties between, okay, Morocco and 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 England, Morocco and Spain, Morocco, and even the Catholic Church had to get involved mm -hmm. because the Moors controlled the seas. They called them pirates, but they really weren't pirates because they belonged to what? An empire, a nationality, Morocco. Right. Okay, and they controlled them seas, so they caught a lot of, captured a lot of Europeans and held up the ransom, and they, they were almost a, annual treatments of thousands, millions of dollars a year in gold, silver, etc. 
that they held them for ransom. But can you imagine, we probably could have had our own quote-unquote African industrial revolution had we not been destroyed. Yes, true. Because we were there. Mm -hmm. All right. So now when the Europeans finally make their way down deep into the west of Sudan, it looked like there was never nothing there. It was already mm -hmm. destroyed. Mm -hmm. So you deal with the good as well as the bad. That was the last renaissance that we had. We had that partnership with the Arabs in Spain, in Cordova, southern France, Portugal. If you look on my wall, one of the popes, you can see that when he traced his coats of arm, what do you have up there? Okay, pope, one of the popes, okay, a more. Mm. Okay, as you can see right here, his coats of arm, okay, of uh, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, okay, in the guard behind St. Peter's Basilica, mm -hmm. you see a picture of a Moor right here. Mm -hmm. You see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, you see a picture of a Moor here. Okay, and you look at the Moor's head. Okay, the Moor's head is a heldric charge associated with the, uh, with the, uh, 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 French in Germany. The orders of the Moor's head, okay? So you see a Moor's head here in Germany, okay? So this, and, and you see the Pope Mitre here. So they traced their line of descent, okay? So we were the founders of European heraldry. They're proud of that. Mm. Here, you have the family crest, and you see some of the names. Guten, Mordant, Mordant, Shipley. Okay, but what is in their crest? A Moor, and you can see right here, the crown. You follow me? Mm-hmm. Hair Andrews, okay, and you see what's on top, meaning they traced their, their heraldry, their line of descent, their European ancestry by way of the Moors. Mm -hmm. And this one here, Broga's family crest of Great Britain, okay, this comes from Fair, uh, Fairborn's crest of the famous of Great Britain and Ireland. Who do you see? A Moor, okay, and then this one here, okay, this his name is, okay, Johannes Morris, M O R U S, U.S. signified Latin. All right, it's dated 19th century, but it was found. This is a, a replica, it's dated 19th century, but it was found what in the museum in Germany. He was a visor in Sicily in 1100 AD. Okay, high rank advisor. Okay, 1100 AD, and you can see what he looks like. Mm -hmm. Now, when you begin to read Ancient and Modern in Britain by David McRitchie, okay, now he goes into depth into depth about the names okay these names okay Morris okay Morelli okay Morrison etc all right mm -hmm. very good book well worth having I like this one because William Preston who has made the transition he had this reprinted okay so his introduction is in here and of course um just some of what it says. The two volume works of Scottish historian David McRitchie, 1851 1925, was published in 1894, long out of print, until now almost impossible to find except for a few libraries. Okay? Its impact upon blacks will be as profound as the works of Gerald Massey, Godfrey Higgins. Mm. The two volume takers in antiquity, okay, and it tells you some of the names of McDuffie, Dub, Niger, but he traced, okay, the Moors all in England. Okay, France, mm -hmm. the names now. Okay, and tell you who these people was. The Douglas. Okay, Douglas. Okay, Thorhard, Thorfinn. So if you start dealing with etymology and words, well worth having in your library. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can see where now the word black became a legal status. He breaks all that down. Okay, white illegal status, black illegal status, etc. All right? Now, what's important here now, and this is what's important. You're dealing with nationality. They said Moors. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Not blacks, not Negro, not colored. They were dealing with nationalities. Are you with me? Yep. Okay? So it's important that you don't just lower yourself to what? A color. Right. A crayon. Mm -hmm. You know, when Herodotus supposedly described the people of Egypt, he says, okay, okay, they have woolly hair, such and such and such, and such but he said that amounts to nothing because he says what? several other what nations does also so mm -hmm. he identified you by what nationality you came from mm -hmm. okay but i wanted to show you this because again you're not going to see this when you talk about the moors all right in your universities and your life you're not going to see none of this here mm -hmm. okay you're not going to see david McRitchie where he breaks down these moors in ireland in spain 
okay, in Portugal and tell you who they were. Mm. Now, he's being specific. Well worth having in your library. I have another copy of the 1894 edition that's Xerox, but I like this one here, like I said, because Mr. Preston, my friend, had this reprinted, okay, and he sent me a copy of it. So that's why I really um, I, I like this here because it's, it's well, I can't even remember what I paid for it, but I just wanted to let you know, okay, well worth having in your library. Yeah. Well worth having in your library. So that's just a basic overview of the some gay. And what would have happened had they have still not been destroyed by the Moroccan emperor, Il-Mansur? Now, if you would, uh, go over the word God, as we did upstairs. I thought that was very interesting. I will. Uh, I have it on my word. And, you know, and I did something here, which I want you to see. Okay? I put here, okay, um, let me know when you're ready. I put here, in the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. Now I have, in the beginning was the word, etymology. Now what is etymology? Etymology is the origins, okay, the origins and true history of a word. You follow me? Mm -hmm. The origin, the origins and meaning, okay, the, 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 the origins and true meanings of a word. So I have, in the beginning was the word, and the word is God. Not was, is God, but what does the word God mean? It means to invoke. And the word etymology is with God, meaning to evoke. Now, what does the word invoke mean? I N into voke, vocal voice means to call upon. Are you with me? I'm with now, you. Now, the etymology of the word God in Sanskrit. Sanskrit means to put together. It's kuda, K H U D A, Persia, huta, H U T A, Gothic, gut, G U T T, G U D D, German, gud, G U D, Old English, G Y D I G. And then modern English, what? God. So when you deal with etymology, it's the true meaning, origins, history, and study of words. The study of etymology allows us to invoke the true origins and meaning of words. So when you talk about God in terms of invoking, now, invoke, you're using your what? Vocal cords. It's coming right. from within. Mm -hmm. Okay? And how do you invoke? How do you send out, okay? How do you invoke and send that energy up to your higher brain cells, okay? Your higher mental thoughts. Mm -hmm. Through what? Breathing. Breathing, the science of breath, and that's where the word again. He got the Holy Spirit. She got the Holy Spirit. The word spirit, it comes from the Latin word spiritus of unknown origin, but it means what? Breath. Mm -hmm. So on Sundays when you hear the pastor always talk about the Holy Spirit. In Catholic Church, we were always talked about what? When I went to Catholic, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. One time it was the Holy Ghost. Oh, he got the Holy Ghost, but when you look at the word etymology of the word ghost, it comes from the word, okay, aghast, which means to what? Scare. Like Casper the friendly ghost, okay? See, mm -hmm. now you see why I was changed from what? Ghost? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about etymology, the origins mm -hmm. of a word to mm -hmm. what? Spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. But spirit just means breath because everything is centered around the what? The breath. Mm-hmm. When that baby comes out of that mother's womb, the first thing they do is slap them on the behind. So they breathe. So they breathe. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do in the what? Initiation process, okay? The open of the mouth ceremony. What is he tapping on with the Edez? He's tapping for the what? Ascent to do what? Tapping? Open of the mouth ceremony? So what? Say the word. Breathe. Breath. The breathe, okay? Mm -hmm. I want you to breathe again. To ascend from your lower nature, your lower chakras to what? Your, your higher, higher chakras, nature. okay? To your higher nature to activate the what? Crown chakra. Mm -hmm. Now you can see why we pose in that lotus position and look at the neutral quality and you see the hands are, okay, like this. All right, mm -hmm. you see here, little small ones right here. This I had in my house, this belonged to my grandfather. Okay, and I kept this for so many years. My grandfather, grandmother, 1939. Okay, mm -hmm. 1930. It's in my house. I belong to my grandmother, grandfather. But you notice the position it's in, and what are they doing? Breathing. Yoga. Yoga. To yoke. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the chant. Um. Vibration, you follow me? Yes, so, absolutely. 
when the Europeans came on the scene, they the ones started with what? Oh, Osiris, the god of the dead, or the god of resurrection, the god of Sneath, the god of Sisa. We never used the word God. It's not a bad word, but we need to put it in its proper context. Do you follow me? Yes. It's a European dramatic word. Its origins is what? Dramatic. It does start there because the root is what? Sanskrit. Are you mm -hmm, with me? Mm -hmm. Because remember, and here's where the etymology coming at, which is very important. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay? I want to show you something here. Glad you brought that up. Stay right there. When you begin to study etymology, it's important that you look at the Indo-European roots. This is called Proto-Indo-European. -Indo Proto means first. Are you with me? Yeah. Indo, okay? There's no such thing as Indo. It's called Sindhu, S-I-N-D, which is Sanskrit for the people beyond the river. From Sindhu, it went to what? Hindu, okay? Al Hindu. Hendus, mm -hmm. which is Arabic, okay? Then Indio, which is English or Indian. That's where the word came from. But if you notice, Proto-Indo-European language, meaning that the first, it came from what? Sanskrit. So when the Aryans went in, or dramatic tribes went into India, okay? They incorporated and learned what? The language. And you can see, for example, let's look at, very careful, you can see the breakdown of it. If you look at, uh, let's say, Yiddish. Here's Yiddish. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Trace it back to what? West Dramatic. Okay, Old German, Middle German. You see Yiddish? Yeah. All right. Now, if you want to deal with Latin, okay, Latin, under Latin, you got what? Portuguese, Spanish, French, okay, Slavic. That's where the word slave comes from. Yeah. Eastern right. European people. So when you say you're a slave, wait a minute, that's Eastern European people. Yeah. Okay? Right. Okay? You were basically human trafficking. Okay? Court and human trafficking. Because mm -hmm. that's where the word comes from. But there's no such thing as European languages. Are you with me? Yeah. Right. You have sounds, but the root is what? Sanskrit. Are right. we clear on that? Yes. Okay? It's Sanskrit, and that's the breakdown. So to always tell you when you read a dictionary, okay? It goes to what? See the, go to and see the word in appendix. Just like the word, okay, for example, we talked about um, um, the etymology of the word God. Okay, and you break it down. Okay, it means to invoke. It has an origin. Mm -hmm. Take the word black. The word black, B-L-A-C-K, is modern. Okay? It's about 1600, 1100 A.D. Mm -hmm. 1100. When you trace the word black back to Sanskrit, okay, it, it, the, the word itself, the word black, B-L-A-C-K, all right, it's dramatic, that word itself, okay, but you tra trace it back to G-H-E-U, which means to shine, to burn, mm -hmm. to make bright, okay, a dramatic is, I'm sorry, you take, it's, it's the origins, I'm sorry, the root is blague, B-H-L-E-G. Mm -hmm. Okay, and out of some of the cognates of the word Blake is what? Casablanca, White House. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Blanca, White House. It means to shine, to burn. So Krishna wasn't actually called the black one, it was called what? The burnt one. But I can understand that because, when again, when you take a piece of paper and you burn it, okay, it becomes what? Turns Ash. into ashes. Ash. The ashes turns into what? Carbon. Mm -hmm. But when you take charcoal and burn it, that's the active effect. It's not really black, it's what? A grayish. Right. You notice that? Mm -hmm. So, placing that black is not a bad word. Don't get me wrong. It's not a bad word at all. Mm -hmm. But when you deal with nations, it mm -hmm. was the nation of Kenan. Mm -hmm. Kush. Indus Kush. You follow me? Yeah. Nahessians. Okay? Not Nubians. Mm -hmm. Setians. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. The nation of Kart Hadash. Phoenicia was a Greek term. Has to do with purple. They weren't called Phoenicians. You know what they were called? Canaanites. Okay? Oh, Phoenician okay. is Greek. Yeah. They're still with the color purple. Uh -huh. Okay? But they weren't called, they didn't call themselves that. But you can see who controlled that area. Yes. Up until the 14th, it was the what? They were a colony of ancient Kemet. 
Mm. So when we go around today, we take a adjective and make it a nationality. Who are you? What are you? I'm mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. You're a scholar. You're an artist. Mm -hmm. What does he look like? He was black. No, 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 no. He's six feet two. He wear, had, had a gray hat on, blue shirt. You follow me? Yes. But we take an adjective now to mix them all up together. Okay? Right. Now, right. I'm taking it home. Because when you go down to in Philadelphia in Center City on the parkway, you see all the flags. You see the flag of Morocco. You see the flag of Ireland. You see the flag of Britain. You see the flag of Nigeria, etc. You follow me? Mm -hmm. There's no flag down there that's cool. called right. Black Flag. Right. The closest that you're going to get to a flag called Black Flag is a can of roach spray. Oh, shit. Okay? <laughs> Keeping it real. Now, I'm not dismissing black as a bad <clears throat> word. I'm just saying you don't identify yourself with an adjective. You are a proper noun, an identifier. Right. A lot of times when, I, when I'm at Temple University and I talk to a lot of students from overseas, especially from the mother continent. A lot of times, some people get upset because they would say, wait a minute, I'm not black, I'm Nigerian. I'm mm -hmm. not black, I'm, I'm, I'm Sudanese. And some of the so-called, quote-unquote, African-Americans, well, he's not proud of who he is. He's not proud of his culture. No, 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 no. They're taught nationality. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. They don't identify themselves with an adjective. Okay? We do it all the time. What color are we? Was he black or white? No, yeah, no, 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 no. So my point is, is that when you know etymology in the origins of a word, that's what it means. Mm -hmm. It means to shine, to burn, to make bright. Mm -hmm. This is black. The color. For real, mm -hmm. for real. That's black. This is black. Right here. Okay? See the difference? Yeah. That's black. Yeah. You're Holly Melanie. It's not a bad word, but I'm just saying. Okay? So what am I? Comedian. Okay? Moroccan, Sudanese. You mm -hmm, follow me? Mm -hmm. Haitian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're the only ones who do that because we don't understand nationality. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we go back and forth, okay? The word African Americans, there are 52 countries in Africa. You with me? Yeah. So, which country are you talking about? 52 right. nation states in Africa. Right. Jesse Jackson coined the word African Americans. Mm -hmm. But what was there ever a referendum that says we all agree to call ourselves Negro, call it black? Af where, where was the referendum that, that we voted on this? We just gave people through names on us and we just accepted it. Right. I said, wait a minute. Okay. You know, Dr. Claw talked about that what? We are a nation within a nation searching for a what? Nationality. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talked about it all alone. But what I found is when you study etymology, okay, when you study etymology, law, you can trace those words back, okay? So God is not a bad word. Just trace it back in its proper context. Mm. We never use the word God in the Nile Valley or anywhere in Africa, but we had a name for what we considered was the unknown, okay, the omnipresent. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And we gave a name to that based on what? What we observe, what we yeah, see, what we study. It our over. understanding. Our epistemology. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we go to church. Okay, God, this now. I have a book here. Okay, called very good book with discourse on Indo-European roots, who breaks all of that down, root words. Because you got you got to understand etymology on those root words. Because if you don't, you throw these words out there, mm -hmm. and all you're doing is throwing one word on top of another one. Mm -hmm. It's another book by Shipley called the Dictionary. Of origins of words, and you know what they say in Middle English, capital G O D and lowercase G O D was synonymous, okay? Because you didn't use in Middle English, capital G O D was lowercase G O D. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, my main point is that there was no distinction. You can say all you want, okay? God, the immaterial being, okay? But that's just connotative meaning to it that you put to it. Mm -hmm. All right. What is the etymology of the word? The origins, the true meaning of that word. What is its root? Mm -hmm. Now let's finish up with one word that we all know. C H R I S T. Christ. That's a title. 
Jesus the Christ, as you know. All mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. U.S., of course, Jesus make it Latin. But just the word itself, the root word, K-R-S, in Christ. Remember, the constants make up the word. The vowels are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. What do you find the origins of the word Christ? Krishna. C-H-R-I-S-N-A or K-R-I-S-N-A. You see the C and K? Yeah. And that etymology is interchangeable. K-R-S-C-R-S. Right. right. Okay? And Kemet, it was what? Caress. K-A-R-A-S-T. K-R-S meaning what? The anointed. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And what did you use when you wrapped up the, okay, Osaria or the pharaohs when they were buried? Oils, resonant. You follow me? Before mm -hmm. you place the linen around them. Okay? <clears throat> And then you have the word what? Christos. K-R-I-S-T-O-S. See the C-R-S? Mm -hmm. O-S signifies what? Greek. Now you have the modern word what? Christ. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So it just means to smear with oil. Okay? Mm -hmm. But Krishna comes from the word Krishna, which means what? The burnt one. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now you begin to see why <coughs> S-U- Okay? Because how was it related to the sun? It wasn't the sun, but it incorporated because the sun does what? When, it, when, the, when the sun hits that melanin and converts it into vitamin D, it also do what? It does what to the skin? Darkens it just like it does the plants. Are you with me? Right, yes. So now you can see why our ancestors, the S-U-N and S-O-N, were one, okay? mm -hmm. were one and the same. Mm -hmm. So when you see in the Tekanu, Haru, with his arms up like this, the sun glazes. They wasn't worshiping the sun. They were doing what? Harnessing the energy. Now let's take it home. Okay, so we can end this here. Let's take it home. It's my stick out. Symbolic imagery. When you look at the, the so-called shrine of Tukuk Amun, what do you see? You see the car, and what is it pointing to? Pineal gland. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Look here. What do you see that sun, okay, the halo, that's where the Christians got it at, the halo, what do you see the rays of the sun going at? Right to the pineal gland, do you see it? Yes. Okay? So we understand our relationship with the S-U-N and how it relates to us in terms of activating the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D. The mm -hmm. same way, we see that how it does the what? Bring chlorophyll to the plants and convert that chlorophyll to give it that what? Green color. Right. Remember? Green. Yeah, the earth. Remember? Osar. Face is what? Green. Remember the resurrection scene, okay? Okay, the resurrection of nature. Face green. Okay, penis green. You follow me? Mm -hmm. All right? So we understood colors, okay, and the significance of that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So mm -hmm. at one time, we were going around, all right, and, and, and I remember when I was coming up, it was what? Jesus the Christ. Right. Okay. The anointed. But trace the origins back. You don't have to get rid of the word Christ because we know caress, Krishna, it's there. K-R-S. Take the vowels out. K-R-S, C-R-S. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. The consonants is what make up the word. Vowels are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my main point is the name Jesus. Trace it back to his origin. There was no J. You had the trilateral root. Mm -hmm. You had what? I U. I A, I O, I E. Egypt became what? It came at I E, then it became what? I E O, I A U, okay, then what? J E, later on Latin. You follow me? So right. you can trace the name back. I U E M H E T E P. I U M Heptet. He who comes in what? Peace. Peace. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So the root of the word Jesus, when you take the J out, it was what? A I. Then it became a Y. The J was later because the J didn't come into existence until around, what, 15th, 16th century. Mm -hmm. Some side was used somewhat during the 10th century, but it was late. That's my main point. Mm -hmm. So you can't say that 2,000 years ago there was Jesus because the word Jesus didn't even exist. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the Ebre, or Ebre, it was what? Yahushua. Mm. Okay? Now, why Yahushua? Uh, okay? The UA was what? Feminine. The Greeks had to change it to what? In Latin to U.S. because O.S. signifies or denotes a what? Male determinative gender. Are you with me? Yes, U.S. Right. denotes a what? 
Mel, the turn of ginger. They couldn't keep you, Yahushua, you a, because if they did, that was what feminine. Mm. Are you with me? Mm. So again, when you understand etymology and root words and trace it back, you can see the origins of it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you don't have to get rid of it. Just trace it back to show, okay, this is where it originated at and what mm -hmm. it meant. You had that title too. Are you? M. Heptet, Ahotet, he who comes in peace. Mm -hmm. All right? So that's what etymology does, okay? That's why it's important when you study history, law, culture, you got to know etymology, okay? And trace mm -hmm. that or word back to its original context, its original root. Then you can see the what? Okay, I see where it came from. Now you can begin to see yourself in history because the culture is in a language. It's in other people's languages. Mm. So that's what I want to end on the importance of etymology, the importance of symbolic imagery there, because if you notice, we never got rid of, uh, okay, mm -hmm. the serpent, you follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's wisdom. It denotes wisdom, all right? And you notice, like I said, if you look, that car is there for a reason. You see what's that? It's right near the pineal gland, okay? It's right near the pineal gland where it's hitting on that, okay? Mm-hmm. And, you know, so you see everything right there. And then on this one here, okay, I don't know if you can see it. You see the serpent. It's almost like he's, uh, he's crucifying or spitting out, okay, the energy to do what? Hit the pineal, but then look at the star. All right, the star is serious. Where's it hitting them at? Right in the pineal. Do you see that there? Yeah. Okay. So now you can see where the so-called story comes from with Jacob wrestling. Okay, mm -hmm. and his name would change to what? Yish, Ra, Il, not Israel. That's that's anglicized. It's Yish, Ra, Il, and he met face to face, or so he seen Jesus face to face, and right, and he called the place what? Pineal, or Pineal. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trace it back to his origin. Mm -hmm. Okay, but my point is, it's all there if you understand the symbolic entry. Okay, all there when you see it. You can see the star hitting them right there in the pineal gland. Okay, when you look here, we already talked about this one here. When you look at the medusas or the what the medical symbol, you see what the coil serpent and it's going right up to the what the sun, which is the what activating the energy from the sun or harnessing the energy for the sun to activate the what pineal gland. Right. You know, the wings signify what ascension. Okay, to rise up above your what lower nature. To mm -hmm. your higher nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the symbolic, so the imagery is always there. Okay, you know that here you have all set, and you know all set because of what? Mm hmm. This, the uh, cow horn. Cow horn, there's the, the sun, and that's the horses of the halo mm -hmm. that you see in back of Jesus and, and all the saints, etc. That's where it comes from. You know this is what? Queen Nefertari, but one of the things you see is what? The vulture. Okay? Why the vulture? Because of the way it deals with its young. So that's the crown, the vulture there, all right, because it signifies nurturing. Are you with me? Yep. The way it, it, it deals with its young. And then you see the what? Atef crown on the head, but what is this here? The character what? Moshe or Sharshif? Mm -hmm. Okay, with the what? Carrying the what? Tabernacle, am I right? Mm hmm. Okay? So you see it all there in the symbolic imagery. It's all there. The mm. point is, you claim it because it comes from you. It comes from our ancestors. That's right. Okay? Anything else? Any other questions? Seven. See that, see that number now, seven? That, that is astounding. See that number seven? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So what is the significance of the number seven? Why is it used so much? You wanna? Um, you would do a better job than I will. Okay, but when you when you think about the the the, the significance of seven, all right, it's 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 just a, it's universal, all right. You have the seven the seven planets, the sun, moon, and the other planets. You have the seven days of the week, okay. You have the seven karma points. You have the seven major colors. You have seven virtues. It's just one of those numbers that is mystical, all right? When you study the pyramid, you take a combination of the earth, 
northwest, southeast, earth, where air, fire, and water is four squares equals what? I mean, the, the squares is four. And then when you add the triangle or the pyramid to it, that's three. Four plus three is seven. The, 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 the so-called folklore of quote-unquote Israelites being enslaved in Egypt for 430 years, which is folklore, four plus three is what? Seven. Mm -hmm. It's numerology. It's a mystical number. Yeah. yeah. You follow me? Yeah. All right. So that's yeah. what that, 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 you know, no matter how you look at it, you always, you see the same thing here where the principles of seven were created by the grand architect of the universe when she divided her 28-day cycle. Four divided by seven. I mean, four, four times seven, 28, okay? Right, right. Four equal parts of seven. 28-day cycles of the moon. Mm -hmm. Four times seven is 28. Okay, okay. Um, so that's life, because that's the life cycle. That is correct. Yeah. Um, in the development of man, you had the, after the stages of development, in the womb, and then in the birth, the first seven years is the age of reason, seven. And then what happened? The second seven years, you're 14, you reach puberty. Right. And then the third seven years, 21, age of 21, maturity. Mm -hmm. You can go to the bars. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got to abuse intoxicants. <laughs> okay, I think you got to get your driver's license at 21. I don't know, do you? No, younger. Okay, younger, 18. okay, 18. Mm -hmm. So that's the significance of seven. The seven keynotes in the musical scale A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The seven C's, the Black Sea, Charity, excuse me, the, uh, Africa. Yeah, I'm sorry. The seven C's Black Sea, Capsian Sea, Persian, Gulf, Red Sea, Mediterranean Sea, Adriatic Sea, Arabian Sea. The seven continents. Africa, Antarctica, Asia, Australia, Europe, North America, South America, seven continents, seven cardinal colors, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, and of course the seven days of the week, the sun, the moon, Tuesday is what, Mars, Wednesday, Mercury, Thursday, Jupiter, Friday, Venus, and Saturday, Saturn, okay, so that whole significance of seven, mm. again the pyramid, okay, mm -hmm. combination of the triangle and square, Four plus three is seven. All right. So it's that 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 and what they call here why the Constitution of the United States of North America has what seven articles. Wow. Follow me. Yeah. So they remember yeah. a lot of those were what what we call Washington, Jefferson, etc. A lot of them were what Masons. Uh, they were Masons and they were. Um, uh, Gnostics, mm -hmm. okay, they were Rosicrucians. Rosicrucians, okay, Hermitists, okay, so they knew by studying. It's not by accident that Washington Monument, okay, was carved yeah, from the Tekkenu, from the Tekkenu mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and that you have an African symbol in the heart of Washington, D.C., along with other places in Europe, of course, also Paris, France, New York, etc., but the point is, it's yours. The blueprint is yours. The foundation is yours. Okay? You can't get away from that. It doesn't matter whoever tried to put their name on it. It belongs to you. It belongs to us. Okay? And the whole story behind that with the Osarian resurrection, the whole thing about ascension and raising from your lower self, lower chakra to your higher self, your higher chakra to activate the crown chakra, etc. So, when you talk about the first civilization of America, the Olmec, O-L-M-E-C, basically means dwellers in the land of rubber because that was an area where rubber was found. However, we were told that the actual name was called the She, okay? I believe X-I, She. Mm -hmm. We'll use the Olmecs as most people know what it. The Olmec civilization basically began around 15... First of all, the Olmec is the mother culture of America. It's the first major civilization in the Americas and we were those Americans. Okay? Now, as you see here, this is from a book cover called The Olmec, Mother Culture of Mesoamerica. That civilization began roughly around 1500 BC in a place called San Lorenzo, which is right off the Gulf Coast of Mexico. That was the one major ceremonial center. The second major ceremonial center was in 1200 BC in a village called La Venta. And then we have another one um, as Tres Zopates. And these were three major areas off the Gulf Coast of Mexico. We have a total of 17 colossal 
these are hairs that were found on American soil. Okay? They were part of the ceremonial platform and they were facing east looking toward the Atlantic Ocean. Okay? And Trezopates and Leventa. Um, it was said that they dated the African colossal heads um, that were found here in America. It was determined by carbon dating some of the wood that was stuck beneath the platform, and that's where they got the date, okay, for the heads. Of course, we were here much earlier than that because you just don't come over, all right, you're not indigenous, you just don't build if you weren't here long enough to do what, study the what, area, the geography, the land mass, mm -hmm. where you're going to put these colossal heads, your ceremony center. So we had to be here much longer than that, all right, before we start building. Now, there were a total of 17 colossal heads that were found. Of those 17, one of these heads had Ethiopian braids carved directly from the back of the stone head. Now, there were a total of 17 braids, excuse me, there were a total of seven Ethiopian braids that were carved. Now, again, that mystical number of seven, seven days of the week, seven, as we talked earlier, the seven cardinal points, seven colors, etc. So that mystical seven, all right, the pyramid, you have the square, four plus the triangle, three, so that's seven, so that mystical number is seven. Interesting. Each of these colossal heads range anywhere between 4.82 to 11.5 foot tall taller than a man. Again, we said one had Ethiopian braids carved directly from the helmet and also patches of purple, we were told, by Dr. Van Sertimer were also found on some of those heads, which what? Purple was symbolic of what? Royalty. Royalty. <clears throat> okay. Um, the colossal heads were representations of African priest kings, all right, found right here in the ruling class of the Americas. So you were the first Americans, okay? This was way before the Holocaust of human trafficking. You were there, right? You were, and, and, and it's important to note that when you begin to find pyramids of major significance, colossal heads of that size of major significance, okay? Of just an explosion of scientific and technological innovations, you don't find that until you find us, our ancestors, people who look just like you and I. Here, then all of a sudden you have an explosion of this scientific and technological aspects. And it's interesting because even when you talk about some of the rituals, and it's key to understand that the etymology of the word ritual, root is what? R-I-T, like arithmetic. R-I-T, which means numbers. So we're dealing with arithmetic, you're still dealing with numbers. It's not just a ceremony. But one of the rituals that was found mm. here yeah. in America was one of one that we find in Africa and in the Nile Valley among the uh, nation of Kemet, the Kemetians, misnomered ancient Egypt, which is modern terminology, misnomer. But you find the opening of the mouth ceremony. Mm. Right? You find the same thing in America, in this civilization, one of the same ones that, the same opening of the mouth ceremony that you see in ancient Kemet with the priests, with the Edes, okay, the power of what? The word, getting him to breathe, to say the word, you find that same ceremony, that ritual rather, right here in the Americas. There's a book by the name of Jaraz Boy called Ancient Egypt, something to the extent of Ancient Egypt in America, something to that extent. And then of course, Alexander von Wuthenau has a book called Unexpected Faces in Ancient America, which I found very interesting, the name itself, Unexpected Faces in Ancient America. Mm. Uh, I was fortunate enough oh, yes. some years ago that he sent the book to me when he was in California, and autographed it too. Um, so I was interested Van in Wooten? Van Wooten all, yes, before he, some years before he uh, uh, passed away, he actually sent me a copy of The Unexpected Faces. I was fortunate because I seen an advertisement in Journal of African Civilization. So I just sent the way for it, sending U.S. money, okay, only to find out that uh, he waited till he got over to California to convert it into U.S. dollars. So. Did you close that? Yeah, upper Kemet, they found it in Tassetti first, okay? And Keith still knew about this, mm -hmm. but, but he, he did not want to bring it out. And then, he of course, was white boy? he was the one yeah. who was in charge oh, of the, yeah, yeah, European. He was in oh. charge of the uh, 
the American delegation. American, exactly. That's correct. It's no different than Matthew Sterling's, right, Michael right. Coe, yes. these early scholars who yeah. were the ones who found these colossal heads. All right. They took pictures. They published it. All right. They put it in the National Grid Graphics and the archives, but they didn't. It wasn't published in any major universities of any significance until Van Sertima came out with this information. So what's important about this information here is three things, identity, self-knowledge, and self-revelations, because it's revealing to you who we were. Now, again, these heads here were not only, not only in America, found in America, carved in America, indigenous to the Americas, but also remember you had the, you had the Manday culture over here, the, civil, the nations of Manday, civilization of Manday, you had the Sungay also over here, you had um, the, uh, um, you had other nations within Africa who were also found on American soil. They, they also traveled over here way before the Holocaust of human trafficking. But when you deal with the first major civilizations of America, mother culture Mesoamerica, you can see basically what's there, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So we left a profound scientific and technological impact on America's first major civilization, all right? We just didn't come over here and free little because the most important thing, okay, they were found. Okay, they were here. What did they do? So you gotta be able to prove and show what they did, okay? Now, we need to go downstairs because we need to see all 17 colossal heads, okay? Photos of them, plus the colossal head with the Ethiopian braid. We need to see them also. So you can visually see, and then we need to see some of the ones with the terracotta and clay figurines that were called also. All right, so that's important also. So you, let's go downstairs. Go? So, geez. Oh, geez. <clears throat> First published, 1963. Hold it up again, the cover. Now, that's amazing. It was it's originally amazing. published in 1948. How you like that? 1948. Mm -hmm. This near classic offers a unique and first-hand first -hand account of the myth, religion, and philosophy of the Dogon, a Sudanese people, often regarded as savages. The Dogons are here revealed to live by a cosmogony a metaphysics and a religion which puts them on a par with the people of antiquity and which Christian theology might indeed study with profit. And recording his 33-day conversations with Ogotameli, an elder of exceptional intelligence and wisdom, the author has succeeded in conveying the man's highly individual style. The result is a remarkable betrayal of Dogon cosmology too, as if it was from the inside. What cool. were some of the things, again, that the uh, Dogon was given um, credit for having achieved? One of the things that Dogon were able to do is they were able to see with the naked eye, Sirius B. Remember, Sirius A, you have Sirius A and you have Sirius B. Now, with Sirius B, which goes around Sirius A, you only can use highly advanced telescopes to see Sirius B, all right? But they were able to uh, observe its ecliptic, okay, its, its pattern, etc., okay, and document it, and they were able to see it with the naked eye, all right? Mm -hmm. We just, well, let me put it this way. Western scientists basically were able to see it with their modern telescopes maybe about 15 years ago, 18, 20 years ago, but they were able to see it with the naked eye. All right, mm -hmm. Sirius B. Mm -hmm. It's a whole chapter um, in Dr. Van Sertima's book on uh, African, uh, African scientists, uh, um, uh, something to that nature. I can't remember the title of it. Of course, The Stars of Deep Beginnings by Dr. Charles Finch. But this mm -hmm. was uh, originally first published in 1948. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, getting back to the photographs here. Okay, again, now the way I have this section off, or the way I have this displayed is, if you look up here, the first major civilization of the Olmecs, their first ceremonial platform was San Lorenzo. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are the ten colossal heads that were found that were here in America, the first Americans. And as you can see, I have ancient, noble, and indigenous Americas, North, South, Central, and adjoining islands in America, BC. Now, we need to go back a little further because the first, the oldest, and you need to see this here, the oldest dated American was 11,500 years ago. The color photo is the most ancient known. She was nicknamed Luzia, L-U-Z-I-A, and her name pays homage to the African fossil Lucy. And of course, note root L-U-C, L-U-X denotes light, luminous, illumination, okay? And here is basically when they did a reconstruction of her, all right? what she looked like, the skeletal remains, okay? This was who was first, untaking America's prehistoric roots. She was found in 1975 in Brazil, aged 11,500 years ago. The oldest dated skeleton from the Americas, this young woman with African features may be part of the first wave of immigrants to South America. This was basically, uh, uh, this was actually Discovery Communications Incorporated who published this in 1999. Okay, um, and basically it says dozens of skeletons have emerged from the caves dotting Lagoza, Santa, and eastern Brazil, but one in particular has recently caused a stir. 25 years after it was dug up from a 40-foot deep pit, new dating of the bones have determined that Luzia, her name pays homage to the famous African fossil Lucy, who lived 3.2 million years ago, is the most ancient known American remains, 11,000 500 years old, okay? So I, I need, we need to look, at, and these are just, these are the fossils here, okay? These are the uh, fossils, this is a fossil right here, okay? Uh, that was found, her fossil, and then here, and then when they did the reproduction, okay? We constructed it, all right? So we need to make sure we, we get that there because that's, that's 11,500 years ago. A woman, incidentally. Mm, okay. Mm. Now, fast forward, you got the Olmec heads here, and then down here you have one, two, three, four in La Venta, the ceremonial platform of La Venta. So these were placed on the ceremonial platform of Venta, and then one, two, three, okay, Tres of, uh, what is one, two, Tres of Pates, and this one here was found in Santiago Tuxla. This is the largest one of 11 foot tall. This, uh, uh, colossal head here. How much did it weigh? This one here weighed, let me see, uh, uh, this, this particular one here weighed 50 tons. 50, 50 tons. tons. They range anywhere between 6 and 50 tons. Mm -hmm. Okay, now remember everybody, okay, a ton is equal to how many pounds? A thousand. Two, a thousand two, pounds. Uh, two two thousand pounds, am I right? Two thousand. So you follow me? Mm -hmm. A ton. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. now this here is the platform that you see in Leventa, okay? Site plan of Leventa uh, platform where the heads were placed at. As you can see, they were, they were facing east, looking toward the Atlantic Ocean. And then a pyramid, as you can see right here, okay? You don't find pyramids of that size or heads of that size. Matter of fact, who were the only ones doing heads of that size? was us in the Nile Valley. Right. Because the head, remember, seat of what? Higher consciousness, mm -hmm. the crown chakra, the pineal gland. All right. Mm -hmm. So the head, okay. See the higher, higher, your higher self. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gigantic heads, of course, and that's what you see here. Now, it's not just the heads because now you see what the terracotta of our ancestors too, as you can see, and you can see the locks, so to speak, here. All right. You see the little. Carving here, right in front where a pineal gland would be. But you also see of a young lady here. Okay? These are terracotta clay figurines that you have here. Okay? And this is another shot over here of it also. Okay? Now, in this picture here, we also have, and I want you to pay close attention to this one up here. We have this one up here, but this is from J. Rogers' book, Athlete's Gift to America. But pay attention to this one here because... This one that you see here, okay, I want you to know that this here was found in Connecticut, in an Indian grave site. This one right here, an Indian grave site in Connecticut. It doesn't look like a Tarsetia Nubian. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, but that was found in the Indian grave site, according to Jay Rogers in Connecticut. And of course, this is a Native American from California. This is the Totonac, and I have a color picture. We got to make sure we Point get to upstairs. That again. All right, this is a, a native from California, American. All right, of course, this is Omec San Lorenzo, and then this one here is the Totonac culture. All right, they came later on around the 300 BC, but you can see the hairstyle that the punk rocks and Mr. T don't have no monopoly on because you can see we were wearing those type of hairstyles there. So this was later than the Olmec because the Olmec civilization had already declined and then another civilization arose by the name of the Totonac. Mm -hmm. Again, this is what's found in Connecticut. Now this came from Africa's Gift to America. It's an it's action by J.A. Rogers' book, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So again, this is another pit, a book here called the Olmec, America's first civilization and you can see with America's first civilization they have a picture of our ancestors mm. all right now mind you once again these were carved from a single block of hardcore dense rock called basalt now another thing that I want you to look at here this is the Mandingo or Mande, Mandingo I'm sorry but you can see here it almost look like he has a what Kufi on okay see? But this is one here, all right? This is post-classic. You have pre-classic, post-classic. So this is post-classic here. But I want you just to look at this here and also this one here. Okay? Hmm. It's about 13 centimeters. It's in Berlin, I believe it is. But this here. Now, this was in America. Okay? So when we talk about the first Americans, indigenous Americans, South America, North America, etc., that's the Olmec civilization. That's the most ancient, as you can see, 11,500 years. Okay, the most ancient America, and, and then the information here. Who were the first Americans? Now, this was National Geographic, um, September 3rd, 2003. A study of skulls excavated from the tip of, ba of, of Beja, California, in Mexico suggests that the first Americans may not have been the ancestors of today's American Indians, but another people who came from Southeast Asia and from the Southern Pacific areas. The question of who colonized the Americas and when has long been highly debated. Traditionally, Native Americans believed to have descended from the Northeast Asia arriving over a land bridge between Siberia and Alaska some 12,000 years ago and then migrating North and South America. But recent research, including the Baja California study, indicate that the initial sediment of the continent was instead driven by Southeast Asians who occupied Australia 60,000 years ago and then expanded into the Americas about 13,500 years ago prior to Mongolian people arriving from Northeast Asia. The skulls from the Baja California, which may date only a few hundred years, have slender looking faces and they are different from the broad cheek craniums of modern American Indians, the descendants of the Mongolo people. Our result changes to traditional idea that all modern American Indians presented morphological affinities with East Asians and as a result of the single migration. The new study is reported in this week's issue of Science and Journal Nature and could further fuel the controversy surrounding the origins of the first Americans, which is a controversial issue among, medic, uh, among is, excuse me, a controversial issue for American Indians in particular. All right, and then this here just go on to explain about the skulls that were found, all right, pertaining to Lucy. I'm not going to go over all this, but this is just information about those skulls that were found, all right, about who was the first Americans. Uh, the thing else I want to read here. Yeah, that's pretty much what, what it's dealing with about the first Americans, and, and this is Discovery, uh, Discovery Communications Incorporated, 1999, okay, with the picture, and the first, the oldest American, 11,500 years. Mm -hmm. This here was the last, this was in National Geographic's, um, this was the last head that was found in uh, San Lorenzo. This, this here is the one you see right here. But this was a uh, origin. This came out uh, in National Geographic's when it was found, I believe, in November 1993. This is this is when they finally uh, dug it up. This is how it was laying. But it's in pretty good shape, as you can see. And you notice the details in the helmet. Okay. Now what you have there, everybody, is a symbol of the jaguar. 
They didn't have the serpent, but their symbol was the jaguar. Their totem was the jaguar. But you notice where it's at, right here. Near the what? Crown chakra pineal gland, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, let's walk upstairs so we can see the, the totana, all right? Because we forgot to get that also. So let's look at the, okay, called a Tajin head. All right, the Olmec, when the Olmec civilization declined, okay, around 150 BC, you had a new powerful empire to begin to take place. All right, now the Olmec, you know, was, was greatly influenced, all right, and we see the comparison between the Comedians and Tarsetians, or ancient Egyptians and Nubians, quote unquote, all right, uh, and their influence here in America is also, all right, but now this new culture was influenced, okay, this new culture we have here, according to uh, Alexander von Wuthanon, von, von, von Wuthanon, I'm quoting him, that these cultures was also fooled by ancient blacks from the old world. It's no mystery. Alexander von Wuthanon, an outstanding Mesoamerican archaeologist, states, the greatest variety of Negroid representations furnished by the classical Veracruz artists. Their sculptures showed not only strictly Negroid features, but also the typical hairline of the black individual. Now, I'm just quoting him because, you know, Negroid and... All that's, that's connotative and distorted, but just quoting what he said. But the civilization, okay, that enriched this pre-classic around uh, 200 BC, as you can see here, well, was uh, located in Veracruz, and the name of it was, okay, Tajin. They were the most distinctive within that Totonac, okay? Now, within the Tajin culture, they existed, okay? Our people, as you can see here, all right, our people, and they were called the Totonac, T O. T O N A C. All right. Some archaeologists believe the race was responsible for the pyramid for the city called Teotihuacan, in the spiritual metropolis of Mexico. Archaeologists Jimenez, Marino, and Jacques Sosto not only believe the Totonac constituted the priesthood of the theocracy, but also think the Totonac came from some other land. The testimony is substantiated by the Aztecs. She referred to the Totonac as the people of the warm land because of their darker complexion. All right, and as you can see, the head represent uh, this head here. All right, is of the Totana. Uh It's called a Tajin head, the, but then that culture that was there was the Totanak, and as you can see, the hairstyle, broad nose, the lips, etc., the protruding jaws, etc. As you can see, is indigenous of people that look like you and I. Mm -hmm. Okay, highly melanated, melanated, etc. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the rituals that we find in America, you don't find this ritual in America until you find our ancestors, our ancestors, our foremothers, forefathers, our ancestors, our people, where you find them here, then you begin to see the rituals. This particular ritual that you find in ancient Kemet called the open of the mouth ceremony, I'm sorry, the open of the mouth ceremony, where you have the priest and you have the initiate here. And you have what's like a snake-like instrument called the Adaz, and he's tapping him because he wants him to do what? Open his mouth. Open his mouth to do what? The breathe. science of what? Breath. Mm -hmm. All right? So it's initiation going to the breath, the, the breathe. The whole mm -hmm. concept is centered around the breath. That's mm -hmm. where the word spirit comes from. Spirit is breath. The other ritual that you see in the Americas, and you don't see this until we come up, until you find us here, is... What you call here, like a baptismal. Because right. you can see here with the onks, the vase jar with the water, etc. You find this here also in America, on this soil here, okay? Among the Olmex, where you find our people. All right, so that's mm -hmm. just two of them, all right, that I'm pointing out. I'm trying to see what else here. And that's pretty much... Um, just an overview. Now remember, it's not just these heads here, these terracotta. You had terracotta almost this small. Mm -hmm. That was carved, okay, with African features. The, the, the hair was different, of course, and the, the grave sites of the ruling class. All right, Van Sturtema states, Dr. Ivan Van Sturtema states that 13.5% of African skeletal remains were found. And some of the, some of the traits that were analyzed uh, by uh, Polish craniologists Andrzej Wazinski and Davros 
There were about nine. The degree of pragmatism, height of nasal root, width of nasal roof, position of nasal aperture, position of nasal spine, degree of nasal spine, shapes of orbits, depth of canophysal, and depth of maxillary my, my incisor. These are anthropological terms, but their traits were totally different to mm -hmm. show that, hey, these were quote-unquote African skeletal remains that were found, okay, among the ruling classes of the first major civilization in the Americas. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. I have here ancient, noble, and indigenous Americans, north, south, and the Jordan Islands in America, BCE. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. All right, you were the commodity. Right. So at that time, any wealthy people with money, all right, no matter who they were, whether they were Catholics, Protestants, so they, Irish, you ha if, if you wanted to make money, you had land, you owed land, you needed someone to do work, work the plantation. So you would purchase what? Okay? Africans at the auction block. Free okay? And it was free labor for umpteen years. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't know if you've seen that movie called 12 Years a Slave. Yeah. yeah. Okay? That it was, was interesting. Awful, okay? But, it was but, but the message in there, though, I if you it. think about the message, though, in there was when he said, I'm free. Okay? I'm not a slave. You know, I'm a free man. And they asked him, okay? You are? Okay, where's your papers at? Hmm. Show your papers. Meaning that just because you said it was nothing, you had to prove it. Where's your papers at? All right, remember they intoxicated, got him drunk? And if you have to carry papers, you ain't free. That's my point. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's my point. Mm -hmm. All right, so anybody who wanted to profit, you were a commodity. Mm -hmm. Okay, you wasn't considered a human being. You were considered what? Three-fifths. Of a human being okay I have and since we're, we're talking that subject I have a book here and but you see how when it go back to that 12 years a slave because you know um, they continue to m make these movies that are very demeaning to black men because if you look at the underlying thread or fabric of the message in that was that this guy did not exercise his freedom he was waiting on the white man to free him throughout the whole entire um, flip. And also, they didn't show him as an individual. They showed him as a inferior creature to the white man without a family. Because, see, that would have given him a social balance. You notice they never, there was no story about his, no, no nothing put in there about his mother, father, wife or children. You saw them and that was it. She was busy buying her little fancy fabric in some white merchant shop and that was it. You showed her as being a part of that pretentious materialistic mentality. That's your freedom. You can go into these shops and you can buy this expensive cloth. That's it. That's what they showed of his other self, his better half, his wife. That was it. And then as he's captured and he goes south, his whole act of trying to free himself was waiting on a white man. Was begging a white man. That whole movie was so disturbing to me. And at the end, almost like uh, Henry Box Brown, you know, he wants to free the birds and the free... Associating them, disassociation. You know, so I, I come to that, I know you were uh, filming that. I guess you're going to edit this out. <laughs> Yeah. So, how was he able to, what other way, now remember, they took his papers, alright, um, he had no other way of proving that he was a quote-unquote free man. So now, once he was taken to the South, what other way, because remember, a couple people who he thought he can trust, they betrayed him in the movie, mm -hmm. all right? It's one you European, the whites, big, 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 European. Big, right, big, who, who, who he thought yeah, he could trust. Yeah, because he thought it was equal. All right, so now, so what other <laughs> option would he have? Because if if you have no rights, all right, because remember now, whatever rights you thought you had was stripped now, okay? Mm -hmm. And remember, when he, when he spoke with the European who bought him and told him, look, I just want to share with you, I'm a free man. I'm not a slave. This is by accident. I don't have my papers. They were still in the etc. God told him, don't you ever talk like that again. I don't want to hear nothing about like that, okay? Free. About free. So but my point is... Even when you were free. 
basically at that particular time you had no way of proving okay that you were a free man okay and and, and, and that's what i got of to show that that number one but he accepted it and then less than another well, I don't know free I, in, in order to stay I, on on a little target just okay. let me say this and then i, I want us to get back okay Kun is the same, what your position is the same as Kun, Kunway uh, West, that slavery was a choice. So what I would like for you to no, do... I'm not, no, 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 hold on. Yeah, I, know, I, I understand what you're saying. You, you, you're no, saying no, 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 no. You said a brother was waiting no. on someone, no. the white Let man... Let me clarify this. All right, go ahead. Okay. You said that... My position is that slavery is a choice. Was a choice. No, no. When you are enslaved, it's a mental conditioning. Let me quote W.B. Du Bois. If you take the chains off of the man's ankle in his hands and put it around his brain, you don't have to tell him to go to the back door. If there is none, he will create one. So that's not a choice. That's a mental conditioning. And it is clear and apparent. And he thought that he was free because some white man gave him a paper that said that he was free and he didn't and they took his paper so therefore he's no longer free and he has to prove his freedom. That's not saying that he was responsible for his own conditioning. He was brainwashed. He thought he was free. He was in fact a slave. Of, in every cultural sense of the word, because he could not direct his his freedom, he could not direct his liberty, he could not he was his word was not of any value, so therefore he was not a free man and then when he went south, he decided that in order for him to prove his freedom, he needed the voice and the support and backing of a white man. A European man, not his own word, not any struggle that he thought that he could engage in that would free himself. So he accepted his position, and when he he did not he when he was engaged with a female slave, he did not take the position that he was the same as she. He thought he was in a different status. Okay, and also, he was supposed to be intelligent and a leader. He did not participate in the liberation of his people. So, guess what? He was okay with everyone else being a slave. And I'm not, like, uh, you know, this is not a critical analysis. This is just an observation. This is a reality. Let, let, and that's the mental let, slavery. Let, let, let's add to that, because this is where I wanted to go with that. I have, and, 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 and I'm going a, I'm to a tie this in because I have a book called Ellible Rights by Francis D. Adams and Barry Sanders, The Exclusion of African Americans in a White Man's Land, 1619 to 2000. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tie this in first with the 14th Amendment, all right? Now, and, and I'm going to show you where I'm going with this because it's going to add on to what you just said, all right? Now, the 14th Amendment, Article 4 says, now listen to me carefully. It says all persons, now keyword persons, now what you pay attention, because a person can be what? A corporation, it can be an LLC, it doesn't have to be a what? An organic living human being, we know that, mm -hmm. all right? All persons born or what? Naturalized in the United States, now keyword, and subject, sub means what? Below, mm -hmm. subject to the what? Juris law, mm -hmm. jurisdiction, mm -hmm. words to speak, jurisdiction, there are are citizens of the United States and the states where they reside. Now, I want you to, okay, keep that in mind, the key word persons. Now, I'm going to quote something here, okay, and I'm going to read this because this is tying to just what I'm saying, um, uh, and it's on page, let's see, 51, let's see, this is 51, and I want to read this because this is going to tie in, this has to do with the Constitution, okay? Now, pay attention, keep that word person, okay? Because this ties into just what we're talking about on this subject. It says here in chapter 2, chapter 2, chapter 3, I'm sorry. And again, the book is 
Ellable Rights, the Exclusion of African Americans in a White Man's Land, 1619 to 2000 by Francis D. Adams and Barry Sanders, okay? That's the name of it, okay? <laughs> Back of the book says, just as stockholders in a corporation that in the past created an ecological disaster cannot walk away from their obligation to make good on the damages, so white citizens cannot deny their involvement in America's moral failure by maintaining that it all happened before they were born. And consequently, it has nothing to do with them. And our willingness to dismiss the manifold social disadvantages that most blacks endure as simply the result of their own personal failings, we all share in the responsibility for America's continued exclusion of its black population. These are two Europeans. Now, I'm going to read this here, all right? Now, this is very important. It's called The Dark Side of the Constitution. It has to do when the Constitution was set in motion. Now, this is a quote from Ben Franklin, which he quoted from first. When you assemble a number of men... To have the advantage of their joint wisdom, you envelop, inevitably assemble all their prejudice, their passion, their errors of opinion, local interests, and their selfish views. All right, now, William Lord Garrison, 1845, a covenant with dark and an agreement with hell. Now, keep in, keep in mind the word person, all right? The 55 delegates who convened in May 1787 at the State House in Philadelphia will have no need of a naturalization act to recognize their countrymen. Having assembled to revise and strengthen the federal government, they will be re representing only the nation's white population. While the South slaves clearly would be on the delegates' mind throughout the convention, the document they fully approved gave blacks absolutely nothing, certainly none of the universal natural rights the Declaration of Independence asserted everyone had at the birth and not even the narrow protection slaves were given by the French in Louisiana under the Code Noir. Exactly what transpired in the Constitutional Convention deliberation remained secret for over 50 years. Not because the delegates felt a need to hide away which they dealt with the nation's black. Few, whites, a few white Americans have objected but because they wanted to minimize any appearance of conflict, which they feared would jeopardize ratification. In 1840, however, the precise detail of what had gone on behind closed doors in Philadelphia became public. Ending the voluntary silence, the members had voted unanimously to impose in 1787. At the convention, the delegates had appointed an official secretary who could take careful notes, but James Madison also kept his own even more detailed records. Friends repeatedly urged him to publish his account, but he insisted that it remain private until all the framers had died. We're talking about the framers of the Constitution. In 1836, Madison, the last surviving member of the convention, passed away, and his notes of debates in the Federal Convention of 1787 was released four years later. Its publication shocked many of the countrymen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not because Madison's account showed that slavery had been an issue at the convention, but because it revealed that slavery had been delegates' overriding preoccupation. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. Slavery had been the delegates' overriding preoccupation. <clears throat> slavery prompted almost every serious disagreement. Disagreements that the delegates managed to resolve only because Northerners and Southerners alike were willing to trample on the human rights of the nation's black population. Okay? Once the convention delegates became public, the abolitionists angrily condemned the proceedings. In 1845, William Lloyd Garrison described the Constitution, I'm quoting him, as a covenant with death and an agreement with hell. Inhumane, unjust, and affronting to God and man. Frederick Douglass echoed. One, one may choose to dismiss Garrison and his followers as extremists. After all, they argued not just for emancipation, but for immediate abolition and rejected anything less than all-out attack on slaveholders. But even a moderate like the Reverend Samuel J. May, who continued to defend the Constitution, declared that the publication of Madison's notes had discon disconcerted him. Quote, I could not so easily maintain my ground in a discussion which afterwards agitated so seriously the abolitionists themselves. 
So maintaining that the Constitution was, excuse me, maintaining that the Constitution was and was intended to be pro-slavery. Granting to the slaveholders distinct privileges and protection for his slave property and return for certain commercial <coughs> concessions upon his part toward the North. Phillips believed that the North and South had entered into a malicious bargaining willing with open eyes and thus free and slave states were partners in the guilt and responsible for the set of slaveries. Though Madison notes reveal, reveal, now I'm getting into it deep now, though Madison notes, you know who Jane Madison is, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Though Madison's notes revealed that members of the convention spoke freely about slaves, quote unquote, blacks, quote unquote, Negroes. Now you hear the words? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind, who was talking about that in 1930s? Who was it? That you're not colored, you're not Negro. Who was saying that? Noble Drew Ali. Mm. Okay? Remember. Okay? Though Madison's notes revealed that members of the convention spoke freely about, quote, slaves, quote, unquote, black, quote, unquote, Negroes, the final form of the Constitution avoided these words. Now pay attention, everybody. Mm -hmm. Avoided these words cryptically, cryptically, referring to African Americans as persons, mm -hmm. 14th Amendment, mm -hmm. or persons held to service or labor. Let me say that again, because remember the 14th Amendment. Though Madison's notes revealed that the members of the convention spoke freely about slaves, quote-unquote, blacks, quote-unquote, and Negroes, the final form of the Constitution avoided these words. Cryptically, referring to African Americans as persons, quote-unquote, or quote-unquote persons held to service or labor. As Abraham Lincoln later observed, the delegates hid away slavery in the Constitution, just as afflicted man hides away a wind or cancer, which he declared, which he dares not cut out. Retreats over slavery had, apparently, had appeared initially in Congress under the Articles of Confederation. The nation's first attempt at a constitution, because as William Patterson of the Jersey, who later became Supreme Court, noted, the members have been ashamed to use the term slave. Now hear me out. What do you find in the constitution? All persons born, keyword, persons born or naturalized, okay, born or naturalized in the United States and subject, subject to the jurisdiction thereof of the citizens of the United States in the states in which they reside. Basically, what they're telling you is, even in the Constitution, they hid away slavery. They were ashamed of that, and they just said persons, meaning that what? You're just a 14th, what are you? You're a, a 14th, 14th Amendment citizen. That's all you are, okay? You're not even a human being. You're just a what? 14th, that there, okay, took the place of what? Humanity. Slavery, humanity, okay? Because they hid it in the Constitution. They didn't want to use the word Negro, Black, Okay, they were ashamed. So to get around slavery, all of the framers, what did they do? They used the word, what? Persons, Person. a person of servitude. You follow me? Mm -hmm. The power of the words. Mm -hmm. The power of the word. That all right? are subject to the Jewish Oh, say it again. Laws. Say it again. That are subject, subject to, to the, the jurisdiction jurisdictional laws of the states of, the of which you states. are. So basically, you are subjects to the jurisdiction of whatever state, New York, Pennsylvania, in which you reside. Okay? Subject. Now. Not an entitlement okay. for the subject. Now, you see the mm -hmm. key word? Mm -hmm. All persons. Mm -hmm. Persons here in the 14th Amendment, uh, for the, the, the 14th Amendment is not even capitalized. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not important. It's what? It's now all persons, all right? Not even capitalized. Mm -hmm. All right? Describing all persons. Now, you see what they hit in the Constitution? They didn't want to use the word slavery. They didn't want to use the word Negro, black. Service. So they use what? Persons, no, remember it says right, persons right. or persons of servitude. Yeah. Now, that didn't come out to what? 50 years after, after James S Madison died. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, these are two Europeans. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well worth reading. Okay? Mm -hmm. I got two copies of this, all right? And I just gave you just a glimpse of it. But since we talked about the Holocaust of human trafficking, even in the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, all persons. See the same word? They hid it in the Constitution. Okay, so when they were saying persons, basically, they had they, they didn't want to get rid of slavery. They didn't want to deal with that, so we just what cover it up and just say all persons. 
All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you see why the what abolitionists was pissed off. Right. Because they realized what happened, but it wasn't published until what fifty years later. Because remember, the Southerners were like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> we making money off these folks." Okay, these are our quote unquote slaves. I mean, we, you know, we, we ain't trying to get them up. And then what happened? In order to get their vote, in order to compromise, you see what they did? That's hot in the Constitution. Mm. Now, how many people know about that? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. The power of the words, okay? I have something here that I wrote down, okay, in relationship to this conversation. And for the most part, all, all people and others, but since we're talking about us. In the majority of our people, three things seem to be missing. Identity, self-knowledge, and self-revelations seem to be missing with our people. Okay? Identity. Yes. Okay, who we are. Who we are. What you find out about yourself is what? Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. What you found out about a pencil is what? Information. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. What you find out about yourself is knowledge. What you find out about a pencil is in formation. You're just being informed about a pencil. So what? If it does not relate to you in an unraveling yourself, if it does not relate to you in unraveling yourself, it is not knowledge. It is merely information. Okay? Mm -hmm. This had to unravel you because how many times is this taught in history classes? How many times did if anybody, especially our people, know that, wait a minute, not this whole thing was hidden in the Constitution. In the okay? Mm -hmm. What I get this book for? I think I, think I got it for $5 a sick hardback. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So the information is out there. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. But you see the three things that seem to be missing from our people. Self-identity, self-knowledge, okay? And self-revelation. It's It seemed to be missing. A lot has to do with, remember we talked about yesterday, the foundation of the Rockefeller and the what? Public educational system. All right, it's to maintain the status quo. It's to maintain. Okay? It's, it's, not the, it's not to teach you, okay, how, how to, to live, you. Okay, right. how to be you, all right? Mm -hmm. And or be a competitor. All right? So my point is, teach because we were be talking about... subservient subject. There That's it is. What it teaches you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So basically, Shop my classes, main point is... Electrical classes and... Now, get back to 12 years of slave. Mm -hmm. Now, let's tie it in. Let's take it home. Because okay. I want to wait for you to make your point. Basically... He was just a what? 14th Amendment citizen that was subject to the jurisdiction of the North. Then he went down South. Now, I'm You're subject, subject, to, subject to, to our jurisdiction, jurisdiction now. Right. So you know what, boy? Yeah. I don't care what you were doing up there. You're here. You're here now. And this, slave, okay? this is a slave. You didn't have, basically... You and we have a right to you have no status. you and enslave you. You had no status. Mm -hmm. You had no nationality. He wasn't okay? interested in he running away. He was a sovereign, all right? He was not interested in running away. But now you have to understand, too, and, and this is where you came in at, where you made a good point, the mental aspect, because in the mm -hmm. North, I could play the violin, I can go, it was an integration where I can go among Europeans, I can talk, I can Buy drink, etc. Now, you know, you didn't know that you were Spend being set life. up, right. okay? But the, your status, you thought you had a status mm -hmm. that says... Of a free citizen. Okay, no, 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 not of a free citizen, of a free natural human being. Okay. Okay, because remember, a person can be a corporation. Mm -hmm. You look up the etymology, you look it mm -hmm. up in the, 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 the Black Laws Dictionary. A person could be a corporation, it could be an LLC, it could be a company, okay, it can be... Uh, or it can be a, a, a organic human being. We don't know. It just says what? It doesn't define it. It just says all persons born or natural, but you're still subject to what? Jurisdiction. Juris means what? Law. Diction. To speak. The laws that I speak, that I say, you're subject to that. Because all you were and all we were was a what? 14th Amendment citizen. Mm -hmm. You see how they... So they took slavery out of it mm -hmm. and made you a what? Person. Subject to the jurisdiction of the state you reside. You see what Madison mm -hmm. kept hitting for 50 years? That's why I said keep and pay attention to the word what? P-E-R-S-I-N. Now you said it, we were taught in class what the noun is an identifier. The name of a person, place, place or thing. thing. Name of a person, place, place or, or thing. thing. Okay? Right. Person. person. No, okay. Name of a person. Place. And thing. All you were, written in so at this point, amendment, all right, all covered in that thirteenth okay? amendment. Okay. So far as they're it's concerned, all about it now. you were just a thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, where did you reside at? Think of the word residence. Mm -hmm. Now we, we're talking law now. Resident place. R e s i d e n. Rest means a thing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, when you look at the etymology word resonance and law, a thing, mm -hmm. identify. Mm -hmm. A thing to be identified. So when somebody said to you, where do you reside? Basically, you we're asking you, you are a thing to be identified. So now you gotta take out, let me see your license and registration to prove who you are. If you don't have it and you drive it and you don't have your license, registration, and so on, I can't prove who you are. You get a what? Ticket. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. No different than when he said, hey, show me your papers. You say you free boy, show me your papers. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, okay, smacked and whatever, okay, you are a thing. You're subject to this jurisdiction, and that's why I want you to finish first, but you see the parallel between, in the Constitution, hide, encrypted, slavery, Negro, black, all right, it was the most talked about subject during that part, all because of the Confederation, okay? So we are hiding by saying persons or person of servitude to get around it, mm -hmm. to get the votes. Mm -hmm. And then in the Constitution, what do you have? All persons born or naturalized. Naturalized is somebody that come from another country mm -hmm. who ain't born over here. Mm -hmm. All right, but whoa, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I was the first Americans. How are you gonna tell me I'm naturalized? Okay, how are you gonna tell me I'm subject to your jurisdiction when I was here? My ancestors was here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And look at the images. All right. Look at the so. How, how am I subject to the jurisdictions of which I reside? If I'm an American first. Because you're not in control. Okay? And that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Who controls the information, the knowledge, all right, is the ones who does what? Control, control you. Controls you. All right? Mm -hmm. That's my main point that I was making. So you can go out with a gun and you can shoot this person instead of the other. That's not going to change if nothing. If you let them name you, they claim you. That's my they point. They own you. Okay? You so now you. now you begin to see where... When Drew Ali, to a certain extent, misunderstood when he said that you're not Negro, you're not colored, you're not black. Now, black is not a bad word. Why do they? Okay, they let them. They let them demonize my, my it. My point is that there it. was never a referendum where we said we all agree to be called Negro. Right. We all agree to be called colored. Yeah. We all agree to be called black. Okay. Right. Right. They are what adjectives. Mm -hmm. Okay. That describes us. Right. That that describes something. Nations, human beings, do not identify themselves with Crayola crayons. Mm -hmm. All right, you have fifty-two countries in Africa. Well, what what is where's the Crayola crayons coming? From? Okay, Negro well, is a well, Spanish well, word that means black. But it's my point no is, language. but my point is, is that how do we do it? Okay, what did he look like? Now, if I'm asking you, what did he look like? He's five eleven. He has he had a hat. I'm describing what he looked like. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that. First thing we say, oh, he was black. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. Am I giving him a nationality? Yeah. Or, or am I giving him, because a nationality is, oh, he's Moroccan. He's a Moor. He's Nigerian. He's Senegalese. That's a nationality. You're being descriptive. Okay. Okay. No, I'm giving you an identifier. I'm identifying you at, which, 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 in other words, my point is, okay, is what is your nationality? Wrong with that? Okay. Is there something wrong with that? No, no, that's my point. It's not. But what right. we do is okay. we're the only ones who we say she black. We, yeah. Because we accepted somebody else's, else's terminology and demonations yes. of us. Right. There was never a referendum. Right. Just like in there, okay, how do we get around slavery? How do we get around the word black, call it Negro? How do we do it? We just say persons or persons of servitude and then hide it in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let me... Uh... When you talk about the Holocaust of human trafficking, first thing that you want to look at is that all European nations wasn't involved in the Holocaust of human trafficking at the beginning. First ones who came on the scene was who? Spanish? Portugal. All right? The Pope said, okay, Spain, you Man, take the see. East. All right, and then you take the West, okay? We're talking about as far as the, the European nations, okay? Um, but, but, but the Arabs played a role in that also, okay? Make no mistake about it, because when Spain and Portugal finally did, was at its peak, and, you know, and they decided, hey, you take the East, you take the West, okay? Then they start, Portugal start coming after. Remember, it was honorable trade first, mm -hmm. before the Holocaust of human trafficking, all right? Mm -hmm. you, you know, you had goods that we needed, they traded, mm -hmm. okay, with the kings of what, Benin, etc. Mm -hmm. But then they realized, remember, they were trying to penetrate into what, the interior, because at the beginning, we're just on the outskirts of Africa. Mm -hmm. They wanted to go into that interior, all right? And once they start penetrating more to the interior, they realized, whoa, 
all of this rich resources down here. And then you have to look at the Arabs. Now the Arab play more of a part also of what? As she's reading slave trade in the Indian Ocean. Okay? With the East Indies, etc. But the Arabs were in partnership, meaning that the first thing the Arabs did was what? All right? Once they controlled, especially the northern part of Africa, all right? First thing any conqueror do is going to do what? Mate with your woman. All right? So now you have these bastardized children. All right? Then you switch from matrilineal to patrilineal. All right? Then you change certain what? Belief systems, quote unquote, ways of life, somebody else's cosmology. And then what happened now, okay, with your weaponry and your force, you convert them to what? Forget or make theirs what? Inferior, quote unquote. And now you have what? No different than what happened to the quote unquote so called African American over here. You have a what? New person. Mm, All right? Mm. A new person that you restructured, okay, that you made to do what you want to do. Basically, what she was talking about earlier, what? You took care of what? You controlled the what? Mental thinking, and then you colonized their concept of a what? G O D. What they conceived it to be. You did what? Change it around and brought your ideology, your epistemology. Now, for mm -hmm. those who didn't submit, for those who wanted to keep their traditional way of, of their ancestors, you were either what? Kill? Mm -hmm. Okay? For the most part, you were either kill or, or what? Slave. Or slave. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So now, taking that into consideration, all right? Then when you have what the Dungeons coming in, because now the Portuguese, they were at that time now, they were bringing in so many Africans or enslaving so many Africans that they needed what? Forts to build. So now you have what? The dungeons that they built all in what? The West Coast of Africa to what? House your quote unquote stock. Mm -hmm. 52 in Ghana alone. So that you can transport them what? Back to Europe. Mm -hmm. Brazil, etc. Because remember, at that time, who had Brazil? The Portuguese. Mm -hmm. All right? Brazil is bigger than the United States. So now, for me to cultivate this land, what do I need? I need manpower. I need labor. I got the sugar canes down here. I got rice. So I need labor. So now, the so called Indians, quote unquote, Native Americans, they were dying out. You could, they didn't last. So now, where did the manpower come from? Africa. The continent. All right. So now I got the manpower to come over to do what? Give me free labor. And for those who didn't want to submit, okay, they're either enslaved or they were killed. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, all right, those where I didn't get honorable trade through some type of agreement, contract or whatever, I'm going to conquer your land. I'm going to take over it. Now, what happened is at the same time, what do you see? You see the Spanish, Portuguese, but then now who comes on the scene next? The Dutch and the Atlantic slave trade, 1600 to 1815. Remember, the early part was Spain and Portugal. That would make sense because that's where the Moors were the longest in Spain, okay, in the Iberian Peninsula. So they had the trade, they had the ships, etc. Now the Dutch came on and said, wait a minute, we want a piece of this also. Okay? We want a piece of the pie also. So now they get involved, okay? Good book, well worth reading. I mean, you can see how much I underline. This came, this book here, my geez, how long did I have this? This came from Cambridge University Press. That's where I got this book from, Cambridge University Press. And do I have a year that I got it? I don't know, but this book cost me $65 plus $2 of posters and handling. And I probably had this book for at least 15 years. $65. Mm. Called, called the, Dutch, the Dutch and the Atlantic Slave Trade, 1618 mm. to 1815 by... Johannes Mini Mine Pasma. Okay? Very good book. This is the first thorough analysis of the Dutch participation in the transatlantic slave trade. Based upon extensive research in Dutch archives, the book examines the whole range of Dutch involvement in Atlantic slave trade from the beginning of the 17th century to early 19th century. Approximately 550,000 slaves were transported on the Dutch ships from Africa, to, excuse me, to the Western Hemisphere. Initially, the Dutch ships, the Dutch shipped slaves to northern Brazil 
and during the second half of the 17th century, they had a controlling interest in the so-called Asiento trade to the Spanish colonies. The Guiana settlements in today's Suriname and Guyana became the prominent slave markets for the Dutch during the 18th century. The book is a great deal of attention to Africa and the acquisition of slaves, but it also provides much new information about the treatment or mortality of the slaves during the Middle Past and it examined the questions of profitability and the slave trade in a separate chapter. <clears throat> okay? Now you see how much stuff I how much stuff I didn't know, notes I did, and this was about 15, <coughs> 20 years ago. Okay, for example, gold for crucial European dominance of world trade. Several hundred now this is Dutch here, several hundred Sephardic Jews settled in <clears throat> Howling. They were originally from Portugal and had retreated, okay, and had okay, retained the Iberian culture. So now remember when it's Sephardic Jews, okay, a lot of them lost power, got expelled from Spain, they went to Holland. We talked about here Dutch and established the Dutch East Indies, Dutch West Indies, okay? But this is just some of the stuff that I got out of this book here, all right? Some of the names, David Massey, Matthias Beck, okay? Cornick Solomon, name of the wick ship. These are names, okay? Names for some of these people here. Solomon delivered, Solomon delivered 331 slaves to Puaka in 1658. It was mentioned as a great success. This is from page 116, I'm quoting. For other names of other Dutch Jewish slave ships and slave uprising, see page 166. What is an anciento? Page 29. Contracts. A term in Spanish. Public law was designated every contract made for the purpose of public utility. The Spanish government and private individuals, okay, also see page 354. Asienso contract meant that a return for a substantial, the world, <coughs> because remember the Dutch took them in. The Dutch they said, wait a minute, come on over here. We yeah. can use your services. Remember, they, they were merchants, they were skilled. Right. So why, okay, so you don't want them in Spain? We'll take yeah. them. Right. Okay? okay. And they came over, and then they the ones who set up the Dutch East Indy, Dutch West Indy Company, and they, and they became Cuba. major backers. All right? Mm -hmm. But, and that's why I said, when you're dealing with the Holocaust of enslavement, human trafficking, you got to take each nation when it came. That's why you see my books on oh, different yeah. aspects. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because all European nations wasn't in the beginning. Remember, one, when one European nation, like, okay, once you deal with the Dutch, who knocked them out the way? The English. Oh, Okay, we want a part of this too. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what they were fighting among each other. Right. But this is just some of the ones that I was, uh, some of the stuff that I, I underlined here about the Asiento contracts. Uh, some of the other stuff here was, let's see. Okay, um, okay, uh, the WIC, W I C, was chartered in 1621. In East, okay, in East India, it was the East India Company that survived for 200 years. Wick played a significant part in the enslavement trade. Okay, um, why involved? The Dutch captured northern Brazil. They called it the governor of New Holland. They needed slaves for the acquisition of Brazil. So when they captured it, they needed slaves to work the land. Wick did not get involved at first. They had little interest okay, with acquisition of Brazil. And nine years after the founding of WIC, W-I-C, and the acquisition of Brazil, they got involved in the slave trade. Okay? No contemporary record is found with the consultation with the, the theologians. Okay? Um, also, La Casa, Bishop Bartholomew La Casa, persuaded uh, Spanish monarch Martin V to allow African slaves to be brought to the Spanish colonies, as you know. Guzman Bernardo, Martin Guzman, who was an agent for the Portuguese under the Royal Portuguese Company. What was his person? Guzman's mission was to locate slave suppliers. He treated them with the English, French, and Portuguese. He was treated, excuse me, he was trading with the English, French, and Portuguese. After his death in 1675, uh, Simon and Luiz de Souza, these are Portuguese, became agents for Portugal. Okay? And I'm not going to go too much in it, but this is just some of the information mm -hmm. about the Dutch mm -hmm. being involved. Very good book. Very good book. Um, yeah, see, I knew that the Dutch had uh, engaged in war with Portugal. 
Portugal is the one that really controlled Brazil and populated Brazil with African uh, enslaved persons from the Congo Angola region. And see, you are like this because this have the slave ships, the assignment, the number, how many, the total assign, the percentage, the serial number, the towns, the regions, mm -hmm. etc. Um, the home ports, etc. All right, so once you begin to leave the Dutch, all right, because now late 17th, 18th century, who comes on the scene? The British. The British, mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where it became a dirty, stinking, filthy. It was all stinky. Holocaust, if you will, because they, they, but but they, but the, the mean, British, no yeah. Well, I want to say the British. They set it up because the Americans are the ones who really took it to the extreme. But they, okay, okay. All right. Call them Americans. Okay. Well, okay. but I mean, they were, well, we know they were colonies of Britain. They were just basically an extension of the British the colonies. American colonies. Okay, the American colonies. Okay, let's okay. use that. Okay. okay. So yeah. now. This yeah, is where, when you want to really talk about those, those, those are natives, Liverpool, natives. Bristol, yeah, and how Europe underdeveloped Africa. That's it. This is well worth reading here. Okay, okay. All right. well worth reading. Mm. The decisiveness of a that short period of colonialism and its negative consequences for Africa sprang mainly from the fact that Africa lost power. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. They lost the power. Mm -hmm. Power is the ultimate determinant in human society being basically to the relationship within any group and between group and applies the it implies the ability to defend one's interests and if necessary to impose one will by any means available in relations between people the question of power determines maneuverability and bargaining the extent to which a people survive as a physical and cultural entity when one society finds itself forced to relinquish power entirely to another society that in itself is a form of what? Underdevelopment. Mm -hmm. Before a bomb ended his life in the summer of 1980, Walter Rodney had created a powerful legacy. With this pivotal work, how Europe undeveloped Africa had already brought a new perspective to the question of underdevelopment in Africa. Okay? And it just goes on and on and on, all right? But the thing is, is that what's nice about this here is that he, this book here, as well as this one here, Okay, it deals with the economic aspect. All right, well, you want to talk about, you want to talk about here and here. Now, this more so in America with the different unions and how basically the unions held our people back mm -hmm. from progressing yes. with the trades and all. Yes. This is well worth getting the economic racism, That's... roots of black inequality by Victor Perla, because now with the unions starting up, the, the, the European, the unions, okay, for Europeans. Over in Americas, a lot of us who were skilled, who had, who wanted these jobs, they held them back and they kept bringing up what immigrants because they didn't want you in their unions. All right. So remember that was that that put you back right there. Then when you talk about Bristol, Liverpool, England, all right, and then you talk about building slave ships, you talk about insurance, because remember insurance companies, okay, mm. they got on the scene because they had to insure yeah. the or traffic, the cargo. All right, the cargo. All right, so you can begin to see the making of how the British economy, England, Liverpool, just increased rapidly. All right, all right. The whole concept of the sun and never set in Britain. When Britain came on the scene, all right, they knocked everybody else off the butt. Okay, they just they just took over. All right, said hey, and all of a sudden now there's no more Dutch involved. Okay, Portuguese. All right, they weren't strong enough to hold theirs. Spain, they wasn't strong enough to hold this. So now the British came on the scene, okay? Now they're going with even more advanced weapons, okay? They're going to just take over the lands because they're just killing, doing whatever they can, and they just keep penetrating. And then what happens now, other European nations, and this is where the Berlin Conference come in because now they say, wait a minute, why do we have these European nations? Why are we fighting against each other? You could take part, you could take part, I could take part, okay? And then we'll trade with each other, all right? So you talk could, could you call that a world war since you had all the European nations, practically all of them, at war, and you have to call it war because they're invading Africa and taking over its resources. So would you call that a world war? 
Of course. I would also call it European nationalism. Okay? okay? Nationalism. European nationalism. Because remember what Walter Rodney said. If I come in and I conquer you, I'm in power now. You have no say so. You are subjects to the jurisdiction of where you reside. It doesn't matter that you own that land. It doesn't matter to us once upon a time. Your forefathers and more foremothers are dead. Now the younger ones coming up, they don't know. No different than us today. Okay, because now you're going to be indoctrinated with what now? The planning of Christianity mm. in Africa. Mm. Now we're talking about, let's be clear, we talk about the European ideology, the European epistemology of Christianity in Africa. So <laughs> now, okay, it's not only that I conquered the land, mineral resources, because we know Europe needed that. They needed the manpower, but they needed resources, okay? Right, right. And Africa was, at that time, was really unexplored in an interior, so they had a wealth of resources, okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if I'm coming into power and I'm conquering you, the first thing I want to do is, hey, I'm going to do a, a geological survey of your land. Whoa, gold, uranium, okay? And this is where the names came from, the Ivory Coast, the Gold Coast. Why do you think these names came about? Okay, because of the precious metals that they had, South Africa with the diamonds, etc. So now the resources was there and the food. Food was there. I can rape your woman, mate with your woman anytime I want. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you, I own you, so I can say, listen, mm -hmm. tonight at nine o'clock, I want you in my house. Mm -hmm. All right, well, nothing your husband can do. Okay, you can come back pregnant, but the bottom line is, you you, you know what's going on tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so. My main point is, now with all of that going on, okay, once a, a, no matter who it is, once a nation come over and conquer you, once a, people are defeated, you subject to their jurisdiction now. You uh, subject to their laws. I want to throw something in there to clarify. Uh, when people say that uh, the Africans helped Europeans or did the Europeans dirty work, and you said as much like uh, where we are today, we are conquered people, and we go into the European army, and we'll go into Africa and fight Africans because we are uh, we are in we are we are we are in the um, we are inducted in the U.S. Army, and wherever they send us, you will go and fight, or you will go to jail. The same thing happened to Africans. So when we are talking about Nigerians and uh, the Belgium Congo, and you had Africans who uh, was involved in cutting off the hands and. Uh, of, of other Africans, it, it, it get into but, that. But explain. remember now, you know you had at the at beginning stages you had some African kings. Now you got to you got to you got to took them all out of it because you had the what the Arab invasion of Egypt. Here it is. You want to talk about a documented history of black slavery in Brazil? There you go. And then uh, if you want a pictorial one, there you go. Okay. Okay. You 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 just picked up one that I want to. If you if you just look at. The economy today, if I'm going to build up an economy, all right, if I need ships, if I need chains, if I need insurance policies, okay, that means that I have to do what? I have to put a business together, okay? So now, in order to put a business together, I got to employ people to work. So now, if I'm taking a European boy, the European girl, okay, I can employ them, give them minuscule wages, but I need them to do what? All right? Work in these areas where they're going to build it, where they're going to do what? Design the change. Mm. Okay, where they're going to help. I need what? Masons is going to do what? Put the ships together. Okay? Now, if I'm, a, if, if, if I'm captive, if I'm conquered, I'm not taking you that I conquered to do that. Who am I doing? I'm going to employ my own people to do it. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So now the employment for my people begin to do what? Increase. Right. Okay? And it's going to continue to increase, but at the same time, as an owner, as an owner, look how much economic resources that I'm bringing in. Not mm -hmm. only am I providing jobs, mm -hmm. no different than a landlord. If I'm the one who owns the houses, I'm providing, what? I'm providing what? Community housing for the what? The tenants. Right. Okay? So the same thing with how you have underdeveloped Africa, and this is where he talks about, man, I got so much stuff underlined in here. Um, you know, here, here's one section here. 
where it says, um, what was dominantly detrimental to African attempt to integrate their own economy was the fact that when Europeans became middlemen and local trade networks, they did not mainly, they did so mainly to facilitate the extraction of captives and thereby subordinate the whole economies to the European slave trade. In Upper Guinea and Kurt Verde Islands, the Portuguese and their mulatto descendants engaged in a large variety of exchanges involving cotton, dyes, coal, nuts, and European products. The purpose of it was to fill the holes of slave ships. In Congo and Angola, the same picture emerges. The salt, cowrie shells, and palm cloth that came in Portugal hands made up their shortage of trade goods and served to purchase captives of different parts of the coast deep in the interior. The element of subordination and dependence is crucial to an understanding of African underdeveloped today and its roots lies far back in the area of international trade. Okay? There's a, let me see if I can find it. means a capacity for self-sustaining growth. It means that an economy must register advances which in turn will promote further progress. The loss of industry and skill in Africa was extremely small if we measured it from the viewpoint of modern scientific achievement or even by standards of England in the late 18th century. 18th century. However, it must be borne in mind that to be held back at one stage means that it is impossible to go further on. One of the features associated with technological advances is a spirit of scientific... Well, that's not what I wanted to read. I wanted to... But there's a section in here. I just can't find it at the moment that I was looking for. Uh, let me see. Did I have it written down? Man, I... Wait, wait, wait. Here's something that we're we talking about the point, Okay. Columbite was another of the African minerals valuable for the creation of steel alloys. Being highly heat resistant, one of the principal uses was in making steel for jet engines. First of all, it was rapid development of the European industry and technology which caused Columbite to assume value. It had been discarded, it had been a discarded byproduct of tin mining in Nigeria up until 1952. Then once it utilized, it gave further stimulus to European technology and a very sophisticated sphere of airplane engines. Obviously, according to the International Division of Labor prevailing under colonialism, it was the American, Canadian, British, and French workers who had access to the skills involved in working with Columbite rather than the Nigerian worker who dug the ore out of the ground. For certain reasons, Columbia fell off sharply demand after a few years, but during at that time it had contributed toward making the European metallurgists even more proficient in experience. And that way it was helping to promote self-sustained growth and to produce the gap, which is evident in any comparison of the developed and underdeveloped countries. Copper too fell neatly into the category under discussion. Unskilled production by Africans were required to get the ore for export, followed by refinement in the European capitalist plant. Copper was Africa's chief mineral export. Being an excellent conductor of electricity, it became an indispensable part of the capitalist electrical industry. It is an essential component of generators, motors, electric locomotives, telephones, telegraph, light and power lines, motor cars, buildings, ammunitions, radio, refrigerators, and a host of other things. A technological era tends to be defined by the principal source of power. Today we speak of a nuclear age since the potential of nuclear power is shown to be immersed. The Industrial Revolution in Europe during the 18th and 19th century was the age of steam. and a parallel manner, the colonial epoch was the age of electricity. Therefore, the vital copper exports from the Congo, Northern Rhodesia, and other parts of Africa were contributing to the leading sector of European technology. Mm. From that strategic position, its multiply effect was innumerable and was incalculable benefit to the capitalist development. In that context of discussion of raw materials, special reference must again be made to the military. 
African minerals play a decisive role both with regard to conventional weapons and with regard to the breakthrough to atomic and nuclear weapons. It was, for, it was from the Belgian Congo during the Second World War that the USA began getting the uranium that was a prerequisite to making the first atomic bomb. In any case, by the end of the colonial period, industry and the war machine and the colonizing nation had become so entwined and inseparable that any contribution to one was a contribution to the other. Therefore, Africa's massive contribution to what initially appears as a peaceful pursuit, such as the making of copper wire and steel olives, ultimately took the shape of explosive devices, aircraft carriers, and so on. It was only after the European firearm reached a certain stage of effectiveness in the 19th century that it became possible for whites to colonize and dominate the whole world. <coughs> The international division of labor of the colonial period also ensured that there would be a growth of employment opportunities in Europe apart from the millions of white settlers expect, uh, who, who earned a living in and from Africa. Agricultural raw materials was processed in such a way as to form byproducts const, uh, uh, constituting industries in their own right. The number of jobs created in Europe and North America by the import of mineral ores from Africa, Asia, and Latin America can be seen from the massive employment roles of institutions such as steel workers, automobile factories, aluminum, aluminum plants, copper wire firms. Furthermore, those in turn stimulated the building industries, the transport industries, the munition industries, and so on. The mining that went on in Africa left holes in the ground, and the pattern of agricultural production left Africa soils impoverished. But in Europe, agriculture and mineral endpoints built a massive industrial complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Book, well worth having in your library. One of the best books that I read on how Europe underdeveloped Africa by Walter, Walter Rodney. All right? You know, bomb went off in his car. That's what killed him. You know. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. When was yeah. that? He wasn't. No. Wait, wait. 1980. Okay, so. Before bomb ended his life in the summer of 1980, Walter Rodney had created a powerful legacy. This pivotal work, how Europe underdeveloped Africa, already brought in a new perspective to the question of underdevelopment in Africa. Okay. Bomb. So they killed him. I I I I would not put it past that somebody that he was he was actually killed. Okay. Bomb went off in his car. A bomb. That's yes. clearly he was yeah. murdered. Yes, sir. But but why would they? What was the motivation behind that? Do you think that book? This, and then at that time, I think his his ideology was a Marxist. Okay, and you know, at that time, you he were, was a brother. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Walter Rodney, yeah. I think yeah. they thought he was going to run for president. Okay, and I think that's right. That's correct. They yeah. thought he was going to run. That's correct. I forgot about that. You're absolutely right. They thought he was going to run for president also. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, not so much probably the ideology of being a Marxist as a lot of other ones was too. Yeah. Richard Wright, etc. Look, no, Richard Wright was a communist. I'm sorry. Okay? But that's not much of a difference. Um, right. But, yeah, I think he's going for president. But a lot of these books that came out in the early 80s, these type of books here, yeah. you don't even hear about no more. And you don't even see the you know, see, No. No. no, you can get them on Amazon. Not all of them, well, but you can get them. No, you can, you can get them, but you don't hear much about people talking about them. Yeah. No, they don't. Okay? They don't. All promote, right? Promote the, you, get, you, the you, you know, because most people don't ask a question like, okay, after the uh, Civil War, when we, we, were, we went to these quote-unquote color schools and developed these skills, what happened that we couldn't get these jobs? You don't hear people asking these questions no more. Right. All right, it's almost unheard of. I mean, he asked it because now you take it back to a pond. What happened? Because what happened? Okay, and now you can bring this out at a particular time and show exactly what happened with our people. Okay, and mm -hmm. why we are where we are to this day. Mm -hmm. See, remember what's hurting us now is that okay, we don't. And, and you know, Dr. Clark mentioned it that okay, you don't even own a shoe manufacturer, make your own shoe, let alone your sock. Mm -hmm. So the fact that your ownership, okay. You you are more so consumers. But we said we right? were the ones that created and manufactured the whole country. But 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 
understood, but you didn't have the authorization or power to get them patent. Mm -hmm. All right. Or if they did, somebody else took credit. Right. My main point now is that if you want to get to see how Europe became so enriched and then the Americas, you got to do your homework across your disciplines because remember what period of time you want to talk about. And this is where these guys come in at mm -hmm. because they'll show you. All right. I mean, this, this, this young lady here who, who's Jewish herself, I mean, I think she did a very good job doing a what? A critical analysis of, okay, the fate of the Jews, okay, from within, from without, and her information she put together, all right? Mm -hmm. I never knew this book even existed until Dr. Mackey was talking about it, okay? But it's, it's a good, you know, critical book. Um, so my main point is that when you have self-identity, self-knowledge, self-realization, self-actualization, all right, it's more than just feeling good about yourselves. What it does, it allows you to see your greatness, Mm -hmm. And know that that DNA, that genetic blueprint is still within you. All right. So that, and at the same time, you have to have a love for this here because what we're doing now, you're not going to make no money off of them. You're not going to get you rich. You can forget that. <laughs> All right. Very few people is interested in our history, our culture. So it's not going to make you rich. You have, this has to come from within. You got to have a love for this right here, that heart mm -hmm. chakra. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you understand that our history, our nationality, our arts and sciences is world history, okay? Mm -hmm. And that whatever period that you want to talk about prior to the Holocaust or human trafficking, you were there. That's right. Now it gives you a different perspective. See, the key is, I don't want you to just say you were there. What did you do? How did you contribute? You follow me? Mm -hmm. Whether you're talking religion, whether you're talking the three major ones, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, your participation, your foundation, whether you're talking the arts and sciences, and at the same time, you don't have to belittle another nation. You don't have to belittle other nationalities. You don't have to do that because your history is so well-rounded, so well-rounded and great. You don't have to look down and call somebody else a cracker, okay, okay, mm -hmm. white, this, that. You don't have to do none of that, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not necessary. That just goes really your lack of ignorance, okay? Mm -hmm. You can have a dialogue, okay, and just... Ask simple questions and have somebody challenge you on your information. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because when you're confident mm -hmm. through self-knowledge and identity, self-realization, no matter who you're talking to, okay, you don't know about a subject matter you ask. But the key is, don't just take the word for granted. What is the etymology of that word? Because people just throw words at us. Mm -hmm. All right? Like I told you, word black. It's not a bad word. No. It just means... To burn, to shine. That's what the etymology of the word means. It comes from the Sanskrit word blague. Okay, mm -hmm. but it the black, B L A C K, it didn't come that word itself is a modern English word, roughly around what, sixteen hundred? Right. It's, okay, it just means to burn, to shine, to make bright. And then we also have to take and keep into consideration uh the that this is not our language. And so the and you talk about etymology. That's the etymology of the English. No, no, no. This, you got to be careful of that now. Okay. okay? Because this is where when you study etymology, and where, where do I have it at? Okay? This is important. Okay? Because I, I said it before. Let me see if I got it here with a frame of reference. Okay? This is important. <clears throat> now, while you are doing it, I got just one other topic that I wanted to cover, and you can do it any way you want to, and, and we'll finish, and that's the Arab invasion of Africa. Okay, so when you talk etymology, remember, when you look at the tree of European languages, what does it say? It says proto-endo-European. Proto means first. Mm -hmm. When Arias oh. went into mm -hmm. India, mm -hmm. That's where they got their language from because they, they, that's why I has here proto because they mixed, they, they, they had sounds, they didn't have root words. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about the that, European. Okay, what specific European? Okay, I'm, ta I'm talking about all the Europeans, so okay. that's why when you look from at the, the Ice Age. Okay, right, when you look at, they have no language, okay. they right. have sounds, so you have to right. be careful when we say, oh, it's all English, it's all European. No, it's not. Indo-European. Now, Indo is modern. 
-hmm. The word is Sendu. Mm -hmm. That's the original name of that era. And it was, it, it, Sendu means the people beyond the river, the Indus River, okay? Then it came to Hindu, that's Arabic. And then Indo, Indian, which is British. But when you look at the family tree of European languages, it comes from Sanskrit. Sanskrit means to put together. Right. Just like the word Aryan, mm -hmm. that's not European. It's Sanskrit, Arya, right. which means noble. When there are dramatic tribesmen over there from Iran, etc., and other places, all right, they conquered those people and they took on and called themselves Aryans or noble. But when you look at the family branches, that's why you have Indo and you have the European over here. But those words, those sounds, those words, okay, that's why I said black, you have to take it back to Sanskrit. Sanskrit means to put together. And Sanskrit is B-L-E-G, blague. Black, okay, is modern. Then and, 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 and you have to go with Old English, Middle English, okay? So you got to be careful because there is no really such thing as European languages, Language. all right? You have sounds, but... It's Indo first, Indo-European. Proto means proto. First it was Indo. When somebody conquered you, they took on your language. Then they did what? Change, all right? And that's where. That's why anytime you look at a dictionary, it gives you in the etymological brackets, see this word in appendix, all right? Then it gives you what it is in Old English, Germanic, French. Then it says in Sanskrit. So we stop at the entry level. First definition, second definition, but you got to go to the etymological brackets and see the origins of the words. Mm. So it's not European. Okay, we never go to the back of a dictionary. All right, right here. Okay, one of the best ones you have in your library, the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language. Okay, there it is. All right, now this is more of an updated one. The Indo-European family of languages. You know, don't say European. It says what? Indo. Indo. Now, who were the first people who occupied that Indo region? The Africans. Okay. Mm -hmm. Javinians, mm -hmm. pre-Javinians. Read Rogers. You show your pictures there. You follow me. Did others afterwards. But you can see Indo-European. The Indo-European family is a language of which English is one of the members. It descended from the prehistoric proto Meaning first, endo. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Terminology. Mm -hmm. Right. So you got to be careful. People think, oh, that's the white man's language. That's, that's your opinion. No, 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 no. You got to study the chart. Okay. Be that as it may. It may not be his language, but he's using it. And the inferences are relative to his belief system. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not dealing with belief because belief is based on opinion. I would ask, okay... Take it back to his origins. Mm -hmm. Now, when you take it back to his origins, they don't hide it. They give you a way to go back to the origins. Okay? How do we know? Let's look up one word before we do it the errors. Let's look up one. Okay? Just to show you. All right? Page 189. Okay? Page 189. Show you what I mean. Okay? 189. Uh, that's one word, okay? The word, and we can look up right here, the word B L A C K, okay? Black. Now, you, if you just go with the etymological, uh, you go with the first one, all of it belonging to a racial group. That's not the origins of it. You got to go right here to the etymological brackets, okay? Middle English, B L A K. From Old English, B L A C. Now it says, go to the etymological, go to the appendix to see the word B-H-E-L. Are you with me? An appendix. So now you go to B-H-E-L to see the root of that word, all right? And I'm going to page 2022 because I already got it down. 2022. 2022. And here it is. All right. Here's the root. B-H-E-L. You with me? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean? To shine, flash, burn, shift in white, okay? Dramatic, okay? Bleach. Old English, bleaking, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, extended root, bleed, 
Sanskrit, which means what? To shine, to flash, to burn. Okay, zero grade, zero grade form. B-H-L-O-G, burn, okay? And Greek, phlagian. You follow me? Because the P and F is interchangeable. There it is in Greek, phlagian, okay? Zero grade block, okay? So you follow me when you understand the etymology of a word. Now let's take another word and we're going to end there. The word consider. C-O-N-S-I-D-E-R, mm -hmm. desire, D-E-S-I-R-E, okay, disaster. Now when you think of the word consider, what comes to your mind when somebody say consider? They say, what does that mean? What do you think about? Think um, about. You give credence. You... Um, are fair and even. Now let's break the word down. Okay? Mm -hmm. C O N, con, together or with, right? Mm -hmm. That's what con. Now let's look at the word consider, page 392. We're going to end on this one. Show you what etymology does. Okay? 392. Now look at the word consider. When you go to the etymological brackets, okay? Put my glasses on. Yeah, when you go to the ed that. etymological brackets, okay? The word consider, right? Now, mm -hmm. these are the etymological brackets, okay? As you can see, the brackets, okay? Mm -hmm. Middle English, considering from Old French, Latin, coming in together, okay? Now, C O M C I D U S, cider, C I D R, what does it mean? Cider? No. What does the word sitter, S I D E R, okay? Latin is citus, but it means what? There it is right there. Like to the, consider the stars. The stars? That is correct. Because Latin, like sidereal. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sidereal means what? Stars. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the word consider originally yeah. means to consider the right. stars. Right. Okay? Right. So my main point is you see what etymology does. Now, mm -hmm. it never stopped meaning that. Mm -hmm. We just think, oh, I consider it. I mean, you're going to think about it. No, but when you look at its original, take it back to its original context, it means commies together with. Sitter, the Latin word is sidereus, okay, which means to consider the stars, meaning you're going to do what? Consult the stars. You're going to study the stars. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you see what the ancients did? Mm -hmm. Study mm -hmm. the stars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sidereal, okay, stars, okay? That's what, that's what etymology does for you. Mm -hmm. You don't start mm -hmm. at the entry level. You got to go to etymological bracket. So what happened, they gave you a way to take you back to the original root. So when someone says consider, isn't that the same thing as I will consider something with regard to your request? But the original meaning, the true meaning of the word consider means to consult the stars and never stop to meaning that. The connotative meaning, okay. the distorted meaning, may, I'll think about something. That's the distort, that's the connotative meaning, meaning you're implying something else. But the denotative, denotative means what is note, it's mark, what, what does it signify? What is its reference point? But its reference point is the stars. To consider in a good way, in a realistic way, in a reaching way, given all the benefit of the doubt. No, you can't. Well, but remember, when you deal with the etymology of the word, that's the true. word itself, Means it broke it down. Sidereal or sidereus means what? Stars. Okay. Con means together or with, meaning I'm going to do what? I'm going to do something, okay? Consult or do something with the what? Stars. stars. That's the true meaning. Yeah. That's what I said about etymology. Etymology means study of. Etymology is the true origins mm -hmm. and meaning of a word. Syntax is how words are constructed or put together over a period of time. But etymology deals with the true origins and meaning of the word. So you take the word church. We always tell church denotes what? Circle. Mm -hmm. But circle denotes what? Earth. The zodiac. Oh, zodiac. Okay? Yeah. okay? Because the zodiac is what? Mm -hmm. An arc, a circle, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So somebody say to me, I go to church. I say, yeah, I consult the stars. The spiritual. Okay? You're doing the same thing because mm -hmm. what do you see in most churches when you go to the front of the building? A circle. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Some of your old churches, you see animals. Right. Okay? How many religious places you go to where you don't see some type of animals involved? Right. Okay? Pictures I'm talking about. Yeah. All right? Okay. Then a circle also denotes the what? The sun. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Now, you're not going to hear most of that because most people don't get into the architect of the buildings. All right, and study the history behind it. Mm -hmm. 
But that's what etymology does for you. Okay, it takes you back to the true origins and meaning of a word. Just like we talked about the word slave. You know, you heard me say a lot, human trafficking, Holocaust and human trafficking, because slave originally denote the what? Slovian people. All right, matter of fact, here it is for you. Okay, this, okay, that's where the word came from. Slavic. Okay, Slavic. In the Balkan states, okay, Slavic. Okay. That's and what they it was. Their okay. They were Eastern Europeans. To right. Our they were, social conditioning they were, and our Well definitions. remember they were they were conquered by was it the Russians? I can't remember. They were conquered and then they were made servants. Okay, mm -hmm. but the word slave, its root is Slavic. Right. So, so I don't say slaves, I say what? Human trafficking. The Holocaust of human trafficking because slave or Slavic deals with a what? Eastern European people. To me. $152. Okay? okay, but you gotta know the law. Okay? You gotta know the law. If you don't know the law, okay, how you gonna how you gonna know what certain words? Since words mean something different in law. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like the word I told you before, the word like residence. It's Latin, okay? it's that is correct. Language. Residence, yeah. I told you. Yeah. Okay. In law, residence means okay, a thing to be identified. Rust means a thing. Identify, all right? Mm -hmm. Same with minority. When you deal with the word minority. Minority in law means, okay, it doesn't mean numbers, okay, it means somebody who's below the age of 18, okay, you can't think for yourself, okay, can't think of the co correct word, it means, um, well, a minor, numbers. a minor, it okay, yeah. it's a minor, mm -hmm. okay, so if I'm calling myself a minority, that means, okay, you're still a minor, that you need legal advice, if I'm saying, hey, we're people of color, you're saying that you're artificial because in law the word color means to hide mm -hmm. the appearance of that which is real, but it's not really real when you know law. Mm -hmm. So I never say, oh, we're people of color because, again, if you know law, that's what it means in legal sense. It's not a bad word. It's just that you have to know terminology. So when you study, you have your dictionary here. You have your law dictionary, okay? Now, most people's houses, this is what you only want to see. Where's it at? I got it right oh, here. Oh, that other you dictionary. Know you yeah, know I know what I'm talking about. Can. Okay. Yeah. Webster's or something okay. like that. Okay. No, the, uh, you want to see most of our people's homes. Maybe a dictionary, but you're definitely going to see this. Yeah. Okay? Right. Nothing wrong with it, but. No, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta compliment. You know, you gotta have the disciplines. Okay, you gotta be able to cross reference. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but you see the sandwich we did yesterday, the sun, the circle. Mm -hmm. Okay, the bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you seen it on the vase upstairs with mm -hmm. the falcon. Mm -hmm. Same profile. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. same profile. That's why I said, uh, uh, I'm not gonna dismiss it. I'm gonna show you the origins because I know this side of it, and I know the other side. Mm -hmm. I know the African blueprint. Okay, and I know the distorted blueprint. So now I can talk about it. See, and that's what Dr. Clark said. You got to know Western or European history, and then you got to know your history. Okay? Right. Got to know yeah. both. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. History. All right. Okay? The story. All right? The story. But you see what I mean when I said you, and I'm going to end on that, it's Indo-European. Mm -hmm. Because when... when when they went over there, those tribes and stuff went into India, okay, or Sindhu, they conquered at the same time. Then they begin to do what? Take their language, all right, their sounds, and then shift it. It's called reconstruction, or re mm. reconstructed the language. Mm -hmm. But the European mm -hmm. tells you that by saying proto, meaning first, endo, in which English is a branch of that. Mm -hmm. But it's not a language, it's a branch, because remember, Root words. You see how I took you back to the root word of mm -hmm. black? Mm -hmm. Blague. Okay, Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. All right. And B-H-E-L, the Indo-European, what it is in dramatic. Mm -hmm. What it is, because English is a what? Dramatic language. Here it is right here. Okay, when you look at dramatic, look where English fall at. You got, here's dramatic, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got English right here. You got low, okay, you got, where's English at? Just had it. Um, got my glasses move, on. Yeah, just move to the east a little. Um... Yeah. I don't have my... Oh, right here. Yeah. Here mm -hmm. it is right here. Northern Dramatic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Middle English right here. And oh. Old English. You see this? His Dramatic. Mm -hmm. And then there's Middle English right there. So you know what? It's a Dramatic language. Mm -hmm. 
All right? It's a dramatic. Now, meaning Latin, German? It's German. German. That's correct. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Latin, on the Latin, you have what? Portuguese, Spanish, okay, French. That's Latin. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But English doesn't fall under the Latin. It falls under what? Dramatic. Mm -hmm. You have Old English, Middle English, and then Low English. Okay? So that's how, when you read the family of charts, but no, that's not European. It's Indo first. Mm -hmm. Europeans came and conquered and then reconstructed it, okay? And made sounds and then made other what? Letters. It just reconstructed. Just reconstructed. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. But most of the time, we don't go in the back of this to see this. So you hear us, the white man's language. Okay, you speak in English. You speak in what? No, 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 no. It's Sanskrit. Now, if you understand your history and you understand the Indus Valley, Indus Kush or Sindhu, you can see some of the earliest people in J. Rogers' section race, present day. Okay, these people ain't coming through the Holocaust of human trafficking. They were there first. Their ancestors were there first. Now you begin to see, okay, there's no such thing as European languages. They're branches of what? Sanskrit. Mm. That's my point. Last piece we want to discuss <laughs> is the Arab invasion of Africa. What specifically do you... Yeah, let me just miss some more. Uh, Minister Brown, there's a book um, that was called by John D. Graff Johnson, African Glory. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of that book? African Glory, yes. Okay. I haven't read it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, it, it's, it's a very good book because he... He deals with the first part of the Arab invasion of North Africa and one of the things I found interesting was that one of the African warriors, a woman by the name of Katrina, she held off the Arabs for quite a while, mm -hmm. okay, before they finally defeated her, and okay, this, is where? And this was in, in the northern part of Africa, I can't remember what particular section, but when the Arabs came over there, all right, to conquer that area, this was a female. And I can't remember, I got the book upstairs. I thought I brought it down, but I don't think I did. It's called, when, uh, it's called African Glory. And he speaks of her and, t and, and talks about her. The other thing with um, the, the Arabs is one of the things that the reason why the Arabs were able to push and dominate as fast as they did, okay, with Islam, okay, because it wasn't so much the weaponry, because what happened was, remember we talked about it somewhat yesterday, the fall of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 just let me set this up. Indeed. I'm looking at, because all of North Africa at one point was African. That's correct. Black Africans. Uh, but if you look at North Africa now, and I'm talking about Egypt, I'm talking about Libya, Algeria, all across North Africa, all the way over to Morocco, is all Arabs. And the reason for that is because once they conquered that area, okay, remember, once they conquered that, it's like certain other areas that we were at before, they pretty much moved us out and we never replenished those areas with what? Other African people. We were pushed further what? South. How did okay. they do that? What, well, what well, periods well, 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 you had a combination of both, okay? When, when the Arabs took over North Africa, this is even before um, you had the Moors going into Spain. Okay, the Arabs, when they finally conquered Egypt, North Africa, they settled there, all right? They also did what? Mixed with the women. They brought in, a, 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 they, they brought in what? Okay, more Arabs, and then at the same time, all right, they pushed the Africans further south. So, from about the early, what, 8th, ninth century, I said, mm -hmm. or, or later than that, they controlled quite a bit of, excuse me one second, please, tell us. What you find when, when the Arabs finally came into North Africa, okay, remember, you got to remember what happened even before the, before the Arabs came in. What happened? We lost quite a bit of North Africa even before the Arabs came in because, remember, who came in? Prior to the Arabs invading Africa and pushed a lot of us further south, who came before the Arabs? You had the Romans, 
Mm-hmm. You conquered North Africa. You follow me now. Mm-hmm. You had the, so now, remember, the Greeks, you're Romans. lightening up. You had the Greeks. Mm-hmm. You, okay? you had the Macedonian Greeks. You had the Ptolemies. You had the Persians. So really, you can look right really at the time when 525 B, 3, 525 B.C. when the Persians came in and 332 B.C. when the Greeks came in, we already start losing a good percentage of Africa back then. Mm-hmm. Because remember, you kept coming in with what? From Western Asia, the Greeks. Then when the Greeks finally lost power, who came and dominated North Africa then? The, the Romans. Romans. All right? Europeans. Mm-hmm. Now, once the Romans lost North Africa, remember, once they conquered... Carthage, they control all of that. But now, what happened? They expanded their empire so much and taxed the people that they couldn't keep up with it. So now, you had a lot of what internal structure and breakdown within Rome. So now, what happens next? It made it easier for who? The Arabs to come along because when the Vault, Goths, Visigoths went into Rome, conquered that, you had to fall pretty much in what? Rome, almost the Dark Ages. Now, the Arabs, now at the same time, the Arabs under Prophet Muhammad mm-hmm. coming in with a new wave, new force, all right? So now we already lost the bulk of North Africa. was already old and gray. So when the Arabs came in, really, even before you talk about Africans, who, that part of Africa, even before the Arabs came in, how much did we control by then? Yes, that's correct. You follow me? Mm-hmm. So we lost that way before. The, the, in other words, it was set up, it was set in motion before the even Arabs came on the scene. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, how long did the Romans stay there? How long did the Greeks control North Africa? Now, right. you remember, you still have other ethnic people coming in from Western Asia. Mm-hmm. Okay, so remember what happens when we got pushed further what? South. South. Okay, because mm-hmm. remember, m- most of those nations knew very little about the southern part of Africa. They stopped right around the word first, second cataract. You with me? Mm-hmm. But they never penetrated into the interior of Africa. Okay, in a deeper part of, of, of Zimbabwe and in the Congo, that didn't happen to what? The Europeans, the English in them started penetrating. Because number one, the Arabs didn't have what? They didn't have the ships. Okay? They didn't have the manpower to go there. They didn't even know much about that. Mm-hmm. So they stopped what North Africa because their whole first of all, the main thing they did was what? Outside of North Africa and Arabia, they were more concerned with what? The Iberian Peninsula, mm-hmm. Spain, mm-hmm. Portugal, you follow me? Mm-hmm. Trading in the Indian Ocean. That's where they started at, okay? Now, what happens where they start being able to go deeper into inner Africa is when what? Spain and Portugal start building better ships. They start trading with the Arabs. Remember, because the Arabs are doing what? They were holding Europeans ransom, or the, the Moors. I shouldn't just say Arabs. The Moors, when they lost power, they controlled the seas. So now when Europe was trading with them, okay, they would conquer, capture the people, and hold them for ransom in North Africa. Mm-hmm. And then the Europeans had to what? Pay tributes. Do you know George Washington, okay, was one of the ones, I mean, these early, they were paying almost a million dollars in annual tributes to the, to, to, to the, to the Moroccan government. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm the Catholic Church, the Knights of Malta, to get their people back, because they were conquering them. They were pirates. They were conquering them. Mm-hmm. Their pirates belonged to a, 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 a nation, which was Morocco. Mm-hmm. All right? So now, at the same time, remember, they control all that. Even Africans had already lost power there. Okay? Mm-hmm. They were pushed further. Now, once the Portuguese and Spanish, okay, especially Portugal, start coming into Northern Africa and trade, okay, you have petty kings, but you also have Arabs involved as the middlemen. You mm-hmm. follow me? Mm-hmm. They were the middlemen who set everything up. Then once they had it set up, it made it easy for the Portugals to do what? Penetrate. Because remember, they had the ships now. Right. Okay? The gunpowder was already invented. The weaponry was already invented. So it made them easier to do it. So now what happened was, what did the Arabs do? They didn't stop there also. They start now penetrating further what? Into the southern part of Africa. Yeah. Okay? Okay? Mm-hmm. And that's what happens. So by the time we start even hearing about this, the 18th century, the Arabs, the, remember, and not just the Arabs, the Mamluk Turks, okay? Mm-hmm. The Ottoman Turks. All mm-hmm. of them were already what? In North Africa, mm-hmm. okay? So they made, so what happened? They made them what? Enochs, or what do you call slaves, mm-hmm. okay? They also took away their manhood and bastardized them. Then they what? Made it with our woman, because now if I made with your woman, 
I'm part what of the society now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm part of that clan. So now, with the result that they didn't have no sentimental attachment to the Africans, they used them as slave labor also to do what? Build up their economy. Mm -hmm. and, and until this day, how long did slave trafficking, even, you, you even hear about slave trafficking in the early part of the 20th century when what? The, uh, 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 who King was Leopold. you? Okay, and, and yes, okay. Well, Arabs still conquering mm -hmm. all right, those Africans and making them as slaves over there mm -hmm. in the northern part of Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay, was it UNESCO? Somebody had to get involved. I can't remember who it was that got involved with that. Okay, mm -hmm. but that was still going on in the 20th century. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the asset outside of if you were a devout Muslim, you follow Islam. Okay, you went on, did your prayers, etc. You know, and that's not to say all Arabs were bad. We, you, know, you never generally say all Arabs were bad, but you're talking about in terms of control, in terms of that land. That land never belonged to them. All right, the people you see over there now, all right, they benefited off of what their forefathers and foremothers. Okay, mm -hmm. but it didn't start with them. It made it easier for them to come because we lost it when we lost when, when the Greeks and Persians invaded us. Okay, we look, remember the last time we controlled. Most of that is when Pianchi, okay, Kushite came and what captured back Pianchi and who else was it? Taharka mm -hmm. captured it back. After that, that was it. Okay, when the Greeks came in, the Macedonian Greeks, the Ptolemies, mm -hmm. the Romans, North Africa was already lost. You had bits and pieces of us there, but for the most part, we lost most of that North Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay? So a lot of those priests, they went what? Further south, went to other places. So it made it easier, okay, for the Arabs to come in because Rome had already fell. It's easy for them to just come on in and wipe them right on out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Constantinople, okay? Who was it? The Turks that took that over? Okay? Mm -hmm. So that was all set up for the Arabs in the, in the early 18th, 19th century. Mm -hmm. Then they became in partnership with the Europeans and did what? So the Africans. Mm -hmm. There was no sentimental attachment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same religion, though. Pardon me? same religion in the sense that they were spreading Islam and and converting Africans and then using the children of that mixture uh, to conquer other Africans. That is correct. Because now you don't have a sentiment attached because now I'm tracing my line of descent through the what? Father, Father. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it made it look like Africans capturing Africans and selling them into slavery. Well, you know what? Remember, a lot of them, you had a choice, a choice that you, wish you, that you wish you didn't have to make. Either you participate or you get bumped off. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or you get enslaved. Mm -hmm. So you had a choice. Okay? That you wish you didn't have to make. You, 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 some of them, because remember, you had, you had a lot of Africans who did fight now. Okay? Mm -hmm. But you remember, if I got powerful weapons, I got better ships, I got better weaponry. My manpower better than you, eventually, how long is it going to last? Because remember, Africa was already weak because you already had the Greeks in there. All right, how long did they stay in Egypt when, when they conquered, conquered North Africa? All right, then you, then you had another wave of Europeans who came in with what? The Romans. Mm -hmm. Persians was there. Assyrians was there. The Arabs were Johnny come ladies. By the time they came, everything was already messed up. Everything, mm -hmm. okay? Rome, the, the Gauls was there. You had the, what, the Dark Ages in Europe, so it made it easy for the Arabs to come in and what? Do what they had to do. And they came with gunpowder. And they came with force and gunpowder, and they came to do what? Conquer. Now, once I conquer you, it becomes mine. Mm. The conqueror always get the spoils. You can't get around that. Mm -hmm. They were no different than the European mercenary or the European okay, colonists that came in to do what? All right? Conquer. Now, within Islam, we already know. Okay, there were many Africans who went into the early making of Islam because we talked about them. Al Jahez, Zari. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know. Now the Arabs don't give them credit for it. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't hear anything about Al Jahez. You don't hear anything about Zari. You don't hear anything about Kufu the Magnificent. You don't hear anything about Anton. And these were the early makers of Islam during the what, 7th, 8th, and 9th century. You follow me? Mm -hmm. I, I read to you about Zari yesterday. Look what right. he contributed to Europe alone. One man. Mm -hmm. Now, how often do you hear about that from any Arab sources? Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay? You read about that in a magazine called what? Renaissance. 
Last time I heard about something that was in depth, and you probably didn't know because you probably didn't connect the name, was the Golden Age of the Moors because Van Sertima, somebody article mentioned it. I think it's um Jose. What's his name? Jose. Pientes Bay, Jose, I Jose Pimento. Pimento Bay, right. Mm -hmm. All right. I think he mentions Zari. Yes. But you, but you see with that Renaissance magazine, how they break that down with the fashions. Mm -hmm. Now, who would even think that here it is who revolutionized the whole culture of Europe? One man changed your seasons when you're going to wear your clothes, invented your first toothpaste. One man. You talking about a Renaissance man? Mm -hmm. Start your food off with desserts. Then your meats, and then you end it with your what? Start your food off with soups. Soups, I mean. Mm -hmm. Soups. Then your main course, and then you ended up with what? Dessert. Dessert. Changing it to tablecloths, okay? Cutting your hair in bangs. Who would think that... Excuse me one second. Put that on hold. Al-Jahez is one of the greatest uh, satires of that day. That's my point. That, and, and So I look at both sides. We know what the Arabs did, Okay. But those Africans who did accept Islam, all right, look what they did. But as you hear anywhere where those Zarib and all of them committed a genocide on their own people? No, they didn't. Okay. They didn't. All right. They accepted Islam. Okay. But they knew what to change and what not to change. Okay. Now you start getting... When you start getting closer to the 14th, 15th century, where now you're further removed from your traditional African way of life, now you get the Moroccan emperor like who? Bilal Ibn Il Mansur, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a Moroccan nationalist, a Moor, who does what? Look like you and I, gotta take the bitter with the sweet, committing a what? Culture genocide on their brothers and what? The Sangha. Oh, yeah. Okay? Right. But you see the difference now between those from the 7th, 8th, and 9th century mm -hmm. versus later on? Mm -hmm. Okay? You were Muslim. You accepted Islam. But at the same time, those same brothers and sisters who were Muslims who accepted Islam and that Sangha Empire, you destroyed it and you used what? European mercenary as well as European ammunition from Queen Elizabeth, daughter Henry VIII, to conquer those people and then brought up in the exile the greatest scholar of that day, Ahmed Baba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where's your allegiance at? Mm -hmm. I wish to unify Islam. Ahmed Baba asked him, why don't you start with the Turks? Okay? They don't practice. They don't do X, Y, and Z. Couldn't ask for them. So the whole thing was what? He wanted control. He wanted power. Was it that you wanted to unify Islam? Because remember, you asked the Sangha to do what? Give up your area, give up your land. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming to, you know, combine with Morocco. We, they, we're, we're good where we at, we're cool. And they were still devout Muslims. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. reason did you have to go down there and conquer their land? They won't bother you. Because remember, they already lost power in Spain. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Arabs retreated back to what? Their home base. At that time, what? North Africa. Okay? Remember, mm -hmm. Felix the Boy says what? A lot of the Arabs came down into the University of San Quentin, uh, applied for teaching positions right. at the University of San Quentin, Timbuktu, they weren't qualified for. Right. So remember, they retreated back in North Africa. Where else did you have to go after you lost power? Okay? Because you know, you had, yeah, mm -hmm. you had Arabs who were also in the Iberian Peninsula. It just wasn't us there. Okay? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. were the Moors, but you also had the Arabs there too. Okay? You had that partnership. But when it went bad and saw when they lost it, it went bad. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Because the same person, Bo Abdil, also sent for what? Help in North Africa. When he was fighting Ferdinand and Isabella, and they ignored him and would not send him help. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, their position was, we didn't like you negotiating back and forth. Well, he had no choice. Okay? He was trying to, diplomat, he was trying to use diplomacy. He had no choice. But you didn't give him the manpower he needed to what? Defeat Isabella. More than one occasion he wrote back to North Africa for help. Didn't honor his request. Mm. Mm. So many of those same Arabs today, they don't have a sentimental attachment to African, African women. Okay? This thing is about what? Wealth, 
power and control. And control. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these same Arabs in our communities today, they don't even hire African people. No. And they're still exploiting your daughters and young girls that go in these stores. They're exploiting them today. Yeah. Well, you know that 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 has two uh, sides to it because. Um, you see a lot of young men go in there and condole with these Arabs, mm -hmm. black men, African men, and insult black women. And they sit there and they laugh and they talk about who they lay. They're talking to these Arabs who would not bring any of their women in their neighborhood. You will never see an Arab women, woman who is in any way affiliated with any of those Arab men. In their stores, the black man will never set eyes on his wife, in other words. Mm -hmm. You don't see them. And I have witnessed on many occasions black men going, talking about the women and when they come in the store and they're laughing. And he thinks that those Arab men are his friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you talk about...
that so-called concept of a G-O-D, connotatively speaking, because we know the word just means to invoke. All right, mm -hmm. or that, that oneness at one time, that creative force that brought the world or manifested, they seen it as feminine first. Now you can understand why your traditional African societies were all first what? Trace their line of descent to what? Matrilineal. Mm -hmm. The mother. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And the comedians kept that or preserved it in their what? Medu nature. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And then as they continue to progress and study, okay, now they be seen the what? You begin to see the balance in the pictorial, right? Right. The, 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 what I call symbolic iconography. To express it more, they just did what? Personified it in the what? Human form. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you can begin to see later on when others came along with the Christian concept. You follow me? Mm -hmm. and, and, and then what? You can see it in the what? KJV, the Holy Bible, the Greeks came along, the Romans, others came along. Because remember, the priests went out and taught others who were ready for this information. Mm -hmm. But the main point you don't forget is they see themselves as part of the universe. They didn't separate the universe from themselves. They seen themselves as part of nature. They right. were one within nature. Mm -hmm. So they understood the universal laws of nature, knowing that you cannot change universal law. You cannot change universal nature. So they built a whole society, a whole temple complex structure around what? The laws of the universe. Mm -hmm. Now, if, um, if a great year is 25,000 years or closer to 26,000 years. And, um, and the ancient committed people understood the great year. They could only understand the great year and the, uh, 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 and all that was in the movement of the universe as unless they had sit down and observe uh, it happening more than one time, which means then when I put when I say that Egyptian civilization is thousands of years old, at least twenty five thousand, or you probably got to say at least fifty thousand, because they would have had had to watch that procession at least once or twice. So how, how would you, uh, how would you date, or uh, how old would you say Egyptian civilization probably? You know, to be honest with you, I have no idea when, when the Chameleons come on the scene, okay, when we even get a glimpse of their history, they were already at a certain level. Mm-hmm. We know Herodotus, who came late, said that they recorded four great years. You know, great years based off of what the processions of the equinox. Precision of, precession of the equinox, the earth wobble, tilts like a spinning top, etc. And remember, they said they recorded four great years. So that's 100,000 years. Okay. And you know they did because here are the fourth. Okay. Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo, Taurus. You follow me? Yeah. All right. But remember now. They're able to see this through what? What they call the crucifixion of the earth through the what? Galactic and ecliptic. Mm. Galactic, because they were studying this. Remember we talked about yesterday the galactic clause and the tropical cross. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And that's what this is telling you here. <clears throat> all right? Since we, we talked about that, the galactic alignment is the alignment of the December solstice sun when the galactic, with the galactic equator. The alignment occurs as a result of the precession of the equinox. Precession is caused by the earth wobbling very slowly on its axis and shift the position of the equinox and solstice one degree every 71.5 years. All right. Now you see it now. Now the galactic cross. What do you see that at? St. Peter's and Paul Square, Rome. Look at it. Here's it right here. That's the galactic cross. You follow me? Mm -hmm. You see that there? Mm -hmm. That's the galactic cross right there. Here it is here. You see the galactic, right? And he cooked and he cooked it, okay? Galactic and it, excuse me, galactic and a tropical. Tropical, mm -hmm. galactic. You follow me? Mm hmm Now you see why I have this here. Because now you can see why I have this here. St. Peter's and Paul Square. I didn't hit it just because of aesthetics. You see an African symbol in the middle, 
Comedian symbol, and then you see what? Right here, you see the tropical cross, and you see the what? Galactic cross. You see it here in this design? Mm hmm Okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right? That's the purpose of me having this here, because you can see African symbolism now, in European architecture. According to the work of Walter Williams, um, it was African architects and African builders who brought about the construction of, of uh, St. Peter's. Is that St. Peter's? Yes, yes, St. Peter's uh, Square, yeah. Uh, the Basilica of St. Peter's Square. He said that, that because it was the Africans who conceived um, Osirapis, which later becomes Jesus the Christ. But Africans, the African priesthood, uh, the male kind of copy the Egyptians that brought that concept into being and they uh, ceremoniously bestowed the um, the rituals on Ptolemy I Lagi uh, to make him a god and they took the um, attributes of uh, Serapis uh, and uh, the bull, uh, Apus, uh, and ceremoniously brought about Osirapis, which later on uh, in these councils ultimately comes Jesus. But during that time, it, the, the uh, teaching um, staff of, of all of this was male kite Coptic Egyptians, black folk, and that they built the first Christian church the Sophia Hagia, and they built also St. Peter's. Have you read anything, uh, come um, across any I don't have them? enough information in reference to uh, them actually constructing or participated in the architectural building of St. Peter's Square. All right, I'm familiar with three African popes and the Coptic Church, um, uh, the Metacotica, but in terms of me having enough information to substantiate that, I don't, I don't have that. So I, 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 I really can't say for sure if, in fact, they participated in that. We do know that when Rome conquered ancient Egypt, that at the same time, the Roman soldiers took a lot of their culture, took, took their, their ways of life, okay, the whole adoration around Osana said and the Madonna and Child, we know the Roman soldiers took that to the other lands that they conquered. Mm -hmm. So we know that's how that so-called quote unquote Madonna and Child, the black Madonna and Child, got into okay, Christian Europe or Catholic Europe, Spain, Portugal, France, uh, Ireland, etc. Because the Roman soldiers, when they came and conquered those people, they took that what? That way of life, that religion, those statues, etc., over to those countries. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. definitely know, all right, that that played a major part too, their way of life, their tradition, etc. But in terms of just building a cathedral, I'm not sure. But we know that somebody had to, those architects in Rome, they had to know something because you see the design here. Okay, and most people don't even see this. They pay attention to just the basilica. They pay attention to the saints, the statues, but they don't look at the what? Okay, the galactic and the... Um, the galactic and the, uh, the, the tropical cross and the galactic cross. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Most people won't even see that when they look at this here. Okay? You can see it here in this picture. That's why I have it up here. Here, but you can see it here. Okay? Galactic and then a tropical, and then you can see it here. Tropical, galactic. Now, why is that design in that architect? So those masons just wasn't building for the sake of just building a, a building. They were encoding what? Right. What they seen right. above in the universe. You follow me? They crypted it. They encoded it in there. Mm -hmm. Now the average, because you know, so obviously they had to be the mason, stone masons. Mm -hmm. All right. And they had to have some knowledge of doing what? Observing other peoples. Remember that the, the Romans had the advantage because what? They were Johnny come lady. So they were able to do what? Cop off, copy off of the who? Greeks. Mm -hmm. Then the Greeks were Johnny come ladies because they were able to copy off of what? The, the Nile Vibes, the right. Africans, okay? The Comedians, mm -hmm. okay? The, the Sethians, etc. Okay, they were able to copy. So now that, oh, that information was just passed on. Mm -hmm. All right, some of them were initiated. Okay, 
many on once, but some were initiated, some had a, a, a certain amount of us. Because remember, when Alexander conquered Kemet, they had access to the libraries. Mm -hmm. So they had all the information, and they had the priests who they forced to what? Translate into what? Greek? Right. And the Greek translated into Latin. You follow me? Mm -hmm. All right. Then you had the other what? People on the outside who had their own way of life who lived by themselves, such as who? The Essenes, mm -hmm. the Nazarenes, the Gnostics. You follow me? Now you begin to see. Now remember, all these took bits and pieces because remember, Kemet sent their priests out throughout different nations. And those right. who were ready, they were taught. Mm -hmm. Let alone all the colonies that Kemetians. The, the other nations who were under their colonies, all right, so they just passed that information on for those who were ready, okay, those who were ready to seek the knowledge and were initiated. So that's how a lot of that got to these other nations. But that's interesting because it says that the African did not, not try to spread and teach the uh, higher knowledge. See, they tried to enlighten humanity. One of the reasons why everybody came into the Nevada because what is the main thing that the Comedians had? They had an abundance of what? Food. 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 A lot of other places did not have food. It was famine. Now, in order to have abundance of food, in order to grow your crops, okay, what is the main thing you had to do? You had to develop a calendar, okay? And that calendar was based off of what? Studying astronomy. And astrology. That's the purpose mm -hmm. of that calendar, to feed mm -hmm. yourselves. Mm -hmm. Here's the main thing that we can't get away from. And this is why the U.S. is such control now, because they control the food supply. Main thing here. See this? This is Kemet. Okay, see how thick this is? Yeah. This stuff over the years. All right, here's the main thing that we can't forget. What does it say? The earliest food producers, and let me read this. Okay? Exciting new fun. This is by Fred Werdorf and... Ramald Sheed, I believe it's called. Okay, I think it was an archaeology magazine. Exciting new finds in the arid zones of Africa are challenging some of the most cherished assumptions about the birth of agriculture. For over 30 years, the Middle East has been regarded as the cradle of human civilization, and the age of success of domesticating plants and animals has stood approximately 10,000 to 9,000 years ago. While scholars have differed as to exactly where the first domestication involved, or what exact climate and demographic pressure prompted the first venture into controlled food production, there has been widespread agreement that the process began from the end of the last glacial some 10,000 years ago. The consensus is that most have occurred in areas where the wild relatives of the first known domesticated plants, wheat and barley, grow today. The domestication of animals is thought to have begun in the Middle East as well, in the same general era as domesticated plants about the same time. Now listen to me carefully. Now, however, serious evidence has been found which suggests that people began controlling food production significantly earlier than was previously believed and in an area at first seemed highly unlikely, that region is Africa and the evidence consists of food remains and artifacts assembled that bolted together. Just how the remaining mills standing along the raceway can be reserved in a central problem facing the great falls of historic districts. All right, and then it just goes on to explain uh, where to place that. And it's basically saying here that, okay, and I'll just read this right quick. Excavators, including the authors, have come upon grinding stones and other harvesting implements in context that suggest the earliest cultivation of grains in the Nile Valley. The Egyptian site had been dated from 17,000 to 18,000 years ago. One of them even produced the remains of charred wheat and barley grains, plants which have never been native to that region. Although positive identification of these grains and domestication is simply not possible, they nonetheless remain candidates for the oldest known humidity nurtured grain in the world. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I want to switch up a little bit. Uh, is the... When after the Civil War, African people made greater progress in terms of teaching 
themselves how to read, um, organizing their communities because uh, uh, we became a self-sufficient people. You didn't have just one. What the the, uh, uh, the the community that was destroyed by bombs. You talk about Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. We had hundreds of Black Wall Streets, uh, and you were just talking about. You were just reading from that book uh, that deals with uh, the Jews. Um, Africans had all of the skills in terms of brick masonry, uh, building, etc. Uh, and they, uh, the unions are what really, and you touch on that, uh, destroyed African, um, not so much control, but their involvement in the building trades and their dominance of the building trade. Can you go into that, perhaps? Well, they wasn't able to exercise their skills, the only jobs that they were able to do, and that's what this book, which is well worth reading, called The um, Economic Racism, okay, Roots of Black Inequality. Um, and what's nice about this, it shows that basically the jobs that you had, there were skilled jobs, you only got the jobs that others didn't want to do that they considered dirty. He told you about the coal. Mm -hmm. All right. Any jobs was considered dirty, but then when you had diesel fuel, now those immigrants they bought in, okay, to take those jobs. So what happened now? Those skilled workers who were skilled in the mace, uh, skilled masons who had it, they were still pushed behind. All right. You didn't control the unions, and that's what this whole book here is about. And and I got this book when I was at Temple University in 1980. Matter of mm. fact, the one who, who, who referred, who recommended this book when I had her class was Sonia Sanchez. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. When she taught at Temple, and right. she was in the African American Studies department. And I found this book well, and and it's a book you don't even hear about, but it, it's a book where he really breaks down exactly what we're talking about, what curtail or what stop the progress, because mm -hmm. with the development of the unions. Okay, including the AFL, CIO, all of them. Did I say that right? AFL, CIO. CIO. Mm -hmm. Okay, none of them wanted to include our people. We were exclusive. Mm -hmm. All right. Jobs for even to the point where you were just a porter. That was probably the most mediocre job that you can have back then. But that was late before you got that. But that's what stopped our progress. All right, because we couldn't find the work. We didn't control the industries. We didn't control the unions, all right? The unions were predominantly what? All well, European, the okay? Who created the unions. So what happened is that they excluded us, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why it's called the economics of racism because they use... Hold that up again. They use what? Economics as a way of saying, hey, if I can control the economics, if I can control your economy, that's if I control... Right. Guess what? That just what, It's economic what? Holocaust, economic slavery. Because if I can control that, then you can't feed yourself. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. see why... The Africans, okay, Comedians, the Hessians, Setians, misnomer ancient Egyptians, Nubians, why they were self-sufficient? Because they controlled what? Their food. Mm -hmm. They controlled their economy, all right? And everybody came there. That's what's happening even now today, all right? If I control you, if I control how much money you're going to bring in every week, then I can control where you're going to live at. Mm -hmm. I can control, okay, the information that's going to be put on TV, all right? I can control the information that's going to be read, all right? That's the importance of being in control. And that's exactly what happened during that particular time. And that's what this book deals with, just what the unions did, all right? And I was young. I couldn't have been no more than maybe 20. 24, 25 when I read this. Mm -hmm. But it opened my eyes up because that was my first glimpse of, wow, look what the unions did that was being organized here. They, they didn't have no sentimental attachment for our people. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't get the jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay? This thing about joining unions now, that's, that's recent. Okay? So with the immigrants coming in, all right, they were the ones who were what? Joining the unions. Then when the strikes went on, what happened? Mm -hmm. Okay? 
we wanted to go ahead and work, but now they wouldn't let us do it because of what happened. They, they, immigrants came right on in, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. when it was time we finally got into unions, as he shows it, you would use as a buffer. Then as time went on, you start making a little progress, you know, that you got now. But that's exactly after the civil rights, what happened, okay? The unions played a major part in America here of holding you back, okay? And then mm -hmm. if you were part of that union, you got the low-skilled jobs. Digging a ditch, all right? That's it. I remember somebody telling me when they were at the Philadelphia Gas Works when early stages, I remember a guy telling me that somebody would say, hey, go over there and get that shovel. Why are you going over and get this shovel? He would tighten the pipe up, put the, put the cap on there, do what he had to do so you couldn't see him. So when you come back, it was already done. He would cover it up because he didn't want you to see what he was doing because of fear of taking over his job. I remember a guy at the gas company some years ago, when I first started this, something like 30 years ago, told me that. That's, that was, that's what, what was happening. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that, that played a major role in why we were held back with the unions. There's another book that I have, too, called the... Do I have it down here? Let me go get it. Do I have it down here? The yeah. housing. Okay. 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 And yeah. how you were, how you were read, you know, certain areas were cut off where you couldn't buy housing. In other words, it was coded. Okay. It was because, you know, when you, and let's talk about that. Red zone. Or Red zone. But why did he use the terminology, the color of law? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, mm -hmm. now, again, this is where etymology plays a part at because the word color, when you're dealing with law, it means to hide, conceal. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what it actually means in law. Mm -hmm. All right. The perception of perceiving that which is real because if I take a crayon, I color something, I do what I'm hiding something now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know the word, that's what it means. So, again, we talking labels, you went from what nigger or negro to color to black. You following all these terms, okay, mm -hmm. that somebody else gave you, and we just accepted it because there was never a referendum saying, Hey, we're going to consider call ourselves color, negro, okay. These are terminology somebody else threw on us. And we just went and accepted it. There was never a referendum where we said, okay, but my point is the color of law, meaning that they use laws to do what? Red district color certain areas where you couldn't even buy a house. And then you remember, right, when Donald Trump first started to run for president, the whole concept with his father in New York. Mm -hmm. Remember how he wouldn't, you go in, you apply for apartment. Mm -hmm. They would take the paperwork with your application put C. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we'll call you C, man, you would call it. You would never get a call. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And then remember, they, they took his father to court for that. Yeah. Okay? Now, they mm -hmm. paid or settled, but they claim still it was never they settled because there was any wrongdoing. And that we never meant the wrongdoing. Well, well, well the fact that you paid or settled and said that you know what, you did it because of what? You did wrong. But that was the, that actually happened. And it wasn't corrected. Okay? No. So, you can see Laws were put in place to continue to do what? Hold us back. Mm -hmm. Okay? That, that's exactly what happened. And, I, and that's what this book did with. After the Civil Rights, I mean, after the uh, Civil War, and that we had the skills. Okay? We had the skills, but the unions, all right, they didn't want you. They felt threatened that you were going to take the jobs over. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even hear about this book no more. Mm. Okay? So, oh, so, oh, oh. I, I was trying to figure. I might have paid what five ninety five for. Look at that. If, if one of them might be still hanging yeah, around. Yeah, because now the hardback back then was ten dollars and fifty cents. So I must have paid maybe about three dollars or four dollars and ninety five cents when I bought it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six dollars and ninety five cents when this first came out. Six dollars and ninety five cents when when I first bought this. Okay. Okay. But my main point is, you see what a library does, mm -hmm. oh, all right? You can't, nothing takes the place. And that's one of the things where Europeans still have their archival continuity in place because anytime they want to research something, they want information, they can go right to the libraries. You never Absolutely. hear them saying, oh, let's go to YouTube. Right. Let's go mm. through and get it. Yeah. yeah. They go to the libraries. Right. Okay. Right. They go to the microphones. And right? they could be on loops They're right. on YouTube. They, don't, they and could be edited. Exactly. And then and when somebody's doing a, a master's, anything. they're doing a PhD, they utilize them libraries. Absolutely. Okay. 
when they write in an expose they in okay. the libraries. When I go to the main branch library in New York. Or if you want to talk about the Arab invasion of Egypt, here it is. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about a documented history of black slavery in Brazil, there you go. And then uh -huh. if you want a pictorial one, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. You, 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 you just picked up one that I want to... If you, if you just look at the economy today, if I want to build up economy, all right, if I need ships, if I need chains, if I need insurance policies, okay, that means that I have to do what? I have to put a business together, okay? So now, in order to put a business together, I got to employ people to work. So now, if I'm taking a European boy, the European girl, okay, I can employ them, give them minuscule wages, but I need them to do what? All right? Work in these areas where they're going to build it, where they're going to do what? Design the change. Mm. Okay, what are going to help? I need what? Masons is going to do what? Put the ships together. Okay? Now, if I'm, a, if, 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 if I'm captive, if I'm conquered, I'm not taking you that I conquered to do that. Who am I doing? I'm going to employ my own people to do it. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So now the employment for my people begin to do what? Increase. Right. Okay? And it's going to continue to increase, but at the same time, as an owner, as an owner, look how much economic resources that I'm bringing in. Not mm -hmm. only am I providing jobs, mm -hmm. no different than a landlord. If I'm the one who owns the houses, I'm providing what? I'm providing what? Community housing for the what? The tenants. Right. Okay? So the same thing with how you are underdeveloped Africa, and this is where he talks about, man, I got so much stuff underlined in here. Um, You know, here, here's one section here where it says, um, what was doubtedly detrimental to African attempt to integrate their own economy was the fact that when Europeans became middlemen and local trade networks, they did not mainly, they did so mainly to facilitate the extraction of captives and thereby subordinate the whole economies to the European slave trade. In Upper Guinea and Cape Verde Islands, the Portuguese and their mulatto descendants engaged in a large variety of exchanges involving cotton, dyes, cola nuts, and European products. The purpose of it was to fill the holes of slave ships. In Congo and Angola, the same picture emerges. The salt, cowrie shells, and palm cloth that came in Portugal hands made up their shortage of trade goods and served to purchase captives of different parts of the coast deep in the interior. The element of subordination and dependence is crucial to an understanding of African underdeveloped today and its roots lies far back in the area of international trade. Okay? There's a, let me see if I can find it. It means a capacity for self-sustaining growth. It means that an economy must register advances, which in turn will promote further progress. The loss of industry and skill in Africa was extremely small if we measured it from the viewpoint of modern scientific achievement or even by standards of England in the late 18th century. 18th century. However, it must be borne in mind that to be held back at one stage means that it is impossible to go further on. One of the features associated with technological advances is a spirit of scientific... Well, that's not what I wanted to read. I wanted to... But there's a section in here. I just can't find it at the moment that I was looking for. Uh, let me see. Did I have it written down? Man, I... Wait, wait, wait. Here's something that what we're talking about the point, Okay. Columbite was another of the African minerals valuable for the creation of steel alloys. Being highly heat resistant, one of the principal uses was in making steel for jet engines. First of all, it was rapid development of the European industry and technology which caused Columbite to assume value. It had been discarded it had been a discarded byproduct of tin mining in Nigeria up until 1952. Then once it utilized, it gave further stimulus to European technology and a very sophisticated sphere of airplane engines. 
Obviously, according to the International Division of Labor prevailing under colonialism, it was the American, Canadian, British, and French workers who had access to the skills involved in working with Columbite rather than the Nigerian worker who dug the ore out of the ground. For certain reasons, Columbite fell on sharply demand after a few years, but during that time it had contributed toward making the European metallurgists even more proficient in experience. And that way, it was helping to promote self-sustained growth and to produce the gap, which is evident in any comparison of the developed and underdeveloped countries. Copper too fell neatly into the category under discussion. Unskilled production by Africans were required to get the ore for export, followed by refinement in the European capitalist plant. Copper was Africa's chief mineral export. Being an excellent conductor of electricity, it became an indispensable part of the capitalist electrical industry. It is an essential component of generators, motors, electric locomotives, telephones, telegraph, light and power lines, motor cars, buildings, ammunitions, radio, refrigerators, and a host of other things. A technological era tends to be defined by the principal source of power. Today we speak of a nuclear age since the potential of nuclear power is shown to be immersed. The Industrial Revolution in Europe during the 18th and 19th century was the age of steam. And the parallel man in the colonial epoch was the age of electricity. Therefore, the vital copper exports from the Congo, Northern Rhodesia, and other parts of Africa were contributing to the leading sector of European technology. Mm. From that strategic position, its multiply effect was innumerable and was incalculable benefit to the capitalist development. In that context of discussion of raw materials, special reference must again be made to the military. African minerals play a decisive role both with regard to conventional weapons and with regard to the breakthrough to atomic and nuclear weapons. It was, for, it was from the Belgian Congo during the Second World War that the USA began getting the uranium that was a prerequisite to making the first atomic bomb. In any case, by the end of the colonial period, industry and the war machine and the colonizing nation had become so entwined and inseparable that any contribution to one was a contribution to the other. Therefore, Africa's massive contribution to what initially appears as a peaceful pursuit, such as the making of copper wire and steel olives, ultimately took the shape of explosive devices aircraft carriers, and so on. It was only after the European firearm reached a certain stage of effectiveness in the 19th century that it became possible for whites to colonize and dominate the whole world. <coughs> mm. <coughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The international division of labor of the <coughs> colonial period also ensured that there would be a growth of employment opportunities in Europe apart from the millions of white settlers expect, uh, who, who earned a living in and from Africa. Agriculture raw materials was processed in such a way as to form byproducts const uh, uh, constituting industries in their own right. The number of jobs created in Europe and North America by the import of mineral ores from Africa Asia and Latin America being seen from the massive employment roles of institutions such as steel workers, automobile factories, aluminum, aluminum plants, copper wire firms. Furthermore, those in turn stimulated the building industries, the transport industries, the munition industries, and so on. The mining that went on in Africa left holes in the ground, and the pattern of agricultural production left Africa's soils impoverished. But in Europe, Agriculture and mineral endpoints built a massive industrial complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Book well worth having in your library. One of the best books that I read on how Europe underdeveloped Africa by Walter Walter Rodney. All right, you know, bomb went off in his car. That's what killed him. You know. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. When was yeah. that? He wasn't. No. Wait, what? 1980. Okay, before Bob ended his life in the summer of 1980, Walter Rodney had created a powerful legacy. 
This pivotal work, how you open the had already brought in a new perspective to the question of underdevelopment in Africa. Okay, Bomb so well. they killed him. I, I I I would not put it past that somebody that he was he was actually killed. Okay, bomb went off in his car. A bomb. That's yes. clearly he was yeah. murdered. Yes. Yeah, sure. But but why would they? What was the motivation behind that? Do you think? That book. This. And then at that time, I think his, his ideology was a Marxist, okay? And you know, at that time, you he were... He was a brother? Okay, Black you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Walter Rodney, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. they thought he was going to run for president. Okay, and I think that's right. That's correct. They yeah. thought he was going to run. That's correct. I forgot about that. You're absolutely right. They thought he was going to run for president also, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, not so much probably the ideology of being a Marxist and a lot of other ones was too. Yeah. Richard Wright, et cetera. Look, no, Richard Wright was a communist, I'm sorry. Okay, but that's not much of a difference. Um, right. But, yeah, I think he's one for president. But a lot of these books that came out in the early 80s, these type of books here, yeah. you don't even hear about no more. And you don't even see the you know, see, no. no, No, you can get them on Amazon. Not all of them, well, but you can get them. No, you can, you can get them, but you don't hear much about people talking about them. Yeah. No, they don't. Okay? They don't. All promote, right? Promote the, you, get, you, the you, you know, because most people don't ask a question like, okay, after the uh, Civil War, when we we were we went to these quote unquote color schools and developed these skills, what happened that we couldn't get these jobs? You don't hear people asking these questions no more. Right. All right, it's almost unheard of. I mean, he asked it because now you're taking back to a pond. What happened? Because what happened? Okay, and now you can bring this out at a particular time and show exactly what happened with our people. Okay, and mm -hmm. why we are where we are to this day. Mm -hmm. See, remember what's hurting us now is that okay. We don't, and, and you know, Dr. Clark mentioned that, okay, you don't even own a shoe manufacturer, make your own shoe, let alone your sock. Right. So the fact that your ownership, okay, you, you are more so consumers. But we said we right? were the ones that created and manufactured the whole country. But, but, but understood, but you didn't have the authorization or power to get them patent. Mm -hmm. All right, or well, if they did, somebody else took credit. Right. My main point now is that if you want to get to see how Europe became so enriched and then the Americas you got to do your homework across your disciplines because remember what period of time you want to talk about and this where these guys come in at mm -hmm. because they'll show you all right I mean this this young lady here who, who's Jewish herself I mean I think she did a very good job doing a, what a critical analysis of okay the fate of the Jews okay from within from without and her information she put together all right mm -hmm. I never knew this book even existed until Dr. Mackey was talking about it Okay, but it's it's a good you know critical book. Um, so my main point is that when you have self identity, self knowledge, self realization, self actualization, all right, it's more than just feeling good about yourselves. What it does it allow you to see your greatness mm -hmm. and know that that DNA, that genetic blueprint, is still within you. All right, so that. And at the same time, you have to have a love for this here because what we're doing now, you're not going to make no money off of. You're not, it's not going to get you rich. You can forget that, <laughs> all right? Very few people are interested in our history, our culture. So it's not going to make you rich. You have, this has to come from within. You got to have a love for this right here, that heart mm -hmm. chakra, okay? Mm -hmm. But when you understand that our history, our nationality, our arts and sciences is world history, Okay, mm -hmm. and that whatever period that you want to talk about prior to the Holocaust or human trafficking, you were there. That's right. Now it gives you a different perspective. See, the key is, I don't want you to just say you were there. What did you do? How did you contribute? You follow me? Mm -hmm. Whether you're talking religion, whether you're talking the three major ones, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, your participation, your foundation. Whether you're talking the arts and sciences, and at the same time, you don't have to belittle another nation. You don't have to belittle other nationalities. You don't have to do that because your history is so well rounded, so well rounded and great. You don't have to look down and call somebody else a cracker, okay, okay, mm -hmm. white, this, that. You don't have to do none of that, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not necessary. That just goes really your lack of ignorance, okay? Mm -hmm. You can have a dialogue, okay, and just ask simple questions and have somebody challenge you on your information. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because when you're confident, through self-knowledge and identity, self-realization, no matter who you're talking to, okay? You don't know about a subject matter you ask, but the key is 
Don't just take the word for granted. What is the etymology of that word? Because people just throw words at us. Mm -hmm. All right? Like I told you, word black. It's not a bad word. No. It just means to burn, to shine. That's what the etymology of the word means. It comes from the Sanskrit word blague. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it did black, B L A C K. It didn't come, that word itself is a modern English word, roughly around what, 1600? Right. It's, okay? It just means to burn, to shine, to make bright. And then we also have to take and keep into consideration uh, the that this is not our language. And so, the, uh, you talk about etymology, that's the etymology of the English. No, 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 this, you gotta be careful that now, okay. okay? Because this is where, when you study etymology, and where, where do I have it at, okay? This is important, okay? Because I, I said it before, and let me see if I got it here, my frame of reference, okay? This is important. Now, while you are doing it, I, I got just one other topic that I wanted to cover, and you can do it any way you want to, and, and we'll finish, and that's the Arab invasion of Africa. Okay, so when you talk etymology, remember, when you look at the tree of European languages, what does it say? It says proto-endo-European. Proto means first. Mm -hmm. When it... Arias so went into mm -hmm. India, mm -hmm. that's where they got their language from because they, they that's why I has here proto because they mixed, they, they, they had sounds, they didn't have root words. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about the that, European. Okay, what specific European? Okay, I'm, ta I'm talking about all the Europeans, so okay. that's why when you look from at the, the Ice Age. Okay, right, when you look at, they have no language, okay. they right. have sounds, so you have to right. be careful when we say, oh, it's all English, it's all European. No, it's not. Indo European. Now, Indo is modern. Mm -hmm. The word is Sindhu. Mm -hmm. That's the original name of that era. And it was, it, it, Sindhu means the people beyond the river, the Indus River, okay? Then it came to Hindu, that's Arabic. And then Indo Indian, which is British. But when you oh. look at the family tree of European languages, it comes from Sanskrit. Sanskrit means to put together. Right. Just like the word Aryan, that's not European. It's Sanskrit, Arya, which means noble. When their dramatic tribesmen over there from Iran, etc., and other places, all right, they conquered those people and they took on and called themselves Aryans or noble. But when you look at the family branches, that's why you have Indo and you have the European over here. But those words, those sounds, those words, okay, that's why I said black, you have to take it back to Sanskrit. Sanskrit means to put together. And Sanskrit is B-L-E-G, blague. Black, okay, is modern. Then, and, 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 and you have to go with Old English, Middle English, okay? So you got to be careful because there is no really such thing as European languages, Language. all right? You have sounds, but... It's Indo first, Indo-European. Proto means proto. First it was Indo. When somebody conquered you, they took on your language, then they did what? Change, all right? And that's where, that's why anytime you look at a dictionary, it gives you in the etymological brackets, C, this word, and appendix, all right? Then it gives you what it is in Old English, Dramatic, French, then it says in Sanskrit. So we stop at the entry level. First definition, second definition, but you got to go to the etymological brackets and see the origins of the words. Mm. So it's not European. Okay? We never go to the back of a dictionary. All right? Right here. Okay? One of the best ones you have in your library, the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language. Okay? There it is. All right? Now, this is more of an updated one. The Indo-European family of languages. You know, don't say European. It says what? Indo. Indo. Now, who were the first people who occupied that Indo region? The Africans. Okay. Mm -hmm. Javinians, mm -hmm. pre-Javinians, re Rogers. You show your pictures there. You follow me. Did others afterwards. But you can see Indo-European. The Indo-European family is a language of which English is one of the members. It descended from the prehistoric proto meaning first endo.
You follow me? Mm -hmm. Terminology. Mm -hmm. Right. So you got to be careful. People think, oh, that's the white man's language. That's that's your opinion. No, 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 no. You got to study the chart. Okay, be that as it may. It may not be his language, but he's using it. And the inferences are relative to his belief system. No, 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 no. We're not dealing with belief because belief is based on opinion. I would ask, okay, take it back to his origins. Mm -hmm. Now, when you take it back to his origins, they don't hide it. They give you a way to go back to the origins, okay? How do we know? Let's look up one word before we do it the errors. Let's look up one, okay, just to show you, all right? Page 189, okay? Page 189. Show you what I mean. Okay? 189. Uh, that's one word, okay? The word, and we can look up right here, the word B L A C K. Okay? Black. Now, you, if you just go with the etymological, uh, you go with the first one, all of it belonging to a racial group. That's not the origins of it. You got to go right here to the etymological brackets. Okay? Middle English, B L A K. From Old English, B L A C. Now it says go to the etymological, go to the appendix to see the word B H E L. Are you with me? An appendix. So now you go to B H E L to see the root of that word, all right? And I'm going to page 2022 because I already got it down. 2022. 2022. And here it is. All right. Here's the root. B-H-E-L. You with me? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean? To shine, flash, burn, shift in white. Okay? Dramatic. Okay? Bleach. Old English. Bleaking. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, extended root. Bleak. Sanskrit, which means what? To shine, to flash, to burn. Okay, zero grade, zero grade form. B-H-L-O-G, burn, okay? And Greek, phlegian. You follow me? Because the P and F is interchangeable. There it is in Greek, phlegian, okay? Zero grade block, okay? So you follow me when you understand the etymology of a word. Now let's take another word and we're going to end there. The word consider. C-O-N-S-I-D-E-R, mm -hmm. desire, D-E-S-I-R-E, okay, disaster. Now, when you think of the word consider, what comes to your mind when somebody say consider? They say, what does that mean? What do you think about? Think um, about. You give credence. You um, are fair and even. Now, let's break the word down, okay? Mm -hmm. C-O-N. Con, together or with, right? Mm -hmm. That's what con. Now let's look at the word consider, page 392. We're going to end on this one. Show you what etymology does, okay? 392. Now look at the word consider. When you go to the etymological brackets, okay? Put my glasses on. Yeah, when you I go to the et that. etymological brackets, okay? The word consider, right? Now, mm -hmm. these are the etymological brackets, okay? As you can see, the brackets, okay? Mm -hmm. Middle English, consider drink from Old French, Latin, come in together, okay? Now, C-O-M-C-I-D-U-S, cider, C-I-D-R, what does it mean? Cider? No. What does the word? Sitter, S-I-D-E-R. Okay, Latin is citus, but it means what? There it is right there. Like to the consider the stars. The stars? That is correct. Because Latin, like sidereal, mm -hmm. okay? Sidereal means what? Stars, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So the word consider originally yeah. means to consider the right. stars, right? okay? Right. So my main point is you see what etymology does. Now, mm -hmm. it never stopped meaning that. Mm -hmm. We just think, oh, I'll consider it. I mean, you're going to think about it. No, but when you look at its original, take it back to its original context, it means commies together with. Sitter, the Latin word is sidereus, okay, which means to consider the stars, meaning you're going to do what? Consult the stars. You're going to study the stars. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you see what the ancients did? Mm -hmm. Study mm -hmm. the stars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sidereal. Okay. Stars. Okay. That's what, that's what etymology does for you. Mm -hmm. You don't start mm -hmm. at the entry level. You got to go to etymological brackets. So what happened, 
They gave you away. They take you back to the original root. So when someone says consider, isn't that the same thing as I will consider something with regard to your request? But the original meaning, the true meaning of the word consider means to consult the stars and never stop to meaning that. The, the connotative meaning, okay. the distorted meaning, may I'll think about something. That's the distort. That's the connotative meaning, meaning you're implying something else. But the denotative, denotative means what is note, it's mark, what, what does this signify? What is his reference point? But his reference point is the stars. To consider in a good way, in a realistic way, in a reaching way, given all the benefit of the doubt. No, you can't. Well, but remember, when you deal with the etymology of the word, That's the word itself, means it broke it down. Sidereal or sidereous means what? Stars. stars. Okay. Con means together or with, meaning I'm going to do what? I'm going to do something, okay, consult or do something with the what? Stars. stars. That's the true meaning. Mm -hmm. That's what I said about etymology. Etymology means study up. Etymology is the true origins mm -hmm. and meaning of a word. Syntax is how words are constructed or put together over a period of time. But etymology deals with the true origins and meaning of the word. So you take the word church. We always tell church to know what? Circle. Mm -hmm. But circle denotes what? Earth. It the zodiac. Oh, zodiac. Okay. Yeah. okay? The zodiac is what? Mm -hmm. An arc, a circle, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So somebody said to me, I go to church. I say, yeah, I consult the stars. It's spiritual. Okay? You're doing the same thing because mm -hmm. what do you see in most churches when you go to the front of the building? A circle. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Some of your old churches, you see animals. Right. Okay? How many religious places you go to where you don't see some type of animals involved? Okay, pictures I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then that circle also denotes the what? The sun. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now you're not going to hear most of that because most people don't get into the architect of the buildings. All right, and study the history behind that. Mm -hmm. But that's what etymology does for you. Okay, it takes you back to the true origins and meaning of a word. Just like we talked about the word slave. You know, you heard me say a lot: human trafficking, Holocaust, and human trafficking, because slave. Originally denote the what? Slovian people. All right. Matter of fact, here it is for you. Okay. Okay. That's where the word came from. Slavic. Okay. Slavic. In the Balkan states. Okay. Slavic. Okay. That's and what it was. Okay. They were Eastern Europeans. To right. Our they were, social conditioning. They were, and our well, definitions. remember they were they were conquered by was it the Russians? I can't remember. They were conquered and then they were made servants. Okay, mm -hmm. but the word slave, its root is Slavic. Right, so, so I don't say slaves, I say what? Human trafficking. The mm -hmm. Holocaust of human trafficking because slave or Slavic deals with a what? Eastern European people. To me, $152. Okay, okay. but you got to know the law. Okay, you got to know the law. If you don't know the law, okay, how you gonna, how you gonna know what certain words? It's words mean something different in law. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like the word I told you before, the word like residence. That is Latin. Okay. It's a that is correct. Language. Residence, yeah. I told you. Yeah. Okay. In law, residence means, okay, a thing to be identified. Rust means a thing. Identify, all right? Mm -hmm. Same with minority. When you deal with the word minority, minority in law means, okay, it doesn't mean numbers, okay? It means somebody who's below the age of 18, okay? You can't think for yourself, okay? Can't think of the co correct word. It means um, well, a minor. A minor. Okay, yeah. it's a minor. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I'm calling myself a minority, that means okay, you're still a minor. That you need legal advice. Right. If I'm saying, hey, we're people of color, you're saying that you're artificial because in law, the word color means to hide mm -hmm. the appearance of that which is real, but it's not really real when you know law. Mm -hmm. So I never say, oh, we're people of color, because again, if you know law, that's what it means in legal sense. It's not a bad word, it's just that you have to know terminology. So when you study, you have your dictionary here, you have your law dictionary, okay? Now most people houses, this is what you only want to see. Where's it at? I got it right oh, here. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Webster's or something. Okay. Like that. No, the uh, you want to see most of our people homes. 
maybe a dictionary, but you're definitely yeah. going to see this. Yeah. Okay? Right. Nothing wrong with it, but no, you got to you got to you got to complement. You know, you got to have the disciplines. Okay, you got to be able to cross reference. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but you see the sandwich we did yesterday, the sun, the circle. Mm -hmm. Okay, the bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you seen it on the vase upstairs with the mm -hmm. falcon. Mm -hmm. Same profile. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. same profile. That's why I said, uh, uh, I'm not gonna dismiss it. I'm gonna show you the origins because I know this side of it, and I know the other side. Mm -hmm. I know the African blueprint. Okay, and I know the distorted blueprint. So now I can talk about it. See, and that's what Dr. Clark said. You got to know Western or European history, and then you got to know your history. Okay? Right. Got to know yeah. both. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. History. All right. Okay? The story. All right? The story. But you see what I mean when I said you, and I'm going to end on that, it's Indo-European. Mm -hmm. Because when... when when they went over there, those tribes and stuff went into India, okay, or Sindhu, they conquered at the same time. Then they begin to do what? Take their language, all right, their sounds, and then shift it. It's called reconstruction, or mm. re reconstructed the language. Mm -hmm. But the European mm -hmm. tells you that by saying proto, meaning first, endo, in which English is a branch of that. Mm -hmm. But it's not a language, it's a branch, because remember, Root words. You see how I took you back to the root word of black? Mm -hmm. Blague. Okay, Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. All right. And B H E L, the Indo European, what it is in dramatic. Mm -hmm. What it is. Because English is a what? Dramatic language. Here it is right here. Okay, when you look at dramatic, look where English falls at. You got here's dramatic, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got English right here. You got low. Okay, you got, where's English at? Just had it. Um, got move, my glasses move, on. Yeah, just move to the east a little. Um, yeah, I don't have my. Oh, right here. Yeah, here mm -hmm. it is. Right here, Northern Dramatic. Okay, mm -hmm. Middle English right here, and oh. Old English. You see this? His Dramatic, mm -hmm. and then there's Middle English right there. So you know what? It's a Dramatic language. Mm -hmm. All right, it's a Dramatic. Now, meaning Latin, German? It's German. German. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now Latin. On the Latin, you have what? Portuguese, Spanish. Okay, French, that's Latin. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But English doesn't fall under Latin. It falls under what? Dramatic. Mm -hmm. You have Old English, Middle English, and then Low English. Okay? So that's how when you read the family of charts. But no, that's not European. It's Indo first. Mm -hmm. Europeans came and conquered and then reconstructed it. Okay? And made sounds and that made other what letters. It just reconstructed. Just reconstructed. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. But most of the time we don't go in the back of this to see this. So you hear us the white man's language. Okay, you speak in English. You speak in what? No, 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 no. It's Sanskrit. Now, if you understand your history, and you understand the Indus Valley, Indus Kush or Sindhu, you can see some of the earliest people, N.J. Rogers, section race, present day. Okay, these people ain't coming through the Holocaust of human trafficking. They were there first. Their ancestors were there first. Now you begin to see, okay, there's no such thing as European languages. They're branches of what? Sanskrit. Mm. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Last piece we want to discuss <laughs> is the Arab invasion of Africa. What? Specifically, to you. Yeah, let me just give me some more. Uh, Minister Brown, there's a book um, that was called by John DeGraff Johnson, African Glory. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of that book? African Glory, yes. Okay. I haven't read it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, it, it's, it's a very good book because he, he deals with the first part of the Arab invasion of North Africa. And one of the things I found interesting was that one of the African warriors, a woman by the name of Katrina, she held off the Arabs for quite a while, mm. okay, before they finally defeated her. And okay, this, is where? It, this was in, in the northern part of Africa. I can't remember what particular section, but when the Arabs came over there, all right, to conquer that area, this was a female. And I can't, re I got the book upstairs, I thought I brought it down, but I don't think I did. It's called When uh, it's called African Glory, and he speaks of her. And, t and, and talks about her. The other thing with um, the, the Arabs is one of the things that 
the reason why the Arabs were able to push and dominate as fast as they did, okay, with Islam, okay, because it wasn't so much the weaponry, because what happened was, remember we talked about it somewhat yesterday, the fall of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 just let me set this up. Indeed. I'm looking at, because all of North Africa at one point was African. That's correct. Black Africans. Uh, but if you look at North Africa now, and I'm talking about Egypt, I'm talking about Libya, Algeria, all across North Africa, all the way over to Morocco, is all Arabs. And the reason for that is because once they conquered that area, okay, remember, once they conquered that, it's like certain other areas that we were at before, they pretty much moved us out and we never replenished those areas with what? Other African people. We were pushed further what? South. How did okay? they do that? What, well, what well, 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 that? well, you had a combination of both, okay? When, when the Arabs took over North Africa, this is even before um, you had the Moors going into Spain. Okay, the Arabs, when they finally conquered Egypt, North Africa, they settled there. All right, they also did what? Mixed with the women. They brought in, uh, 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 they, they brought in what? Okay, more Arabs, and then at the same time, all right, they pushed the Africans further south. So, from about the early, what, 8th, 9th century? I said, mm -hmm. or, or later than that, they controlled quite a bit of... Excuse me one second, please. Pause. But what you find when, when the Arabs finally came into North Africa, okay, remember, you got to remember what happened even before the, before the Arabs came in. What happened? We lost quite a bit of North Africa even before the Arabs came in because, remember, who came in? Prior to the Arabs invading Africa and pushed a lot of us further south, who came before the Arabs? You had the Romans mm -hmm. who conquered North Africa. You follow me now? Well, mm -hmm. you had the, so now, remember, the Greeks, you're lighting Romans. it up. You had the Greeks. Mm -hmm. you, okay? you had the Macedonian Greeks. You had the Ptolemies. You had the Persians. So really, you can look right really at the time when 525, B, 3, 525 B.C. when the Persians came in and 332 B.C. when the Greeks came in. We already start losing a good percentage of Africa back then. Mm -hmm. Because remember, you kept coming in with what? From Western Asia, the Greeks. Then, when the Greeks finally lost power, who came and dominated North Africa then? The, the Romans. Romans. All right? Europeans. Mm -hmm. Now, once the Romans lost North Africa, because remember, once they conquered Carthage, they controlled all of that. But now, what happened? They expanded their empire so much and taxed the people that they couldn't keep up with it. So now you had a lot of what internal structure and breakdown within Rome. So now what happens next? It made it easier for who? The Arabs to come along because when the Goths, Visigoths went into Rome, conquered that, you had to fall pretty much of what? Rome, almost the Dark Ages. Now the Arabs, now at the same time, the Arabs under Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. coming in with a new wave, new force, all right? So now... We already lost the bulk of North Africa. It was already old and gray. So when the Arabs came in, really, even before you talk about Africans, who, that part of Africa, even before the Arabs came in, how much did we control by then? Yes, that's correct. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So we lost that way before. The, the, in other words, it was set up, it was set in motion before the even Arabs came on the scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? How long did the Romans stay there? How long did the Greeks control North Africa? Now, right. you remember, you still have other ethnic people coming in from Western Asia, mm -hmm. okay? So remember, what happens, when we got pushed further what? South, South. okay? Because mm -hmm. remember, most of those nations knew very little about the southern part of Africa. They stopped right around the word first, second cataract, you with me? Mm -hmm. But they never penetrated into the interior of Africa, okay, in a deeper part of, of, of Zimbabwe and in the Congo. That didn't happen to what? The Europeans, the English in them started penetrating. Because number one, the Arabs didn't have what? They didn't have the ships. Okay? They didn't have the manpower to go there. They didn't even know much about that. Mm -hmm. So they stopped what North Africa because their whole, first of all, the main thing they did was what? Outside of North Africa and Arabia, they were more concerned with what? The Iberian Peninsula. Mm -hmm. Spain. Mm -hmm. 
Portugal, you follow me? Mm -hmm. Trading in the Indian Ocean. That's where they started at, okay? Now, what happens where they start being able to go deeper into inner Africa is when what? Spain and Portugal start building better ships. They start trading with the Arabs. Remember, because the Arabs are doing what? They were holding Europeans ransom, or the, the Moors. I should just say Arabs. The Moors, when they lost power, they controlled the seas. So now when Europe was trading with them, okay, they would conquer, capture the people, and hold them for ransom in North Africa. Mm -hmm. And then the Europeans had to what? Pay tributes. Do you know George Washington, okay, was one of the ones, I mean, these early, they were paying almost a million dollars in annual tributes to the, to, to, to the, to the Moroccan government. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church, the Knights of Malta, to get their people back because they were conquering them. They were pirates. They were conquering them. Mm -hmm. Their pirates belonged to a, 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 a nation, which was Morocco. Mm -hmm. All right. So now at the same time, remember, they control all that. Even Africans had already lost power there. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were pushed further. Now, once the Portuguese and Spanish, okay, especially Portugal, start coming into Northern Africa and trade, okay, you have petty kings, but you also have Arabs involved as the middlemen. You mm -hmm. follow me? Mm -hmm. They were the middlemen who set everything up. Then once they had it set up, it made it easy for the Portugals to do what? Penetrate, because remember, they had the ships now. Right. Okay? The gunpowder was already invented. The weaponry was already invented, so it made them easier to do it. So now what happened was, what did the Arabs do? They didn't stop there also. They start now penetrating further what? Into, Into the southern part of Africa, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. So by the time we start even hearing about this, the 18th century, the Arabs, the, remember, and not just the Arabs, the Mameluke Turks, okay? Mm -hmm. The Ottoman Turks. All of mm -hmm. them were already what? In North Africa, mm -hmm. okay? So they made, so what happened? They made them what? Enochs, or what do you call slaves, mm -hmm. okay? They also took away their manhood and bastardized them. Then they what? Made it with our woman. Because now if I meet with your woman, I'm part what? Of the society now. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm part of that clan. So now, with the result that they didn't have no sentimental attachment to the Africans, they used them as slave labor also to do what? Build up their economy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to this day, how long did slave tracking... Even, you, you even hear about slave tracking in the early part of the 20th century when what? Uh, 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 who was you, okay, uh, Yes, okay. Well, Arabs still conquering all right, mm -hmm. those Africans and making them as slaves over there mm -hmm. in the northern part of Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay? Was it UNESCO somebody had to get involved? I can't remember who it was that got involved with that. Okay? Mm -hmm. But that was still going on in the 20th century. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Arabs, outside of if you were a devout Muslim, you follow Islam, okay? You went on, did your prayers, etc. You know, and that's not to say all Arabs were bad. We, cause you, know, you never generally say all Arabs were bad, but you're talking about in terms of control, in terms of that land, that land never belonged to them. All right? The people you see over there now, all right, they benefited off of what? Their forefathers and foremothers. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it didn't start with them. It made it easier for them to come because we lost it when, we lost, when, when the Greeks and Persians invaded us. Okay, look, remember the last time we controlled most of that is when Pianchi, okay, Kushite came and what, captured back Pianchi and who else was it, Taharka, captured mm -hmm. that back. After that, that was it, okay? When the Greeks came in, the Macedonian Greeks, the Ptolemies, mm -hmm. the Romans, North Africa was already lost. You had bits and pieces of us there, but for the most part, we lost most of that North Africa, mm -hmm. okay? So a lot of those priests, they went, what, further south, went to other places. So it made it easier, okay, for the Arabs to come in because Rome had already fell. But it's easy for them to just come on in and wipe them right on out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Constantinople, okay? Who was it? The Turks that took that over? Okay? Mm -hmm. So that was all set up for the Arabs in the, in the early 18th, 19th century. Mm -hmm. Then they became in partnership with the Europeans and did what? So the Africans. Mm -hmm. There was no sentimental attachment. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Same religion, though. Pardon me? same religion in the sense that they were spreading Islam and and converting Africans and then using the children of that mixture uh, to conquer other Africans. That is correct. Because now you don't have a sentimental attachment because now I'm tracing my line of descent through the what? Father, Father. now. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it made it look like Africans 
capturing Africans and selling them into slavery? Well, you know what? Remember, a lot of them, you had a choice, mm -hmm. a choice that you, wish you, that you wish you didn't have to make. Either you participate or you get bumped off. Mm -hmm. Okay, or you get enslaved. Mm -hmm. So you had a choice. Okay, that you wish you didn't have to make. Some of them, because remember, you had you had a lot of Africans who so did fight now. Okay, mm -hmm. but you remember, if I got powerful weapons, I got better ships, I got better weaponry, my manpower better than you. Eventually, how, how long is it going to last? Because remember, Africa was already weak because you already had the Greeks in there. All right, how long did they stay in Egypt when when they conquered conquered North Africa? All right. Then you, then you had another wave of Europeans who came in with what the Romans, mm -hmm. Persians was there, Assyrians was there, the Arabs were Johnny come ladies. By the time they came, everything was already messed up. Everything mm -hmm. came. Roman, uh, the, the Gauls was there. You had the what the Dark Ages of Europe. So it made it easy for the Arabs to come in and what do what they had to do. And they came with gunpowder. And they came with force and gunpowder. And they came to do what conquer. Now once I conquer you, it becomes mine. Hmm. The conqueror always get the spoils. You can't get around that. Mm -hmm. They were no different than the European mercenary or the European okay, colonists that came in to do what? All right? Conquer. Now, within Islam, we already know. Okay? There were many Africans who went into the early making of Islam because we talked about them. al Jahez, Zari. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay? So we know. Now, the Arabs don't get them credit for it. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't hear anything about Al Jahez. You don't hear anything about Zarib. You don't hear anything about Khufu the Magnificent. You don't hear anything about Anton. And these were the early makers of Islam during the what, 7th, 8th, and 9th century. You follow me? Mm -hmm. I, I read to you about Zarib. I said, like, look what right. he contributed to Europe alone. One man. Mm -hmm. Now, how often do you hear about that from any Arab sources? Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay? You read about that in a magazine called what? Renaissance. Last time I heard about something that was in depth, and you probably didn't know because you probably didn't connect the name, was the Golden Age of the Moors because Van Serta was somebody article mentioned it. I think it's um Jose. What's his name? Jose Pientes Bay. Jose. I Jose Pimento. Pimento Bay, right? Mm -hmm. All right. I think he mentioned Zari. Yes. But you, but you see with that Renaissance magazine, how they break that down with the fashions. Mm -hmm. Now, who would even think that here it is who revolutionized the whole culture of Europe? One man changed your seasons when you're going to wear your clothes. Invented your first toothpaste. One man. You talking about a Renaissance man? Mm -hmm. Start your food off with desserts. Then your meats. And then you ended it with your what? Start your food off with soups. Soups, I mean. Mm -hmm. Soups. Then your main course, and then you ended up with what? Dessert. Dessert. Changing it to tablecloths, okay? Cutting your hair in bangs. Who would think that... Excuse me one second. Put that on. Al Jahez, one of the greatest uh, satires of that day. That's my point. That, and, and So I look at both sides. We know what the Arabs did, okay? But those Africans who did accept Islam, all right, look what they did. But did you hear anywhere where those Zarib and all of them committed a genocide on their own people? No, they didn't. Okay. They didn't. All right. They accepted Islam. Okay. But they knew what to change and what not to change. Okay. Now you start getting, when you start getting closer to the 14th, 15th century, where now you're further removed from your traditional African way of life, now you get the Moroccan emperor like who? Bilal Ibn Il Mansur, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a Moroccan nationalist, a Moor, who does what? Look like you and I, got to take the bitter with the sweet, committing a what? Culture genocide on their brothers and what? The Sangha. Oh, yeah. Okay? Right. But you see the difference now between those from the 7th, 8th, and 9th century mm -hmm. versus later on? Mm -hmm. Okay? You were Muslim, you accepted Islam. But at the same time, those same brothers and sisters who were Muslims who accepted Islam and that Sangha Empire, you destroyed it and you used what? European mercenary as well as European ammunition from Queen Elizabeth, daughter of Henry VIII, to conquer those people and then brought up into exile the greatest scholar 
of that day, Ahmed Baba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where's your allegiance at? Mm -hmm. I wish to unify Islam. Ahmed Baba asked him, why don't you stalk the Turks? Okay, they don't practice, they don't do X, Y, and Z. Couldn't ask for them. So the whole thing was what? He wanted control, he wanted power. Was it that you wanted to unify Islam? Because remember, you asked the Sangha to do what? Give up your area, give up your land. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming to, you know, combine with Morocco. We, they, we are, we're good where we at, we're cool. And they were still devout Muslims. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. reason did you have to go down there and conquer their land? They won't bother you. Because remember, they already lost power in Spain. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Arabs retreated back to what? Their home base. At that time, what? North Africa. Okay? Remember, mm -hmm. Felix Du Bois says what? A lot of the Arabs came down into the University of San Quentin, uh, apply for teaching positions right. at the University of San Quentin, Timbuktu, they weren't qualified for. Right. So remember, they retreated back in North Africa. Where else did you have to go after you lost power? Okay? Because you, know, you, had, yeah, mm -hmm. you had Arabs who were also in the Iberian Peninsula. It just wasn't us there. Okay? Mm -hmm. We were the Moors, but you also had the Arabs there too. Okay? You had that partnership. But when it went bad and sour, when they lost it, it went bad. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Because the same person, Bo Abdil, also sent for what? Help in North Africa. When he was fighting Ferdinand and Isabella, and they ignored him and would not send him help. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, their position was, we didn't like you negotiating back and forth. But he had no choice. Okay? He was trying to, diplomat, he was trying to use diplomacy. He had no choice. But you didn't give him the manpower he needed to what? Defeat Isabella. More than one occasion he wrote back to North Africa for help. Did not honor his request. Hmm. Hmm. So many of those same Arabs today, they don't have a sentimental attachment to African, African women. Okay? This thing is about what? Wealth, power, and control. And control. Mm -hmm. Okay? And these same Arabs in our communities today, they don't even hire. African people. No. And they're still exploiting your daughters and young girls that go in these stores. They're exploiting them today. Yeah, well, you know, that, that, that has two uh, sides to it because um, you see a lot of young men go in there and condole with these Arabs, mm -hmm. black men, African men, and insult black women. And they sit there and they laugh and they talk about who they laid. They're talking to these Arabs who would not bring any of their women in their neighborhood. You will never see an Arab woman, woman who is in any way affiliated with any of those Arab men in their stores. The black man will never set eyes on his wife, in other words. Mm -hmm. You don't see them. And I have witnessed on many occasions... Black men going talking about the women and when they come in the store and they're laughing and he thinks that those Arab men are his friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you talk about Al Jahez, one of the greatest uh, satires of that day. That's my point. That and uh, so I look at both sides. We know what the Arabs did, okay. But those Africans who did accept Islam, all right. Look what they did. But did you hear anywhere where those Zarib and all of them committed a genocide on their own people? No, they didn't. Okay. They didn't. All right. They accepted Islam. Okay. But they knew what to change and what not to change. Okay. Now you start getting, when you start getting closer to the 14th, 15th century, where now you're further removed from your traditional African way of life, now you get the Moroccan emperor like who? Bilal Ibn Il Mansur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A Moroccan nationalist. Or more, who does what? Look like you and I, got to take the bitter with the sweet, commit no what? 
culture genocide on their brothers and what? The Sangha. Oh, yeah. Okay? Right. But you see the difference now between those from the 7th, 8th, and 9th century mm -hmm. versus later on? Mm -hmm. Okay? You were Muslim. You accepted Islam. But at the same time, those same brothers and sisters who were Muslims who accepted Islam and that Sangha Empire, you destroyed it and you used what? European mercenary as well as European ammunition from Queen Elizabeth, daughter Henry VIII, to conquer those people and then brought up into exile the greatest scholar of that day, Ahmed Baba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where's your allegiance at? Mm -hmm. I wish to unify Islam. Ahmed Baba asked him, why don't you start with the Turks? Okay, they don't practice, they don't do X, Y, and Z. Couldn't ask for them. So the whole thing was what? He wanted control, he wanted power. Was it that you wanted to unify Islam? Because remember, you asked the Sangha to do what? Give up your area, give up your land. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming to, you know, combine with Morocco. We, they, we are, we're good where we at, we're cool. And they were still devout Muslims. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. reason did you have to go down there and conquer their land? They won't bother you. Because remember, they already lost power in Spain. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Arabs retreated back to what? Their home base. At that time, what? North Africa. Okay? Remember, mm -hmm. Felix the Boy says what? A lot of the Arabs came down into the University of San Quentin, uh, apply for teaching positions right. at the University of San Corrette, Timbuktu, they weren't qualified for. Right. So remember, they retreated back in North Africa. Where else did you have to go after you lost power? Okay? Because you know you had, yeah, you had Arabs who were also in the Iberian Peninsula. It just wasn't us there. Okay? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. were the Moors, but you also had the Arabs there too. Okay? You had that partnership. But when it went bad and saw when they lost it, it went bad. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Because the same person, Bo Abdil, also sent for what? Help in North Africa. When he was fighting Ferdinand and Isabella, and they ignored him and would not send him help. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, their position was, we didn't like you negotiating back and forth. Well, he had no choice. Okay? He was trying to diplomat. He was trying to use diplomacy. He had no choice. But you didn't give him the manpower he needed to what? Defeat Isabella. More than one occasion he wrote back to North Africa for help. Did not honor his request. Hmm. Hmm. So many of those same Arabs today, they don't have a sentiment or attachment to African African women. Okay? This thing is about what? Wealth, power, and control. And control. Mm -hmm. Okay? And these same Arabs in our communities today, they don't even hire. African people. No. And they're still exploiting your daughters and young girls that go in these stores. They're exploiting them today. Yeah, well, you know, that, that, that has two uh, sides to it because um, you see a lot of young men go in there and condole with these Arabs, mm -hmm. black men, African men, and insult black women. And they sit there and they laugh and they talk about who they laid. They're talking to these Arabs who would not bring any of their women in their neighborhood. You will never see an Arab woman, woman who is in any way affiliated with any of those Arab men in their stores. The black man will never set eyes on his wife, in other words. Mm -hmm. You don't see them. And I have witnessed on many occasions... Black men going, talking about the women and when they come in the store and they're laughing. And he thinks that those Arab men are his friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you talk about...